This is the Josh Ennis Show. Howdy and welcome in to the Josh Ennis Show. It is Josh it is Jilly. How are you, Jilly? Pour the wine. Pour the wine. Now. It's been one of those days. Oh huh? man! It has been it has been a long one of those days today. And like nothing tragic has happened or anything. It's just it's been a day. Just a lot of <laughs> dumb stuff. A lot of little things that have just added up to. Thank goodness it's the Thursday night wine party. Thank God it is the Thursday night wine party. Like, all the wine, please. All, all the wine. The wine. We, of course, have the Boda Box, mm. which we recommend for all of you, even though they're not a sponsor. Well, Joe, like Joe's that. working on it. That's going to be the ongoing joke of the show. Yes, that Joe will one day land this big whale, and <laughs> that whale on it. will be the Thursday night wine party. But uh, we're glad you're with us. Got our little meetup tomorrow over at uh, Dr. Maddie T's place, of course. We do. We will. We'll be it's all... Happening, right? Uh, last time I checked, it's happening. Uh, so uh, I'm going to have to... Well, I'll give you some more details on that right now, actually. Uh, as uh, we tell you that tomorrow, we uh, are going to be out at Dr. Matty T's place. He's got some... Um, That's Safety RX. Yeah, Safety RX out in Pasadena. We're going to be out there tomorrow because Matty T has uh, got a big barbecue party. Uh, and we are going to be there. Uh, because, well, we like free barbecue, and the barbecue will be free. And, and I've got like to pick the, up my glasses anyway. And we like Maddie T. And we like Dr. Maddie T. So we got that. And, of course, you can get 25% off your glasses out there as well, uh, which is great. Again, free barbecue and 25% off glasses. If you're yep. going to eat some food, at least, you know, help our guy out. He's feeding you. Correct. And he's giving you a discount on glasses. Correct. And uh, that 25% off is badass and great glasses. Ask for the Josh Ennis Aviators or whatever. I don't know. Just the, the Josh. The Dr. Joshy Fevers. The Dr. Joshy Fevers. You can ask for those. But uh, uh, Safety RX will be out there probably closer to 1130 is when we'll be out there. I have a uh, uh, a Zoom at 1030 or a... Uh, is it a Bill Microsoft Teams. Is it with Bill O'Brien, or you'll be missing on the Zoom? Uh, we are certainly going to be messing with the Zoom. That's the plan, actually. We're going to be messing with the Zoom is what the plan but is. But then we're going to Safety RX. But then we are going to be uh, then we're going to be out at Safety RX. So probably for us, hopefully closer uh, to around uh, eleven thirty tomorrow. That is the goal. But you guys get out there when the barbecue's there. Go meet some uh, uh, listeners and everything else. So. Uh, Matty T, Safety RX, we're going to be out there, have some barbecue, have a good time. It'll be fantastic. Uh, it is Safety RX. And, of course, they're with, they have glasses, prescription safety glasses. they got big contracts with a lot of you know, like prisons, by the prison, with a lot of big companies, NASA. Okay, so Dr. Matty T. Prison and NASA. All of them. I mean, from the bottom of the barrel all the way up to the top, baby. He's taking care of them. Uh, it is Dr. Matty T and Safety RX out in Pasadena. We are going to be out there tomorrow. Uh, who knows how long we're going to be out there because I still have to get on the air by 2 o'clock, so I have to do all that. But Safety RX with our friend Dr. Matty T. Come out and get some glasses, 25% off, and free barbecue. And Luther will be there. Uh, all, yeah, oh, yes. Most importantly, you can meet Luther and get some pictures taken with the legend. He loves some good scratches. Uh, also, don't forget about Dr. Busby and ToeGrips.com. That is ToeGrips.com with the great Dr. Busby. Uh, she will take care of you in terms of the toe grips, as you see on the screen right now, for your dogs who have a hard time getting around on, uh, on, on wood floors. But do get around well in the grass and on carpet. But maybe they're a little bit older. Maybe they're dealing with an injury, whatever it is. Make sure. Uh, you get those for your dogs or get the supplement that Luther takes every morning. That is called the Encore Mobility. And I know a lot of gisters have done that. Uh, what you need to do is go to the website, uh, toegrips.com, pick up a bottle or two or three and help your older uh, uh, older pets. Maybe, you're, maybe you've got younger pets and you just want the pets to get around a little bit better, kind of get them started early on a supplement. It's a New Zealand deer velvet and uh, uh, a, a green-lipped muscle. Uh, supplement and it is fantastic. Luther loves it. He takes it every morning. Helps him stay spry. It does, as it were. Yes, it uh, does. But that is for Doctor Busby. You can use the promo code Luther, and you use that promo code, they'll knock ten percent off. And uh, also, 
not only that, uh, they will also uh, give you a 30 day money back guarantee, but I don't think you're going to need it. And follow them on the gram as well. DR underscore Busby's underscore toe grips. Give them some gram love. Yep. So um, there you go. So give them some love. They love that. If you can just follow them so on the gram. you heard about it on Jis or Luther sent you. Yep. All that. So check them out. Uh, it is uh, our friends at uh, Dr. Busby's Toe Grips. Toegrips.com. 10% off. If you use the promo code Luther. Big news. Big news. What's the big news? Z-Dog ate chicken parm for the first time. What? Yeah. This is huge I know. news. I know. I this know. is incredible. Like I, when you said huge news, I'm like, what is it? What could be happening? I, I told you it was going to be huge. Is Les Miles going to jail? Like well, what? Like what is a happening? Whole story, but this more importantly. But whoa, Z Dog ate chicken parm for the first time. Look at you expanding your horizon, Z Dog. Way to go, big boy. What'd you think? Uh, that's a bit. We need to get a review. I need a chicken parm review. Also, as we tell you throughout the show, exclamation point dono. I posted the link right there. Oh, I, also, we do have to premiere Z-Dog's new song at some point. We today. will do that today yeah. as well. So Z-Dog, I'm sure I'll post the link 20 times. So we'll see it. Busy day. Uh, but feel free to throw in some donations for uh, the show today. Uh, if you would like to help us out here on our wine party, our Thursday night wine party, you can do so by just clicking that link, exclamation point dono. There's a Streamlabs link right underneath it and donate as much as you see fit throughout the night we will have a good time who knows how long we will be up tonight i don't know i've been up er since early mvp mpb says was it breaded chicken parm or that crappy unbreaded kind who likes unbreaded chicken parm? i'm with you i'm with you man like that's just, that's not even chicken parm it's not it's got to be and it's got to be crispy yeah it's got to be good crisp. you know who's got a great chicken parm now is uh is uh, uh carabas <laughs> You do Carabas has a great chicken parm. <laughs> you okay over there? You living? I'm just Everything sneezing. good? Pour the damn wine. I'm Why pouring wine? the damn wine for the wine party. Why is this wine? Boda box. Dry rosé. And this is that sweet stuff, so we'll see. It's uh, not too sweet, though. That's why I like that rosé. Sometimes I think rosé is too sweet. But the Boda box, the dry rosé is quite tasty. All right, well, we're going to find out how tasty it is. Everybody, let us know what you're drinking tonight. I would think wine, beans, that it's the... Thursday night wine party. Here, hand me uh, my glass over there, please. I guess uh, M.W. Solgrove said he was doing liquor tonight. Boy. I don't know why. I mean, what what has he got going on? Maybe he had a day, too. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe he said wine just ain't going to cut it, baby. Maybe that's it. Thank you for the bits, Miller Time. Good way to start the day. We appreciate that. Oh, um, Magnolia81 says, I've heard you mention Night Ranger several times on the show, so in case you didn't know, they'll be at Warehouse Live on May 8th. Really? right down the road unfortunately we will not be in town for that so i don't think we'll be seeing that well everyone knows now huh yeah so uh I, well i mean i as far as i know thank you pb guy for the uh, three dollars there this explains why i've had friends text me saying where are you guys moving uh my what did you say my intention i, I didn't say anything <laughs> specific now everyone's like commenting on your gram and i'm getting a text from people like wait what Hey, like, you know, like the, the point being in all of this, and I'm not going to tell you where I'm going or where we're going. We don't going. even know if it's official. We do, so we're not going to do anything. Uh, but, uh, and I wasn't going to even say anything about anything like this for a while, but when that chick from the radio station uh, was tweeting some stuff, it annoyed me, and uh, and I went off and I just decided to, you know, let uh, let people know that the last day of the radio show will be... Uh, the 18th of March. The 18th of March uh, will be the uh, last show on ESPN 97.5. I was not fired. Uh, you were not fired. I, that, that's that. I mean, that was absurd. That pe I mean, I get that people well, think that because uh, it's me. That's your legacy. But I didn't. And and by the way, I've been fired twice. I've worked at like six places. So, but everybody, everybody just assumes oh, you got fired everywhere. It's not true. And yes, MW So Girl, that's an announcement that Josh should have been able to make on his own time. That tends to happen to you. It does. <laughs> You're not a, You don't get your announcement. It does. I don't know how that chick even knew, but like I don't know. It's very annoying. Like who does um, that? And uh, I, I don't know. And, there, and listen, I've I've appreciated the but opportunity. Also, who goes on the air and says, "Hey, he got Rona." So yeah, and and, and not only <laughs> says that I had Rona, but said I was knowingly passing it to people, which what? was also a lie. Like I um, 
And I appreciate the fact that they let me be on the radio station for nearly a year. And uh, I was a... Um, well, I feel like you helped them I was, out. They I helped you so. out. I think so. I was a good boy. A, I didn't get myself into trouble. It was a win-win for um, everybody, I think. Mm-hmm. I, uh, and I didn't get myself into any trouble. I treated everybody well. I didn't do anything out of control. Um, I did everything they asked of me. Sometimes other people didn't do what they were, what was asked of them, like not airing my personal shit on the radio when it's not your business or uh, because you dislike me intimating that I passed Rona to you and your friends who, as it turns out, didn't have it. (laughs) And then also claiming I did it on purpose because you're a mouth breathing Neanderthal (laughs) Uh, or subtweeting about me. I mean, many, many times. Yeah, that's not the first time that happened. and then to my face being all nice. The funny thing about subtweets is that at some point someone's going to relay it to the person you're subtweeting. So just grow. And it's some not balls. like I looked at, and not like I was looking for it. I, I, I the way I saw that today someone was that someone added it. me, and I am grow some balls and and just tweet directly. You want to talk shit, talk shit, but talk shit to the person. Uh, but. Um... So I don't know what they're going to do. I mean, it, it, they might just go network programming. I don't know. Maybe we'll get uh, maybe we'll get AJ on here in a couple weeks before whatever and see what they do. But, uh, again, I was not fired. I'm moving on from this. But I was not fired. Like, it's just, like, like I hate that that's the idea that some people have about this. Oh, Josh got fired. No, that's not the case. Obviously, it wasn't the case. And AJ explained that pretty well on his show and for 20 minutes on my show. Uh, it was real cool of AJ to clear the air and make it known you did uh, did what they asked for. Of course, and and listen, he stood up for me a lot. So uh, and 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 by the way, he stood up for me like he went to bat for me out of the shoot, but then he didn't have to defend me all that often because I didn't do anything bad or anything else on the station. So uh, and but I appreciate that about him. Uh, I'd take a, a Jilly with those tits over a Holly any day. Well, there you go. That's awful sweet of you, got a 713 grind. That's a really nice compliment. Thank That's you. one of the nicest things anyone has ever said to Jilly. One of the nicest things she's ever been told. <laughs> with those titties. Uh, let's see. Are you and Jilly going to Arizona with J.J. Watt? Well, I, I don't want to let the cat out of the bag. But um, I'm going to play for the Cardinals. I want, I'm want. i chasing a ring with a team that has no chance to win a ring. So there. Um... AJ had your back the whole time you were there. Great friend. Of course he is. And we'll be friends forever. Like the, the saved by the bell gang. Uh, we are, we are, we are lifelong friends, BFFs, bad boys for life. Uh, Trey once, can I do your exit interview? Of course. Why not? Trey, uh, the exclusive exit interview on, on Trey's podcast. It's official. Uh, let's see. Someone said it in the chat earlier. Idiots don't realize if you get fired from the radio, you didn't get to go on the air and talk about it for two weeks. Correct. Yeah, no, they would not. They, they would escort you out of the building immediately. Correct. That's how that I've works. I've got two weeks of doing this. Yeah. So again, uh, Gamma. Hello, Gamma. There's good terms at that point when they're letting you be on the air for two weeks. Will you be on 97.5 tomorrow? I'll be on 97.5 on, well, tomorrow, Friday. Then Monday and Tuesday of next week, and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of the week after that. So it seems odd because it's parts of three different weeks, uh, but it's seven more shows. So there you go. Uh, Josh Dennis, be honest. Did you get touched inappropriately by ESPN producers? Trey touched me in my naughty parts. That's what happened? It was. He's, he's very handsy. He's a lot like Les Miles. He sent me dirty texts and everything else or said he said he wanted to meet up in a hotel or his trailer. He wanted you to babysit his dog. He did. He said, can you babysit Kyler? Mm-hmm. I said, I mean, I'm uncomfortable with this conversation, Trey. Um, uh, let's see. Not worried about Josh. I'm worried for P. Crate. Why, the, why, why would you be worried for P. Crate? I don't think it. I don't think I think he'll be fine. Uh, let's see. All I asked was if you wanted to play basketball, you did ask me that Trey, but (laughs) you can see where I would take that the wrong way. You could see where I would go. Hmm. Something's off about this boy. There's something you're hinting at something far more salacious and titillating is what you're doing. Just in that basketball. Uh, yes. What? Just, just by playing basketball. Yeah. But there's, there's some intimation there. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Uh, damn, you make I him sound like like Chris Hansen's going to be around the corner or something. Yeah, well, damn, I must have missed an important show today. Well, sword trigger finger, you missed one of the final eight shows. Now there's a countdown. On, uh, there's officially a countdown now, and it would I, I would assume that would be my countdown to the end of my time on the radio in Houston. But you know what? I'll say this: uh, I did accomplish something. Uh, I worked for all three sports stations. That are still on the air. Like, I didn't work for 15, well, I feel like 60. It's not really, like, you know, a big thing here. I feel like most people in Houston work for all the You would three think that. Stations. But I thought about it today. Everyone makes the cycle. I guess, I guess. Did Clant never work for 97.5? No, I think he worked for 15, 60. Well, that counts, right? I guess he worked for Gal, I guess. So, but I, I guess there is more than I thought earlier today. Because Lance did, and Charlie did, and I did, and. Joel technically did because of the rocket stuff. <laughs> Barry Warner probably did. Actually, I th- I'm, I, he's worked on every station in town. Uh, Josh, you deserve a drive time slot uh, in a P1 here. Let the corporate piles of dung here tank. Okay. Uh, Josh, you have kicked ass during your time there as you do everywhere you go. May God bless you in your future endeavors, my friend. Your sandbox will dwarf all the... Thank you, Gama. I appreciate that. That's nice of you to say, and I appreciate you being so loyal and being a contributor and everything else. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, Josh is elite. Well, thank you, Rand Holland. Elite. I mean, listen, I am very good. I'm not going to dismiss that. I'm not going to just sit there and say I suck. And again, I didn't get... I mean, I'm just leaving the station. This is not a, hey, you got fired, or hey, they don't understand your worth, or if they don't see your qualifications, who needs them? They know that this I'm was, good. I mean, I, they're was, just they, There's no money, and I was only doing this because they had to let people go. I was saying, this was kind of the plan all along. It was basically an opportunity for you to get on the air so people kind of didn't forget you existed. Correct. Because it's always easier to get a job when you're on the air somewhere. When you're sitting around, like, on Twitch. I love Twitch, and it's been very good to us. And you guys have been badass, so and we're again, not going to stop doing this. Correct. Twitch and the podcast and everything else still ah, exists. Great point, Drew. We need a show called The Decision. Yeah. that's Well, I mean, <laughs> I guess we do. Somebody also asked, where is, um, uh, where is Allie? Man, we'll have to we, get Allie yeah, on here. Yeah, we need to talk to Allie. It's been a while. It has. Uh, well, to, well, we're doing a rare Friday night show tomorrow because we have to make up for a, um, uh, a show that we didn't get to do because we didn't do a Sunday night. We, we have to do another podcast Friday. So now you kind of figure out why the schedule's been all over the place on top of other things. Yes. We've been a mess. We have, been, it, we have just had a lot of stuff going on and having a, had a lot of moving parts is what I'm getting at here. Uh, Josh, did you get fired because you weren't pleasing Nick? I think that's the answer. Josh got fired, and that's why he needs eighteen hundred dollars from For, his dad. Yeah, might it's as well get Dad on and ask now. him. We'll ask Dad about. Let's we'll say, Dad, I need eighteen hundred more dollars. I got fired today. Uh, Vegas, baby, talk shit about the Raiders. I'd love to live in Vegas. We've had that discussion before. I'm a uh, I'm a big supporter of Vegas, but it really has been an awesome opportunity to do this at 97.5. And again, they've been very nice to me and it, um, it doesn't end on a bad note. I mean, no, I, think anything, I never went into it expecting to, to be a full-time employee. I, I expected to use this as a catalyst for getting a full-time job somewhere. That was the whole plan. And then, and AJ <sighs> knew that and David Gow knew that. And that was part of the whole setup. Yep. And I, I don't think any of them could look back on this and say, God, this guy started problems. Cause I absolutely didn't. If any problems happened, and there might have been one or two little incidents, none of them were on me. None of them were my fault. Uh, It's just people who have a lot of bad blood for me and can't get over it. People who claim that I get jobs only because I'm white, which is actually a new phenomenon for me. Usually, it's only good jobs because you're dad. Now, I only got this job because I'm white. Not because I said I'd work for free, but then again, and what we're learning now well, is that the interning your, is a white privilege thing. That's so. true, and at least it's not from your dad this time. Usually it's been, you know, because your your dad got you the jobs. Yep. Your dad owned CBS at one time. That's true, he did. So that's a nice change of pace. Yep. Uh, let's see here. Uh, you're better when you're starting problems. Here's the thing, friend. There's no need to start problems. Like there's no there's no benefit for me to start any problems with anybody. Josh Ennis, please stop beating around the bush. What bush am I beating around? I've literally told you I'm leaving the station. I'm not him hawing around here. And it's not as easy just telling you where we're probably moving to. I mean, that's on the stations. 
Yes, we that, that's, I'm not going to do that. So I'm not going to tell it's, you any of that. The employer's choice of when they want to reveal this information. We're not going to mess that up. Nope. Thank you, uh, B. Kerr, for the bits. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is just a new chapter in the book of Ennis. You, Jillian Luther, are moving on to bigger and better things. Well, we, yeah, we certainly think so. And part of that is continuing to do this, which continues to grow, and people continue to find it, and people continue to watch it and drink wine like that with was us. A big, that was a deal breaker. Like We had to be sure that we could still do this podcast and we could still do this Twitch. <sighs> yep. That was a very important point. <laughs> yep. So we're not abandoning you guys. Uh, absolutely not. Trey uh, wants to come too. Listen, Trey, if I had any sort of pull, I would certainly do that. Maybe he can be like a, like a reoccurring... I don't want to say character, but he can be like a, a special correspondent. Maybe that's it. Uh, let's see. Th- oh, thank you, Richard, for the 2,700 bits. By the way, Richard has been one of the best sponsors. I mean, all of our sponsors are great. So maybe saying best isn't the right thing. But saying that uh, that Trey, or rather Richard, has done has been with us basically since the beginning, and he'll continue to be with us. We're about to send out some invoices here in the next week or so to all of our sponsors, and all of them are back on for another quarter, and we really appreciate that. And of course, a large part of the success of this as well has been the uh, uh, the contributions that you guys have made via uh, donations, bits, whatever. That also has helped us out immensely. So thank you. Uh, let's see. Um, looks at them. They need sunscreen anywhere they go. Yeah. In fairness, though, that's just also the lighting in the room. No, that's me all the time. Well, that's you but all I the time. I pasty today, and I don't know what happened. For a because while, those, I uh, turn those lights down. Did. You didn't turn them down all the yeah, way. You left them on somewhat. I leave them on halfway. Now try it. Let's see if you look pasty. Let's see if you look pasty. The answer is yes. I still look pasty. Well, I mean, part of that could just be that you're pasty and you're un- you're, you can't be helped. That's why Trump this. puts on all that orange makeup. When you see him without it, he doesn't look the same. Uh, let's see. Who said you only got a job because you're white? That would be someone whose name starts with a J and ends with his son. Uh, and um, part of his argument was that basically I get jobs because I'm white. Uh, Josh, I've been in and out. You found a job or did the time at 97.5 just run its course? Well, first of all, thank you, Drew. Uh, for that 10 bucks, and thank you, R. Delasandri, for the follow. Appreciate it. I feel like new people are jumping in all oh, the I've time. Seen a lot of new names. I mean, we're up to 140 viewers right now. That's awesome. That's badass. So, thank you guys. It's very cool. Uh, let's see here. Um, look at some of the other comments. Show LVD on the camera. I can't. I don't have a camera over there. I'll put so. him on my lap at some point. He's just very relaxed right now. I'm not going to. He's been at daycare all day getting crazy. And would you interrupt your boy after he just had a whole long uh, day at daycare? Uh, Joe says, I told you the show would grow, says Joe in Philly, and Joe knows. Joe also told us that Boda Box was, uh, he was working on them. Still waiting, Joe. Still waiting on that. I'm proud of you, though. Proud uh, of you, Joe. Did you tell Jim Mudd where you're going? I did not. Uh, Magnolia says, what is the most viewers you've ever had? Um, hmm. not, I think it was more than 140. Um, I think that night that we had Rich and Tony on got pretty high. Uh, I think so. I think it was over 200. And that at was one before point. we really knew what we were doing. And there were yeah, imagine and now. blings and blings and all My, sorts of stuff crazy. happening. Uh, let's see. Let's plan a just happy hour before you leave. Now that we're open 100%, mainly for all the sponsors. Hey, Gama, we can work on that. I think we're going to have to do that. Uh, and also tomorrow, for what it's worth, we're going to be out at, uh, out at Safety RX, I got some free barbecue out there tomorrow, so. Come get some glasses for 25% off and some free barbecue with Dr. Matty T. How about that? And Luther will be there. So if you want to see Luther on camera, he'll be in person yep, tomorrow. Yep, take some photos. Did you apply for that job in Vegas? Friend, that job in Vegas, like, wasn't even a job. Are you talking about the, the, the R&B job? Yes. Like, uh, no, I did not apply for the R&B job. Sorry, I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna go join a radio station and play New Edition. I mean, I could. I don't want to undermine my abilities. You'd probably like to, but no, I didn't. Uh, let's see. Uh, every night at over 100 is a great start. Well, yeah, we're starting to get some uh, more people in here, so that's good. And it's a wine party, so I mean, this could this could. Who knows for a while. where this could go? Who knows where this could go? Uh, front porch meetup with sponsors too. That's possible somewhere down here. So, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I know. Like, 
we're just kind of being, I don't want to say selfish, but I'll be honest. I only want to go to a bar that I can walk to. Yep. <laughs> I don't trust uh, Uber. Well, I, I trust Ubers. We took some Ubers today, actually. Yeah, because, I mean, we've our car, we've, we finally got our headlights fixed on the car, though. So that's good. Had them all replaced. Shout out to Steve. Yep. Thank you, Steve. If you guys ever need a good uh, do-it-all mechanic, we know a guy. Well, there you go. That's Steve. But the lights are fantastic. They look great. It's amazing. It's the simple things in life. It's simple pleasures like that that really make you happy. He did tell me to uh, stay away from the Korean cars. Well, so in Korea, the future. Korean cars, no good. He's like, yeah, Hyundai's, man. I'm like, you, who are you telling? I know. We're not big fans of those. Never again. But we're Never gonna, again. We're going to ride, uh, ride it till it dumps us. Is what we're going to do. The car's it's, it's sassy. She's a sassy girl. That's true. Thank you, RC Mailman, for the resub. Eight months. Thank you. And JJ knows 80 with the follow. Thank you as well. Josh Ennis, be honest. Is it Jason Whitlock? No, it is not Jason Whitlock who has called me or said I got jobs because I'm white. You like Jason Whitlock. I don't mind him. He's fine. Him. Yeah, he's a nice guy. He's fine. Are you guys going to grab some I Fartelli pizza before leaving Houston? Did that yesterday, right? And we'll probably do it again. Probably. Um, come back to the Philly area. I will not, like, again, just to be so clear. we're ruling that out. That's one place. I will tell you one place that I am not, <laughs> I, like, I will gladly offer up some free advice or free information here, and you can run with this and put it on whatever site you want. I did not leave 97.5 in Houston to go back to the Philly area. That is what, like, you can gl take that and scratch it right off. I am not working in the Philadelphia area and probably never will again. And that's okay. And that's okay. I don't, I don't need to. Uh, let's see. Uh, don't go to Austin. What's wrong with Austin? Isn't that where everybody's moving? Isn't that the big trend? Everybody's moving to Austin. They're leaving California. Ah, that's the problem. They're all leaving California, and they're like, well, hell, let's run off to, to Texas and turn it into California, and we will not tolerate that here in the great state of Texas. Don't come into our state and turn it into your shitty state. No, sirree. Roller governor steps up and says, <laughs> we're opening shit, and we don't care what you have to say about it. And Biden, you keep your illegal immigrants with the Rona out of my Keep state. them out of here. God, I saw some thing today about like, it's um, ridiculous it's like oh now biden's just throwing the illegal immigrants with Rona in here to infect texas to make us look bad like it's politics, it's, it's all man. wild man and then i was seeing another thing today about like beto running for president and like hey it was some site and it said would you like beto to run for president retweet i don't know that any human in the history of politics has been forced on more people than beto with absolutely nothing to show for it. what let me ask you this what percentage of the democratic vote the nomination. What percentage did Beto get? Like 2%? It wasn't very impressive. Not much. But yet we're still trying to make Beto happen, and it's not going to happen. Beto is dead end. It's over. Josh is going to be behind the golden microphone. Wouldn't that be something? I show uh, up in three weeks, and it's like... <laughs> Greetings! Like, that would be me. Uh, but No. I, I guess we you know. I'm, I'm gonna. I'll just leave that one up for you guys to wonder on uh, whether or not I'm going to be behind the golden EIB microphone. Uh, Cindy Nudes is in the chat. Hello, Cindy Nudes. How's the? Uh, how is the uh, ramen business? The uh, pho soon. business. How's it all? Need to get to I know. Before we get the hell out of town permanently, we gotta go over there five or six times. At least. Yep. Clyde says, come to uh, 1210. Again, not going to happen. I appreciate it, but I'm will never. i probably never working in Philadelphia again, if for no other reason, because they're never going to offer me a thing in Philadelphia again. They did at one point, but I'm not going to get into all that again, because that I, is I in love, the past. I do love our Philly people, but I'm glad that it's not Philly. Yep. I think you needed a fresh start. Yep, and, uh, and hopefully we, we have found that fresh start. You'd have to blow UT nonstop in Austin. I mean, I, news flash for you there, uh, uh, maybe lesbian Rachel. Everywhere you work that has games, like has the team's games on the radio, you have to blow them. Unfortunately, them's just be the rules, ma'am. The reason at 97.5, and you know what, though? 
and I don't know this for a fact, but if the Texans one day were like, we want to be on 97.5, and we want to have the same kind of deal that we have over at 610 where you're not paying the rights fees, and all, they'd be like, yeah, we'll take it. You know why? Because it would instantly give the station credibility. Now, that's not to say it doesn't have credibility now, but there is a credibility that comes with having an NFL football team, uh, and that would be a big part of it. I think most of them would. If they went to 790 today and said, we'll, we'll take the, the tech, I think 790 would take them too. They're the only worthwhile property to have in town financially. Uh, I mean, I think that the, the Astros have some viability in that category, but not as much as football does. And they would take that in a second. Uh, you blew the Texans, never blew. Did I blow the Texans? I don't think I did that. I mean, when you were at 610, they were actually kind of fun and it was a big deal. Yeah. So, yeah, you got into it and you gave away shirts and there were songs and that was fun. Uh, let's see, Joseph. Now not so much. Wait, did you say they have like a new series or something? Yeah, th- there's some Texans, like it's called Building the Texans. And it's something about the new coach and the GM and they got a whole like relationship. Like it's about how they're building. I don't know how you could say they're building the Texans being that they're still in the process of tearing it down. They also don't know if they have a quarterback. Uh, that's a big well, that's what I'm piece. saying. Who knows what yeah. they have? That seems like something we could watch and make fun of. That might be a Gist Nation, uh, what do we call it? Like a, a watch along? Well, not a watch along, but a, a watch, and then we all discuss the next day. Also, let, let me be clear on something. This person says, uh, Jason hates Josh because he worked at 790 with Josh during the whole Super Bowl media day blow. That's also bullshit. He hates me because he's, he's thought I was racist since the time I got to 790. Like, he'd be, like he would yell at Jim about the stuff I said. And then Jim could, by the way, Jim says more racist-ish stuff than I did. Or like stuff that would make you kind of go, oh, that's a bit. But Jim would never get called on. And only I only I would get called on these <laughs> things. Jim has this great delivery of just these one-liners. Like, no, 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 no. You're giving Jim too much credit. <laughs> now, I'm not going to let you do that. I'm not going to let you do that. He's brilliant. He's brilliant. times where like you've been in the elevator with Jim and even you're like oh god oh I know it's cringe I love Jim (laughs) but don't sit there and make it sound like well you know Jim just delivers it in such a way no it's because people dislike me so much it's a me thing they dislike me so they just put all of the shit on me but don't like give me this bullshit about how well you know Jason Braddock didn't like Josh because Josh was uh because of the media day blow no he didn't like me from the jump, but he was too much of a fraud to tell me from the jump. So I thought we were buddies. As it turns out, we weren't. And then he goes off on Jim after all that went down. That's reality of it. So be bailing all these other guys out by saying that. So there. Uh, damn, I'm going to miss your show. Best on the air. Luckily, I'll get to meet you tomorrow. Hey, look at that. So you're going to come out to uh, the uh, come out to see us out over at uh, Safety RX. Jason Braddock is Nick Wright if he ate Fred Davis. <laughs> make me spit out my wine. But by the way, Fred is a really good guy, and I like him a lot. And he has a sense of humor. So there you go. Before we get into anything else, well, We're not though, here to talk shit tonight, guys. No, 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 no. It is a fine day. And we still have our podcast audience, so... z Dog's excited. He goes, who said Ra- who said game day OJ Rachel is here? He is. This could be the night they this get This could be Discord. the night they get together on, uh, on Discord. Rachel, who knows? Do you have Discord? Who knows? Who knows? Uh, we need to tell them about DITV, though. I do know D-I-T-V. that. DITV. Where's Glenn? I haven't seen Glenn in the chat. He busy. He busy. Direct tv in. Uh, but, of course, DITV is your local place to get direct TV. And uh, also, uh, also AT and T interwebs, DITV, Direct TV, and AT and T. Your local, uh, your local dealer uh, is our friend Glenn over at DITV. And uh, now's the time to get in on it, guys. There's a two hundred fifty dollar uh, gift card involved uh, for you if you sign up over at DITV. Also, also there's an opportunity for you. Uh, to uh, get to the Sunday ticket and MLB extra innings, and they have it all for you. But if you want to get that hookup now, you have got to reach out to our friend Glenn over at DITV. That is DITV for AT&T Internet and DirecTV, number one in customer satisfaction over other major cable providers. Let DITV get you hooked up let glenn get you hooked up 
832-800-5664. That's 832-800-5664. Get AT&T and get your direct TV today uh, over at DITV with our buddy Glenn. Get in touch with him. He's a great sponsor of the show and we appreciate it. Who's next? Next, we have Aqueduct Plumbing. Aqueduct Plumbing Company with Billy and his sister Mary. And I'll just be real with you. I, they busy too. They're, I mean, they're out there repiping, 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 laying pipe. I don't know what they're doing at all. Whatever you do with pipes, twice on the pipe, ding, ding. If the answer is no, they are all over the pipe. And, of course, they do everything plumbing-wise. So let's just say you need something basic like, hey, I need my toilet plunged or I need to get my lines or whatever. They can do that for you as well. Uh, but reach out to them and see if you can get on the list because I know a lot of people who are still uh, some without water, some dealing with these issues. I think that Dr. Matty T finally got his water back last night. Yeah. So um, And even post-freeze. Like, if you ever need a plumber, just aqueduct, man. They're great. They fixed our stuff twice. There you go. So uh, reach out to them, 281-488-6238 if you're in the Houston area. 281-488-6238. It is our friend Billy and his sister Mary I over I've at been texting. Aqueduct Plumbing Company there at your disposal. People have now been seeing you know, folks commenting on your Instagram. And they're like, where are you going? You're moving? Josh has done it 97.5. I honest to God didn't even know people knew I worked on 97. But these are like actual friends, like people oh. I know know. Oh. So that's why I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yep, if I, I have am. enough wine, maybe I'll tell you, but. <laughs> <laughs> Not today, friend. <laughs> uh, but uh, thanks, everybody, by the way, for the bits and the follows. Again, if you'd like to contribute to the party tonight here on the Thursday Night Wine Party, uh, there is that link on the uh, that Streamlabs link right there. We'll get you there. Exclamation point dono right under that. You see that uh, stream uh uh, that's Streamlabs link. You can throw in a buck, two bucks, however much you want to give, and we'll appreciate it. It's been uh, awesome that you guys have been so uh, helpful. I saw Spank It Slap. It got his uh, $500 Scooby Cheech and Chong picture. All right. It that's good. That's good. And by the way, Sunday, I guess we're going to have another auction on Sunday. We People like when we do that. Got to get some shit together then. Yeah. We're, we're, we got a couple of things. Uh, let's see here. Um, do you think that 97.5 will rehire Jason? No, because again, he was never hired there. That's the other, he didn't have a job there. He was paying for the airtime. There's your dirty little secret. He paid to be on the radio. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Les Miles was taking uh, recruiting a little too serious. That he was. Dude, this Les Miles story is all the makings of like a Lifetime movie. Because like none of it is like overly like bad unless we, unless actually, we hear something tomorrow right, that's story, even worse. The story we heard today anyway from USA Today is that he didn't actually like you know, sexually assault anyone, but like he would just invite females to his condo, like female. Well, and I think workers. he, like, for whatever reason, every, I mean, everybody knew them. he had a condo. Like, so like if he like had to leave, like, you know, so didn't, I don't know, whatever reason he had a damn condo. I think Coach O has a condo on campus too. Well, we know what's happening in that condo. Well, that's a, he's I mean, not a married man anymore though. So no, no, no. But it doesn't make it okay to have your uh, student staff members babysit your kids and then, you know, send them. Flirty text messages, I guess. And again, none of this is overly harmful. Like, this is not the worst shit you've ever heard. It's not, but when but you're... But, like, <laughs> you, like, don't be a dipshit. When there's enough people that the school has to make you sign something that says you won't talk to the female workers anymore... That's, yeah, that's, like, that's, like, you gotta pump... A, like, dude, <laughs> it's like this. I Like, back in the day... Back in the early days of text, you would text chicks a lot and you'd say some some dirty stuff. Maybe they'd be into it. Maybe they wouldn't be into it. That's when you're in college and you're well, a dipshit and, and you're, you're trying not, to get laid. You're not and you're not married. the head coach at LSU. You're not married. You're not the head coach. You're not trying to, you know, get these 19-year-old girls over to your condo. Hey, listen, I don't blame him for wanting to, like, you know, they're hot co-eds. Like, and you're a powerful, like, I don't, like, I get why you're into them. But, like, maybe you should be, like, I don't know smarter i mean nobody ever accused less of being a smart guy he no. gumped his way into a lot of shit at lsu I'm trying to get some of the exact wordings in this story to do to do it less some justice here uh he was texting female students taking them into his condo alone making them feel uncomfortable and at least on one occasion kissed a student and suggested they go to a hotel after telling her he could help her career <sighs> boy well i mean and as you said earlier, less you're recognizable 
Well, like there was one where you said that he wanted to take one to a hotel. Yeah, I just How does that. Les Miles just roll into a hotel? Like what hotel does he go to? Like I like I think there's an arrogance that comes about you when you're like a major college coach or whatever, or just any big celebrity and you think you're untouchable. But like, do you think that somebody wouldn't notice Les Miles in a hotel? Like in my mind, Les just put on like glasses. He like he walks in. You can't see me now. He put he, he thinks he's like he, he like truly bought Clark Kent and Superman. He's um, like, hold on, let me put on my glasses and uh, or I'll put on. A, uh, I'll put on a mustache glasses and we'll see what happens. Or, or would he take this chick to like a really seedy, like Plank Road, Florida Boulevard hotel? I think like so. a motel? Like a motor inn? He would also, he take her to the, uh, what was the, there was one that was called like the Alamo Inn or something there. Maybe he would take this chick there. Or does he send her in to get the room and then like she pull, he pulls the car up and like sneaks into the hotel no, to Les, get some action. Les isn't that smart. I mean, because that'd be the way you'd have to do it. Like, you can't go in and say, hey, it's me, Coach Miles. I need a room for an hour. Why not just go to the condo? That's the other question. Who was in the condo that day? It's your (laughs) condo. Um, So I guess he also told the athletic department staff that female student workers who helped the football team lure top recruits needed to be attractive, blonde, and fit. That makes sense, though. Like, I mean, well, (laughs) there's pretty girls that aren't blonde. I get that, but like the part about being hot, like like you're not gonna have some like unattractive chick that you're trying to use to lure people into your, um, you know, into ca- campus, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, like it makes sense that you would be like, make sure all the hot chicks, like make sure hot chicks are trying to lure these guys to our university. But the point is, when you've done this enough times and with enough chicks, that the school actually makes you sign. Something. Yeah, you need, to, you need to chill the fuck out, chief. It required him to sign forms stating that he had read and understood the school's policies. He was told to cease hiring student employees at babysitters and spending time alone with them. LSU informed him that if he continued his inappropriate behavior, it would be a contract violation and he'd be fired with no money. Like, dude, what are you doing? Is this like now cause for Kansas to get out of this contract? I, well, I, I don't. I don't know that legally they can still. Because I'm pretty sure they'd like to. Oh, I think they wanted to get out of it the second they watched the first game. <laughs> I mean, they're morons. Like, 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 Les is not a great coach. Les just happened to, you know, be at a great school that had a bunch of talent and coaches and everything else. He's obviously not smart. I mean, dude, like, I get it. Like, I get it. You, you want to get a hotter chick, and you you got power. I can see why you're all turned on by it. Like, I don't blame you for being turned on that's just human nature but like dude do you think that you're not gonna get caught doing again, this shit this is obviously a lot of situations where the university makes you sign a fucking paper that says you're not gonna talk to any female employees or any female students I like think say. about how effed up that is they're like coach you are not d- j- coach you get problem. away from the students <laughs> it's like that line in uh in mean girls coach car Get away from the underage girls. <laughs> no. Coach O, Coach LS, uh, Miles, get away from the co eds, Coach. I wonder what Coach O has to say. Racism said, uh, got to go. He said, let me tell you something. I gave my tiger spunk to somebody that was of age and was consenting. That's key. I ended up divorced because I got into a consensual relationship <laughs> with some hot ladies. Creeping on uh, athletes or student uh, workers got to go. Again, though, there's a couple of important things here. One, it's not like these were underage chicks, so he's not like a pedophile or something. That's right. at least a positive. No, that's, that's an important thing to that's know. That's a, a positive. Um, and um, we don't know if these chicks were flirtatious with him at all. But we don't tell know. Tell me, this whole babysitter thing does not sound like a lifetime movie. Oh, totally. Like the innocent little babysitter comes over and just wants to, you know, watch Les's kids, but then. There's no kids there. There's no kids. It's he, just less at the condo. He's just sitting there in his undersized hat and nothing else. <laughs> chewing on some grass. Just chewing on some grass, like uh, like watching old game film this is or a- watching his audition tapes for those uh, for that shitty Challenger movie he was in, or like that that where he played the role in that football coach movie. Yeah, One of and those. then he's gonna be mad when Lifetime doesn't cast him for the role himself. I mean, at this point, he's like, I need work. Like, if I were, like, Kansas should have already fired Miles, and not because any of this, he's dreadful. And, but, like, I didn't dislike him. Like, I like, he seems like a nice enough guy, I guess, but. Well, he's really nice to the females. Again, though, I, again, <laughs> on the scale of, like, horrible sex crimes you could be involved oh, no, in if you're a chick, there's much like, worse. like, there's much worse. This is just a horn toed old man sending you text messages. You could be out at the bar and some guy abducts you. Like, I'm not saying this is good. I'm saying you got to feel like, hey, I didn't end up as horrible as it could have been based on all the bad shit that happens out there. 
But you said there's I more. I could have been e- Epstein. There's you could have been Epstein. Or who was the other, the what the, the, the movie producer fella? Uh, Ep- uh, oh, Harvey Weinstein. Yeah, you yeah. could have been Weinstein. That sounded like some hardcore shit. Les Miles is just a horny old guy sending you messages, uh, making an offer to go back to his condo or a hotel, and which again doesn't career. make any sense. He just wants to help your career. That's it. It's fine. It's totally fine. Um, but didn't you say evidently there's more tomorrow that's supposed they to be They said that there's more that's being revealed, I think, tomorrow. Oh, boy. So, oh, less. There you go. And 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 MW Soulgrove says less did nothing wrong, but I there is an element of it where it is wrong. You have to be somewhat of a professional. And not only like you're like, like this is where it becomes a thing. It's a position of power. If I'm sending text messages to someone, like if I'm a college kid sending to another college kid, at some point if the chick's weirded out by it, say okay, can you stop? I'm not into you. But you're not in a position of power. Les Miles is like the most powerful person maybe in louisiana at that time more powerful than the governor than any mayor less is a very important guy and i also and get that. And so i understand that part of it to a degree i mean i do now again if it's a 20 year old dude sending text to some chick and she's not into it that's just a horn told college important. can you get over it this is a dude that's 60 something years old he's got a wife he's got kids he's the most powerful man in the state he's like he's super powerful that's what all this is but it is important like to see like what the text message responses were from these girls to be fair True. What if they like if because if they send like oh coach lol you know like I do think it's incumbent upon because like here's a little story, not a story just kind of an anecdote. Um, men still want to get laid. It's hard for men to get laid if they can't ask you like hey. Can we make, can we fornicate tonight? Can we make love tonight? So you have to at least ask. But again, back to Les being who he is and that power and knowing like everyone knows who you are. They know you have a family. They know you're married. It's just, it's, I don't know. It is a bad look for your school as well. Of course it's, this isn't about a bad look. This is about like from the legal standpoint of it and being a creep or whatever. Like friend, like just a person, like it's hard for dudes. Because dudes, like, they want to get some action. You don't know what you're allowed to say. You would like to think that a woman will say, no, thank you, I'm uninterested. Then when you keep advanced, then okay. But, like, a lot of times women don't say no in these cases. They just kind of, like, downplay it because it's embarrassing or whatever. And they'll go, like, oh, coach, ha uh-huh. No, you should say, coach, away, yeah. no. Bad coach. And then spray him with, like, a squirt it bottle. It was, like, what was that story a few months ago with the chick, the, uh, oh, was it an MLB person? Remember? Like, oh, the, like the, the dude that was a general manager? And sent her like 700 text messages. And then a weenus pick? Yeah. Yeah, Something that's like that. a bit that's a bit much. But at some point in that, she just should have said, no, sir, I'm not interested. No means no. That's all you got to say. And then dudes will be like, I'm, I'll go. But and if they it, don't, they're waxed. As a girl, I mean, sometimes you get weird texts or like you get involved with somebody and you're kind of like, God, if I just ignore them, maybe they'll just go away. Which is the wrong, it's wrong to do that. You should just say no. Just say, I'm not, and then if they keep uh, going, then you get that restraining order. What was the story you told me today that there's a new line of underpants? Oh, let's see if I can find this story, actually. Um, there were, it was a, some woman, it was a person that was a survivor of some sort of, like, sexual assault. This is going to look really odd when I search this. Sexual assault lingerie. Oh, God. But that's what it was. It was a, per, it was a person. I know. And this is going to look odd on my computer whenever it gets, you know, when the feds do, come in. They're going to do a background check on Please you. Please tell this me new the story. Job. No, the story didn't even pop up. This new job is going to be God like, dang it. Josh. Oh, here it is. Good. Sex assault survivor launches lingerie line. Okay. Oh, my God. You didn't tell me it was spelled A S S. Oh, I didn't see that. Ask. Uh, okay, whatever. That's suggestive. It says ask first. Can you pour Ugh. me some wine, please? So let me see if I can put this uh, photo up for you guys. So there's this chick. She was a 24-year-old fa- her na- uh, of ask first panties. That's A-S-S-K. Can you imagine this on Shark Tank? <laughs> They'd all go, I'm in. Mark Cuban's like... You know, I have some experience with uh, me tooing in hostile workplaces. Yeah, are these so are, are I, I know this. Are these vegan underpants? I gotta ask. I, like that's not really my area. That's <laughs> that not really is, my is space. Area, that for is not sure. my, Oh, it's Mark Cuban's, yes. Yeah. Uh, but she said hopes her line of lingerie will spark conversations about consent. My thing is that like once a guy gets to that point of seeing the underpants, more than likely I feel like he probably has already gotten consent. Or he's a dirty birdie and not a not a pleasant fellow. So here's some of these underwear that says, like, I don't know these, I don't know how I feel about this. This is kind of a, I don't know, it's kind of weird. 
I mean, if I were a dude and I had gotten to that point with a chick where I got down to the underwear and then saw this, I'd probably be like, eh. Yeah, like, I think I, that's nice, but you should get going. Like, I don't know, because even if we, you know, do this and then you get pissed at me a month later, you'd be like, look at my underpants. It said no. Yep. There it's, you just, go. This can't end well. So uh, that's this lady. Uh, and uh, those are her underpants. And uh, why the, is that tongue licking? What does that candy heart say? It says, ask me, I believe is what it says. Like, you see what I'm saying? Like, I'll, I will, I will concede to you on this, but like, I, I don't I know. Like, I feel weird about this. No, at this point, I'm like, we need like paperwork that says, despite what your underpants say, <laughs> I asked. <laughs> I, like, we got to get to that point, though, right? Like, you have to, like, like fill out a form, a consent form, and go. Did you fill up my wine yet? No. Oh, oops. Sorry. I was caught she up in trying like to read Nicki this lady's She looks like Nicki Minaj, but white. That's a very good observation, Sword Trigger Finger. I don't think so. I could see it. I don't see that. Motorboat material right there says Magnolia 81. You better ask first. That's what it's just. It seems like a weird product to me. Yeah, uh, okay, so Ace Gilmore brings this up. Damn, the lips are terrible. Stop the lip fillers. Yes. So many girls are, like, really pretty and really hot, and then you look at their lips, and you're like, girl. Yeah, I'm with you. No. No. There's a, there's a good, the, um, what you recall, it's a fine example. Who was that the person we were looking at the other day? There was somebody the other day. Oh, it was one of these, oh, I forgot who. Oh, you know who, one of them was one of the Tiger Woods chicks in that documentary. Oh, the one, yeah. the, one of the ones... Like the 12, 13, 14 of them that he said that they all felt he was in love with them. T. Diddy says, not as hot as Cindy. Uh, <clears throat> let's, Cindy doesn't know <clears throat> the world that she's stepped into. Uh, no, she does. Uh, is Cindy in here tonight? I don't know. She was supposed to be, but they also she's also on a bachelorette party. And I saw that she was drinking mimosas at like 10 a.m. So I don't know if Cindy's still up, but if she is, Lord. We'll hear from her, I'm guessing. She can more than me. My dad, he, he, I'm talking to him today, and he goes, you know, Josh, you need to watch the stuff you say on that Twitch. And also, you got Cindy into this damn stuff. We did. That Cindy's going to be watching you tonight. I'm like, all right, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, Dad. But that's that, that was the phone call I had with my dad today. You got to watch yourself on this Twitch shit, Josh. He's like, Josh, you got to watch, Josh. Watch what you say on this Twitch shit. Oh, but at 2 a.m. when he's singing... Uh, uh, Brandy. Brandy. Yeah. That's fine. Uh, oh, yes. But when it's me over here, he's like, you know what I'm going to say like what your grandpa says? You need to sound classier. I'm like, thanks, Dad. This is not a classy Twitch channel. If we were classy on here, we'd have like eight viewers. Yep, but now we have 132. There's no need to be classy. There is no We're need. doing shit the right way. Get out of here. Sons of bitches. It's a Thursday night wine party, and it's going down. Uh, let's see. Uh, I've had that convo with my dad before. He was like, don't let these dumbasses on Twitter get you in trouble because they are dumbass." Dude, that's really... Well, Trey, that's different, though. But those are, those are wise words. They are very wise words from old Bobby, okay? And he's not wrong. But there's a difference between that and, you know, doing a, a, a program here. There's but a, you on Twitter, you have let the dumbasses get you in trouble. So I you have. need to heed the advice of Bobby. Bobby Bobby Campbell, baby. Those are wise words. Bobby Ray Campbell or whatever his middle name was. Uh, but yes. Everyone who's gotten a package, by the way, from the auction show on Saturday says, I'm disappointed I didn't get a note from Cindy. Ace Gilmore says that. <laughs> and I think uh, Long Dong Silver said the same thing yesterday. Like, like why couldn't Cindy have, Cindy? like, written a little note and kissed it? <laughs> like, with so, like some lips on there? Well, Bobby oh. Angus, Cam Angus Campbell. Well, you know what? He Those were words to live by, Trey. Those were good words. Uh, but anyway, so uh, I guess we should say goodbye to the podcast portion of the audience uh -oh. so we can get uh, real freaky naughty. Oh, Lord. Real freaky naughty. All right, we'll see you guys later. And now here we are. The gloves come off. This is where the real stuff happens. It's quarantine titty day. It's not. I miss I miss that. If there's Boosie. one thing I miss about quarantine, it's QTD. Well, I'm sure Boosie's still doing all sorts of dumb shit on the gram. He's, he's got doing? like 17 different accounts. Yep, he's it's got Boosie. He's on Boosie 12 now. Mark Zuckerberg, don't kill it, man. This is my OnlyFans. 
I tell you what, what a life, though. It's good that you guys are hanging out with us tonight, you loyal jissers. We do have the Z Dog song, don't forget. Ah, that's right. It's what? kind of a nice link too. You know, it's a, it's a it's a Sixers diss track, I believe. I'm all for that. So if Clyde's still here, what's going to be auction Sunday? You know, that's a great question. I know we have two mugs. We have two 790 era jiss mugs. Yep, I know. Which we they're have... they're two of a kind, basically, because my dad made two of them. That was a gift for me. Yeah. Basically, dad's way of giving me gifts is putting my logo we on still shit. Have to look for those WIP polos. I know you have them. That your I, dad I think made. I might have. Those might have. I don't know. Uh, but there's that, and then um, so we have the 790 era mugs. We have a couple of, of just the gist T-shirts from Stute Garden that they got us. You do have your credential from Minnesota <clears throat> Radio Row. I forgot who it was that wanted that. I was like, do you have the credential from the, the Radio Row fight? I said, yeah, I got it. D. Hess is like, he, he wants this mug. He's been saying this every day since we talked about it. Any 97.5 swag? I have z- No, I didn't really even work there. So, no, I don't have any 97.5 stuff. I Could apologize. Took a picture of you driving the station vehicle again today. I did have to drive the station vehicle today. Uh, so, uh, tr- hey, uh, Z Dog, send us the link to the uh, to the new jam. Did Josh tell where he's going after ninety seven five? No, Rebecca Cat did not. Sorry. Do you have the pen Vandermeer threw at you? I wish I did. It'd be a hell of a pen. You just say it is. Probably yeah. How are you? What are you gonna know the difference? Oh, let me see if I can pull There's this. Something up. else. We, oh, we have the credentials. There was something else too. I think we found. Oh, we have some hats. Oh yeah, oh, we did find a couple of prototype gis hats. Yeah. So there's some stuff. And uh, and a couple of t-shirts and what have you. Let's see. This is let Sixers are whack. You know, the Sixers. You're not the number one team in the East. Joel Embiid, you smell like. Well, you smell like you smell like Weed? a crack addict. Oh! That joint in a bar. And ben Simmons, you smell like well, you smell like Frosties from Wendy's. That smells good. The Sixers. Well, the Sixers are trash. Doc Rivers, you suck. You're still the crybaby of the year. Since 2017, Jazz are better than you Sixers. <laughs> skirt, skirt, a a a a a a a a a a a. The Sixers are a bunch of crack addicts. Oh, by the way, you Sixers fans, I'm coming at you. Sixers fans, you smell like. You smell like doo doo. Yeah, oh. that they do. That's true. A, A, A. Don Mitchell and Rico Bear are gonna bust you wide open. To that's Embiid. that sounded gonna sexual. Dunk on you. By the way, and be didn't you get dunked by Mitchell? You big cry baby. Wham wham. Uh, he is a cry baby. That's true. In the final Sixers. Jazz are burning you, Philly. Bear watcher, you better watch it. <laughs> Quinn Snyder, coach of the year, baby. Hey, hey, we jazz are number one. In all honesty, yeah, Z Dog, you should keep tweeting this to Joel Embiid because he will probably reply. Probably. This seems like the sort of thing that would absolutely get in his head. I think so. <sighs> Boy. Z Dog bringing that straight fire tonight. Someone asked if you have uh, what was the sign thing they said. There was one up here. I'm like, wait, I think we could have that. What's that? Now I lost where it was. Oh, the dildos you threw down the hallway. They're probably still in the drawer at 790. We had those for a while. Yeah. If Come to could... think of it, I think some of the some ladies took those. Oh, and someone got a 713 grind wants a signed Asian foot massage punch card. Also can do that. Oh, well, <laughs> I think I could do that. Hold on, I think I might have one in my wallet. Maybe you can text Sean and ask him to see if the dildos are still in the cabinet. I think those are gone by now. I don't. They don't throw anything away in those drawers. That's true. Like, this is going to be a weird request, but can you dig around in that cabinet and find my dildos? It's not hard to find. Look at that. See? Here you go. Chi reflexology. 
So if the price is right. It's not all. They didn't punch them all yet. But, I mean, you go get a foot rub or two and you got a free one coming. So if the price is right, you can get your Chi Reflexology autographed uh, punch card. Not that it matters, but on a regular basis, ESPN 97.5 would skip posting uh, half of your show in the podcast feed. I don't, I, I don't know that, that that's not a deliberate thing. I mean, they have interns usually that do that. So something messed up, something oh, messed up. The voided Chick-fil-A black card. Hold on. <laughs> that one's got your name on it and everything. Let me see if I still have that in here. <laughs> there you go baby so if the price is right if the price is right uh i will gladly uh i will gladly sell my chick-fil-a black card that um is really of no use because it's from 2019 it's a collector's item but it's a collector's item if you're if you're putting together a whole set of things of mine that could be one of them I've also learned that you and Z-Dog have very similar feelings about the uh, Sixers. We do. I think they all smell like Frosties. You think Joel Embiid's a crybaby, and you think Doc Rivers is a crybaby. So. I do, and I think they smell like a mixture of crack and Frosties from Wendy's. You said that same thing. I did, like Z-Dog. Like, I was on the air one day, and I said, you guys in Philly smell like crack and Wendy's Frosties. And they said, first of all, we smell like water ice. Water ice. What is Wendy's? We have water ice. Uh, let's see. Too bad it's not a white card, LOL. Oh, Ace Gilmore. How about a framed copy of your transcript from LSU? No. But what I did find the other day when cleaning out a chest of drawers <laughs> is I did find my LSU identification card, and I did find my first my learner's permit from when I was like 16. These could all be things that could go for high dollars. And by high dollars, I mean, your baseball card went for 40. I mean, if we're talking about my, I've got an old license of mine from Louisiana. I've got my learner's permit from Louisiana. Well, you shouldn't really sell that because they could steal your identity with like old driver's license and stuff. Well, not if you mark certain things off. Well, who wants that? And then my LSU identification card. Oh, good. Z-Dog just tweeted Embiid. Yes. Yes, King. Yes. That's what I'm here for. I'm here for that action, the next boss. Next press conference and beads and be like, he's Z-Dog. <laughs> Let's see. When will you be able to tell us where the new gig is? I don't know. That's their call. Yep. I'm not, I'm not digging into that mess. When they and your agent say it's okay. Because as you said before, she scares you. My, my agent scares the shit out of me. She might have like a heart attack or she might yell at you saying that you're leaving. Probably. That's why I'm not telling her. It's going to get back to her. It always does. Like kind of intimated that to her already. Like so, um, funny story, Heather. Uh, Luther, yeah. Up, Luther, what are you doing over there, stud? You going to go meet yeah. some people tomorrow? 24 Jules says, Josh Ennis, please congratulate me. Well, that's very demanding. What do you need to be congratulated for? You're going to work with Nick Cannon? No, my agent can't work miracles for me like she did for Nick Cannon. Is your agent old Jewish and chain smoke? Well, one out of three. My agent is Jewish. <laughs> and I've never met my agent before, <laughs> just so you know. I like her. I've never met her either, but just a couple of times we talked on the phone. I like her. Um, no, but she's she's great, but I've never met her or FaceTimed with her. We've never seen each other face to face. We have conversed with each other via the phone, and she very rarely she very rarely has any time. She's like, all right, I got a few minutes, hon. What is it? Like hon and angel and sweetie. I get that a lot from her. Uh, but yes, uh, let's see. Um, I got accepted into nursing school. Good for you. 24 All jewels. Right. Congratulations. Way to go. You. Well, cheers that let's cheers for 24 jewels. There you getting go. Getting into nursing school. I'm holding my glass up here. Oh, sorry. Jeez. It's Thursday night wine party. We there cheers for things. <laughs> Andy says, I've met your agent. She's attractive. Well, Andy, I don't know that that's your place to say that Andy. 
But uh, I have not met my uh, my Don't agent. Less miles, Andy. Look at look, look at less Andy Miles over here. <laughs> it's like, why don't you come hang out in my condo? Uh, but uh, let's see, where's Andy's kid? Oh boy, I, I, he's probably taking notes from Tucky. He's probably watching the replay of Tucky time right now. If that's what time it comes on, I'm not sure. But now you know. You know what he's How about up to? Them flyers, Turbo Fuzz says. Yeah. How about those flyers? Huh? Four unanswered goals. Usually that happens to them. Not this time. <sighs> See, that what? wine's not too sweet. I think it's good. I mean, it's 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 not terrible. I thought the one last week was sweeter. The Riesling. I, I can get that. Whew. Matt Walsh had a good appearance on Tucker tonight. Says Joe. I know nothing about Matt Walsh other than Joe sends me tweets from Carrie Matt Walsh. Carrie sends me tweets. Maybe Joe <laughs> and Carrie belong together. It's like, sorry, Aaron, because Aaron doesn't, her husband doesn't strike me as he, very. He tries uh, to stay away from the politics. So maybe, I mean, maybe Carrie needs to run off with Joe if he's not bagging <laughs> some other rando. Oh, remember that one chick he was bagging? That was great. What was I, her I name? I her. Michelle. Yeah, uh, Michelle, yes. What a peach she Maybe was. Z, I think Carrie might run off with Joe in Philly. I mean, yes, he's a McDougal from Philadelphia. So, I mean, that's already a strike. But he still has two hacks left, baby. Uh, let's see. Is Joe still dating that one chick? I don't think so. That was a great fucking... That night we called them was hysterical. Yeah. What a day. What I a time. I think how that started was we thought Joe was dead. Because he we, wasn't in the chat. Yeah, it turns out he was just out bowling with some chick. <laughs> and then he just randomly called him like, Joe? Joe, where are you? Hey, hey jo- Josh, I'm out bowling. Yeah. And then Michelle's like, he's an idiot. Uh, also, you guys can feel free to throw in some bits or some donations here. Like, uh, first of all, thank you for the follow Twitch nuge. Trey wants to know if Joe always wears a snow hat. Fair th- question. He probably does. How does Joe say water? Wooder. <laughs> Water is the correct answer. I think Trey said he sent me a message today that he's going to try to come out to Safety RX tomorrow. So you've got you, me, Luther, Trey. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be a party out there for the time we're there. Now, we're going to be there a little bit later. I got things to do. There's Maddie T. I got priors. Uh, Let's see. Maddie T says his dad's coming over to Safety RX tomorrow. Uh, Baseball at McNeese State in the 60s before two tours. and Now, that's a bad mamma jamma right there. But yeah, hopefully we're there between 11.30 and noon. I don't think this call will take forever you have to do. No, it'll be, sw- it'll be swift. I don't think you have to be messing on the Zoom too long. Nope, so I got to do that at 10.30, and then we're going to motor on over to Safety RX. And you better get there because the barbecue is there. That is a barbecue party coming up, and you might want to be there. So there, now you know. What time? Well, we'll be over there about 11.30-ish. But Give the party, or take. Maddie Give T's t- prepping the vittles now, so we got some ribs and some BBQ brisket Again, ready to guys, go. Free food and 25% off any glasses you want. And Maddie T says he can get your prescription just from your current glasses. So Jilly's going to bring her current glasses. You can bring a prescription you may have had from like other places in the past year or so, and Maddie T will hook you up. It, that's 11.30 tomorrow morning friend maybe lesbian rachel's over here like at night yes we're gonna be in the parking lot (laughs) of of the eye dot of the eyeglasses place at 11 30 getting lit i miss rachel though we haven't seen her like that one time we all got really drunk and i feel like we never actually hung out again when was that sean's birthday well i can i have a pretty good idea as to why we didn't hang out after that i got fired two (laughs) days later so, but we've still been here for two years after that. Actually, like next Saturday is the two year anniversary. Boy, that it's going down. Maybe that's when we'll be able to make this announcement. Who knows? On I the don't two know. year anniversary of being fired. Maybe so. New Who beginnings. knows? New beginnings. Here's to new beginnings. She says we ghosted her. We literally just. Oh, you her. ghosted us. No, we. Oh, you. We were ghosted. Rachel was always inviting us out to go to like Woodrow's and stuff, but like I feel like we literally did nothing. We sat at home on the couch and didn't know how to go to bars. No. To save money, mostly. But then the Rona, and then, I don't know. Trey says, I got ghosted by Josh and Jilly, too. You're full of shit, Trey. <laughs> Trey just wanted to play basketball with you, Josh. Good That's job. That's all he wants. Like, I'm not Roger Staubach. I'm not your dad-da. 
Uh, can Maddie T get my prescription with my contacts? I would uh, maybe Maddie T. Can you? Why did you get fired two years ago? I don't need to get into all that shit again. I appreciate you for being curious. Why didn't you get fired two years ago? Yeah, how about that? <laughs> don't need to get into all that shit again. Oh yeah, Rachel is the one. Rachel has the centaur painting. It's first of all, I don't know that it's a, so much a painting as a, it's a screen print. I mean, it's kind of like our, our our canvas wall art. It's not a painting, but it was designed by uh, what's his name, Joe. Uh, well, Joe, not, may, not yeah, this Joe, Joe Bond, different Joe. And then Jim put now. I mean, maybe and now I know that that's uh, a very valuable piece in her collection. Josh and Jilly left Trey in Beaumont one. We I did no such thing. Josh and Jilly left their sobriety in Beaumont one time. I left my soul in Beaumont. <laughs> I left my healthy body in Beaumont and came home and had the Rona afterwards. I should be considered a hero. I went and did a remote despite the fact that that the that you know it was that I bat I battled the Rona. And I and ultimately I have won so far. Poor Marines is the time you had the lift of the Texans practice. It was Rachel the girl who showed up? Yes, that was Rachel. Oh yeah, she sure did, didn't she? I wasn't there, so I don't really remember who showed up. Z Dog said it's a good thing I have two Discords. I can't get into my Z Dog one. Well, I'm glad you have two of them. Josh, do you remember interviewing Roberto Osuna's lawyer? I do. No one else did. Everybody saw, oh, you don't have any credibility. Oh, I have credibility. I got credibility coming out of every orifice of my body. On my body. I, have, I am Mr. Credibility. Andy will tell you. Andy Bloom is in this chat. He'll tell you about my credibility. Although Andy always thought I never had credibility because you have to act like Howard Eskin to have any sort of credibility in Philly. I feel like now's if, the time that you should grab that picture and show everybody. Oh, the picture of me and Andy? Yeah. All right, hold on. No, we're not getting up yet, Luther. The wine party, Liz. You said you won't sell this one. This one doesn't get sold. Despite how much Andy might dislike me sometimes, this picture does not. Look at that titty. I love that you're wearing sunglasses. What a douchebag. Because I was probably on my way to my car <laughs> for a remote. Probably going to the Borgata before they pulled that like, account. Yeah, I got good ratings. I got sunglasses on. What's up? Titties. And yeah, that is an impressive titty. But I was in decent shape back then. I was probably on my way to the Borgata or Chicky and Pete's. Given the fact that I got ratings in my hand, it was probably earlier in the week. So, or no. Yeah, I was probably a Tuesday, and I was probably on my way to the Borgata. That's not how you say Borgata. The Borgata. Well, that's better. And um, and I went over there, and uh, until I, I think I cost them that account at one point. But I cost a lot. You know, I'm a, I was a wild man. There was a time at the Borgata I saw poop on the floor, like you, literally a poop. And you made the great decision to get on the radio and say, guys, there's poop on the floor. Listen, I, I'm, listen, I was number one. I could talk about whatever I want to talk about. I'm glad you've learned some things. Uh, but there was poop. And then I asked him once if we could get the old people to race around the Borgata main floor in their scooters, but they said no. Speaking of old jobs. That was back when I thought radio was about trying to entertain people. Speaking of old jobs and old bosses. Mm -hmm. What was the phrase I was using when I told you to reach out to uh, Eddie here? Does anyone remember? We were trying to figure this out today. I was like, was it butter the bread? Like, because like, everybody was like, you, you got to reach out to this guy and make amends. You were going to, like, send the text about Harden, like, hey. And we, he we were debating whether or not I should. And I was like, you got to do it. You got to. What did I say? Okay, the, you, like, you got, someone in here is going to remember, but I thought it was butter the bread. I thought but it, I... it might have been. But I don't. I mean, what was it? It wasn't extend the olive branch. That would have been right. No. It was no. something that made no sense. Butter your bread? Butter the bread? No, I don't. but I don't think it was butter the bread. Ace Gilmore says it was, and I trust her. Was it butter? You got, you got to go out there and you got to butter the bread. You got to butter the bread, Josh. <laughs> um, it wasn't men the... No, but now, see, now she's saying men the bread. See, now she's throwing out... She doesn't know. I swear it was She doesn't know what it was. Toss the, it was not toss it was the salad. Not toss the salad. It was certainly not toss. Anyway, this is my favorite guy right here. That's all Andy Bloom. And for eleven dollars, I'll sell this picture. Not autograph. Twelve for the autograph. Got to choke the chicken. It was not choke the chicken. It was not butter the biscuit. 
It was breast the butter. It was not breast the butter. Does Jim Mudd still ride the red wave? Maybe he does. I don't have that answer. Ace Gilmore, it was not fry the chicken. Now you're never going to know. God, it's going to drive me nuts. It was so funny. I think Carrie might have known. That I'll sounds like her. something Carrie may know. By the way, like, Deranged 2, thanks for the 10 bucks. Thank you. Oh, Taste the rainbow. Cream the bagel is not the right answer. Uh, your autograph or the small guy no tits autograph? My autograph only. Andy's not here to autograph it. It was butter the bread, says Rich Rose. It might have been butter the bread. I think it was. It was not bone the goat, spank it slap, but it was not bone <laughs> Josh, the goat. Josh, you got to bone the goat. You gotta, listen, if you're going to make this thing, you got to make things right, you got to bone the goat. Trey says, that's why me and my first girlfriend broke up because she wanted me to bang her doing her time. I said, what? The hell are you talking about, Trey? Because she wanted me to bang her doing her time. And I said, no. Well, oh, yeah, I don't, I don't think so. Oh, time of the month. Oh, oh, that's gross. Trey, did you say you were drunk? Did I see that in here earlier? Is he? First of all, by the way, there, this is what we need to talk about in the world. Period sex is wonderful. I don't want to get into that. Well, it, it's a relief. It, it eases cramps. Uh, well, that's nice. This is something my dad will send me a text about. Josh, okay, you got to have a classier Twitch you stream than this. Tell your dad that I was number one in Chicago talking period sex. That was the first. Piece what have of you audio. done, Scotty? Tell me what you were talking about in Cookville, Tennessee. You shit. I wish I could find that damn flash drive. I'd let you play my demo from Chicago because I loved it. And the first opening line was, "We're talking about period sex," and that's how I got my job in Houston. <laughs> True story. Andy, the world's changed a lot, hasn't it? In just a matter of a decade. I oh, now I want to find that audio so bad. I think I'm sure it's in the closet over it. here somewhere. I'll find it when we dig through these boxes. I'm sure it will. I, uh, let's see. Let's. I went down. Uh, I, I don't want to get into all okay, this. Okay, see, I wouldn't do that during a period. I don't want to get into all this. is awful. But you throw down like a towel on the bed. Oh, come on. Maybe a red towel. You don't even see it. Come anything. on. It's fine. It's fine. Come on. And your lady will appreciate it. Well, that's, well, that's, I'm shocked that Trey doesn't do that. It's then. extra lubrication. I'm surprised that Trey doesn't do it. Cause like Trey is a very giving lover. As Cindy is watching by the way. <laughs> <laughs> she said they had some drinks on a dolphin cruise and now uh, having more wine. Boy, she can go all day. I know. I'm really impressed. She's a tank. I would be asleep like seven hours ago, but not Cindy. Oh no. You have to understand, she's free from my dad for a weekend so she can go out and get wild. Thank you, Matt Keller, for the 10 bucks, and thanks, Brad Kong, for the resub. Appreciate that. Uh, but my dad's probably sitting around, like, watching some dopey documentary on Netflix. His wife is out at the beach somewhere on a part of a party and watching us on Twitch. Been hammered all day. Everybody says hello to stepmom Cindy. She's in the chat today. Jeez. Note the hat. <laughs> oh, shit. Cindy may be on the beach wearing a go fish in the movie hat, so. But she's there. Should we show everybody? I don't know. Cindy? Well, it's not like she'd care. <laughs> well, she probably sent it to me to, to show people. Well, then hand me your phone. I'll show you. We'll show you stepmom Cindy on the beach with her go fish in the movie hat. Living her which life. Which four of you lucky folks uh, were able to attain last week. Living her life. That's stepmom Cindy on the beach wearing a go fish in the movie hat, living a life. <laughs> there you go. I love the hat. Pretty soon, Cindy's going to start getting lectured by my dad about Twitch. Cindy, it's what not, are you doing posting your pictures on that, that Twitch? <laughs> I'm going to tell you what my I'm going to tell you what Grandpa Ralph said about that. Did your dad win over by doing the Scooby voice? Who knows? I feel like, uh, did we get to the story on Saturday? I feel like we asked how they met, and now I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't, I don't remember. God. Spank it, slap it. You did get one of those hats, you lucky bastard, you. Should just have Dad make more of those and send them to me to send out. 
or just have, you know, we can sell them and then he, Cindy can send them out. That's true, too. Because she crushed at that. She rules. Cindy wasn't wearing a mask. Oh, no. Nope, she was out on the beach. Now, everybody, Maddie T wants you to know he's about to inject the brisket with Lee and Avram's uh, Italian sauce and seasoning. Ribs have been seasoned since 6 today. Oh. Putting the oh. meat on at 1 a.m. That a baby, Dr. Matty T. You guys better come out tomorrow. It's going to be exciting. You know what? I, I got caught up. This is a random thought. And I don't know how I got down this wormhole. But I was sitting in the car, and sometimes I'll get to the radio station like 15 minutes early, and I'll just sit in the car and whatever. And because uh, I'd gone to McDonald's to get my unsweet tea. I Sometimes I'll get two unsweet teas before I get to the Well, stay. McDonald's is a deal because it's only a dollar. Chick-fil-A, that shit's like three bucks. Well, usually, say, say I go to lunch at Chick-fil-A, I'll get the unsweet tea. Then I'll go to the McDonald's on Richmond and get another unsweet tea and pour it into the, the styrofoam cup because that holds the ice better. But I was in the car, and somehow uh, YouTube, it recommended a video from Scrubs, which is a funny show, but it was a whole montage of the Hooch is Crazy recurring gag. And the hooch is crazy recurring gag is a great gag. And it all culminates in what was the last official season of Scrubs with him like seeing all the people as he's leaving the hospital. He sees all of them. And hooch has a, uh, he's in a, a, a straight jacket and he goes, hooch is crazy. But it's a great recurring bit from the show. But somehow it led me down a worm. Like, so one of the other recommended videos was from the Wonder Years. And this Wonder Years video, and, and, and now Andy... Uh, Am I wrong here? Did you like the Wonder Years? Did it remind you of your life growing up? I think Andy was one of the people I know that loves the Wonder Years. Uh, and it's probably far more relatable to you than it is to me. I love the show, but I mean, I didn't grow up in the 1960s and early 70s like you did. So it's a little bit of a different thing for me. But it's a great show. I think it's relatable throughout time, except, you know, there'd be like issues involving like Kevin Arnold cyber sexing with Winnie Cooper now instead of just having their innocent romance of being children. But one of the great scenes in this show, and if you'll recall, there was a um, one of one of the, the the things with one of the the episodes, or one of the the recurring parts of the the, the Wonder Years program, is that uh, his dad was like a typical '60s dad, not a very doting, loving dad. Kevin's dad was just kind of a kind of an asshole. But then you'd have those moments where he was very nice and sweet, and. Um, this was an episode where Winnie broke up with Kevin and just wanted to be friends or whatever. They're like eight, but I mean, he wanted to, he broke up, they broke up and um, he comes home that night and his dad's out in the garage, like working on a lawnmower or something. And, you know, Kevin just walks in and he goes, you know, dad, you know, what are you doing? You know, I'm just trying to get this damn mower working or whatever it was. And, you know, Kevin's like, you want any help? And he's like, no, I don't need any, but, like he gets that sense that something's wrong with Kevin and he's, you know, so you ask him kind of what it is. And, and he talks about how he, he says, how are you and uh, Wendy, uh, Winnie doing? And he's like, well, you know, dad, it's, you know, I, I don't really know. Um, I mean, I don't think we're going to be together anymore or whatever. And his dad goes, you know, I wish I could tell you it's going to be easier, son, but it's not. And then like, you can tell like he, the kid's about to start to cry and his dad just kind of gives him a hug. And it's such an amazing thing. Cause like, the dad, like everybody, if you watch the Wonder Years, the dad is just kind of an asshole, kind of an old, I don't know how like Andy, your dad was, I don't know, but like people growing up in that era, I feel like there were a lot of dads in the 60s that were kind of like that, just kind of like not very emotionally attached to their kids, kind of detached a little bit, and like th that's a great scene on that show, but like the one of my favorite scenes in television history is like the last 10 minutes of the whole series of The Wonder Years. It's so good. I think you've watched it like a million times. You made me watch it a million it's times. It's so good. Did your dad ever comfort you after a breakup? No. <laughs> no, but jo Josh, Josh. I'll be like, Dad, she broke up with me. Josh, here's what we're going to do. You're going to rub my feet. I'm going to pretend to listen to your demo. And, uh, and then I'm going to tell you about everything happening in my life, okay? There's no heartfelt moments with you and your dad? Not really. Not really at all. Like, it's weird because my dad doesn't suck. He's not a bad dad. But I can't think of any heartfelt moments between me and my dad. I was wondering, do you ever have, like, that, that like, you know, sitcom bonding father-son moment? Not really. It's just, Josh, build a bridge <laughs> and get over it all the time. 
But man, the, the last episode of the Wonder Years is so good. And and they're like yeah, he and Winnie like are in this like they're like in this cave or some shit together and like what's gonna happen to us? And then like you think, hey, maybe they're gonna stay together, but then like the whole the post script of the show talks about how like she married some guy, he's got a wife. And it's so good. And Daniel Stern, who it shouldn't work. Like, it shouldn't work with Daniel Stern's voice because Daniel Stern, when you think of him, and obviously this show was before Home Alone, but when you think of Daniel Stern, you think of kind of wacky, and I think he was in Diner, and, like, you think of, like, wackiness. (coughs) But, man, his voice works perfectly. And like any typical coming-of-age show, it can only last so long because the kid gets older and he's not cute anymore and it doesn't work. But, man, that's such a... the, The end of that show is so good, and they're playing the music from The Natural, and it's just... It's spectacular. I feel we're only like a couple months away from a Wonder Years reboot. That would be sad. And it really would be tough considering that Kevin himself would be like 70. Yeah, well, it'll be a reboot because it's obviously tougher to grow up as a child now. (laughs) Trey says... They have it very difficult. My dad always talked about heavy equipment when talking about girls. Can you give us like an anecdote from your dad, Trey? (laughs) Like what kind of wisdom did you get from your dad? Wonder Years with a trans kid, and they are black, says Sword Trigger Finger. Uh, Andy says, Daniel Stern was so perfect for the show, I found a guy who sounded like him, and we used him for stuff at WYSP in the 80s. That's badass. Drew says, did Scotty tell you about sex in the Scooby-Doo voice? Yeah. I don't know that he did that. Is that your My dad never really told me anything, because I never really asked him anything. My dad wasn't around all that often. You know how I learned about the birds and the bees in random women's trailers in Montana. Like, Dad, what were you doing in there? That sounds odd. Uh, no, that I made that up. But um, that was for a fact. Speaking of dumb shit, did you see this? Like the plot of the Space Jam reboot. That is dumb. Where it's like uh, this this guy wants to steal lebron's followers like, that, that, that's so the most 2021 kidnaps. conundrum ever wait first of all again i've eliminated this plot already just go buy some followers it's possible i've watched the documentaries about it yeah because i guess the whole thing is like you know a lebron is having a hard time connecting with his kid because his kid would rather like create games than play games and yeah. so then john don Cheadle's there and don Cheadle's like some crazy fella in some alternate virtual universe who wants to steal LeBron's followers. So he kidnaps them and then somehow they have to play basketball to escape. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. It's typical 2021 shit. Trey's dad says, I'd still love you if you did, but you'd tell me if you were into backhoe drilling, (laughs) right? (laughs) Oh, I love you so much, buddy. I do. What a legend. I love you. I do. I, I hope you know that, Trey. I love you so much. <laughs> he has but to he, be. And I can hear the voice because he does the same voice for every character he ever. He has to be a special correspondent for your new show. I, he might have to be. He has With to With anecdotes like, you know, my dad would use heavy machinery as, uh, as ways to explain sex to me. I wouldn't care if you did, but would you? You ain't into backhoe drilling, are you? <laughs> uh, he says, as an April Fool's Day, I was all like, Dad, I'm bisexual. And he was like, you mean like bi and sex? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I believe uh, old Bobby Campbell is a big fan of yours, right? He, apparently he was. That makes sense. Apparently he was. The, the legend, Bobby Angris Campbell. Oh, God, he's so good. Crawfish boil in Pasadena in a month, question mark, says Matty T. Well, I probably won't be there. But if we're not, you guys should still go. Yes. If Matty T wants to do crawfish for you for you fellas and ladies. <sighs> I guess he's referring to me now, but Trey says, he was like, oh, yeah, I listened to him on the Dozier. <laughs> <laughs> God, Trey is so good. Oh, I love you, Trey. Maybe you will. Whatever this next job is, uh, we just might have to use Trey as a special correspondent. I think so. I think it has to happen. Yep. Let's do an Ask Trey bit. Ask Juggalo Trey. Andy, what do you think of that bit? Or just Trey gives advice from his dad. Life advice. Like things I learned from my dad with Juggalo Trey. We will keep his legacy alive forever. Give me another example of, uh, give me some other examples of wisdom that you learned from uh, Bobby Angris Campbell. 
I need to know if this is worth, uh, you know, pursuing for my next uh, gig or not. I think that's a great idea. What a legend. Cyber Chef says we have to call Trey so we know what drunk Trey sounds like. It, it like is Trey drunk or he not? Said he was. Trey, are you legitimately drunk or no? Is this just for show? Also, well, I got you guys here, and we're getting hammered also, on 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 rosé. Why don't you throw in a little donation here to help the cause? My dad always said, "You get an ugly woman, they try harder." And then what we would do there is we'd hit the jingle. Is what we would do there. Yeah, I think Trey would be a great special correspondent. Special correspondent Trey is here with uh, with uh, with wisdom from Trey's dad. My dad always said, get you an ugly woman, they try harder. That's been wisdom from Robert Angris Campbell. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you see something here. I love it. Uh, when they fire the producer, give me a call. There's no <laughs> producer. I can tell you that. Uh, much. Let's see here. Um, uh, bu- 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 let's see if I can find this here. What if I got like, so you got the Dr. Joshi fever glasses? Yeah. What if I got like Sally Jesse Raphael glasses? I would be so super turned on. Like the red? I'd be, it'd be, I'd be stupid turned on. Now you, he sees we have a live sp- what did he say? Go back. We have a live speaker. What kind of music do you guys like? Well, Josh is going to say Night Ranger. Just play If Heaven Ain't a Lot Like Dixie on loop, oh and these God. people will find you. <laughs> Our audience will find you. If you play If the South Would Have Won and If Heaven Ain't a Lot Like Dixie, they'll find or you. Or play Z Dog. Or play all of Z Dog's greatest hits. How about that? <laughs> if that's what you're into, uh, have at it. Oh. Uh, let me see if I can find the Discord Well, the here. people want Trey, so Trey, if you're down. Uh, well, it doesn't matter if he's down or not. He's getting a call, it sounds like. Uh, let's see, where is Trey? What, what's his name on here again? Not Funky Monkey. That's Kelsey. Uh, correct. Deadly Pants, is that him? No. no. Uh, Rocky? Rocky. Oh, did, he, did Trey already go to Denver? No, that's this week. Oh, that's this week. He's going after he comes to Safety RX. He's going to oh, go yeah. the airport after he comes and hangs with us. Let's see what Trey Angris Campbell is up to. I like that Joe asks Andy, can you get Trump's number so we can call him? <laughs> ah, you dope. Hey, Don, can you get Discord? Uh, the Donald. Please. We're looking for you. I know they won't let you on Twitter, but. So now we have to wait to hear from Trey. Now we now we just wait. Just, just riding this out. Maddie T, tell me what time you'll be there so I can give you an introduction. What, me? I guess. I'm not going to be there probably till 1130-ish, at, at, at the earliest, probably. Uh, now, let me ask you a question, Dr. Matty T. What do you think if Jilly got some Sally Jesse Raphael glasses? How would you feel about that? Like red frames and... Her you wouldn't like, wear them. I would on this show. Uh, now, Andy's doing a humble brag where he says, I know two people who can get you Donald Trump's number. Oh, boy. Well, Andy, get him on this damn Twitch. That would be fucking fantastic. I want that to happen. Wouldn't that be great? Like, that's how we, like, blow up. Yep, all of a sudden we're the we're the random Twitch show that has he Trump on. He doesn't have Rush anymore. He can have you. In what way am I even in that category? You can have his um what was the thing Rush did the the rally? Oh yes, the 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 uh the MAGA rally, the Mega MAGA rally. The mega MAGA rally. That could be this could be the new home for that. Yep, that could be it. Uh Andy, is it time that we just tell them that I'm taking over for Rush? Is that okay to say? <laughs> Uh, but then I'll get on that. Like that's amazing. How did you? Wouldn't it be great if we did get Trump on Discord? I think it'd be fantastic. And he's just sitting there, like in his underwear, hanging out. Andy, make it happen. Well, I got Andy on the on here. Let me see if I can find that picture from yesterday about the, where I showed you the uh, that Air America bumper sticker that I saw on someone's fence. Seems like something Andy would get a kick out of. Just a random fence in our neighborhood had an old Air America bumper sticker on it. Trey says, "What's the Discord?" There you go. Air America bumper sticker on a Hard fence. Oh, is it? Hold on. Hold on. Let me zoom in, maybe. I'm messing with the zoom. See, so yeah, there you go. There's your Air America bumper sticker that I found on a fence. Trey, what, what is wrong with your, your Discord, Trey? 
Try him again. Well, I don't know. He's asking me about his. We're 8740. Uh, Maddie T says, wherever you go, I will, and Safety RX will try to support you. You've been great. Well, thank you. And we're going to keep sending people your way, Maddie. Obviously, and you're still a sponsor of our podcast. And we love so, you for that. Yeah, and absolutely. I really think I might look for some Sally Jesse frames tomorrow. Do you have any red ones? Red Sally Jesse frames for this skankopotamus over here. Like a cat eye. Would you settle for Roger Stone? I would gladly yeah. talk with. Did you see the video of Roger Stone dancing at CPAC? I did. I know nothing about CPAC or anything, but you know what? I enjoyed watching him dance. What about if you got Kaylee? I talked to Kaylee McEnany. She's like signed on with Fox News, I think. There are some things that are shocking, and then there is Kaylee McEnany working for Fox. That is not shocking. Boy, Roger Stone on Twitch would be huge, too. And then we use Roger Stone to get us Trump. Yeah, we, we, like we got to get buddy-buddy with like him. Like He has so much fun on this thing. He's like, Don, listen. <clears throat> It's like, let me, okay, we're going to get Roger Stone on the show, and uh, then that's going to lead us to the Donald. Oh, Andy says he thinks he can do that. One day you guys are going to pop onto this, and you're going to go, wait a second, is that Roger Stone? I trust Andy. If Andy says he can do it, it's going to happen. Uh, well, I can assure you that. Does it feel like it got hot in here? No. It's weird. <laughs> is that wine hitting you? Maybe. Uh, when I say you, I mean Jill as well. I understood, Maddie T. But I'm asking you, Maddie T, which frames do you think would look good on Jilly's wonderful face? Sally Jesse. Because Jilly's going to bring her glasses in. You guys can find her prescription and then bada bang. Let's see here. Let's see if we can try Trey again. This little shit. My man's too hammered to figure out his, uh, his action here. Oh. Oh, no. Is it Josh Ennis 8740? It sure is, Trey. Yeah, you got menopause, Rich Rose says. Maybe it oh, is. Oh, he made a new Discord. Oh, I see. Maybe he'll call us. Now we just sit back and we wait for Trey. Because people want to know it. They want to know his business, his biznatch. See if I can send a tweet out to let everybody know that Trey is about to join and us on this. We're still the, here. We're still here, damn it. Still real to me, damn it. 125 views still, boy. I know, right? What's going on with the world? What is it with the world? Just nation rules. Absolutely. Let's uh, let's let the world know. We are still live on Twitch, drinking wine and waiting for at Juggalo. Trey, son of Robert Angris Campbell, uh, to join us. He will in moments. You don't want to miss this twitch.tv slash the Josh in a show. You don't want to miss something that you hear virtually every day, which is Trey with a... But Trey's always got like... You don't. You never want to miss a moment with Trey. Never miss a moment. Also, can we talk about J.J. Watt back to posting like ridiculous shit on the gram? That's J.J. Can you see my phone, anybody? Where he's in the, the ice bath? He has a better yeah. camera over there. Uh, all right, let's see. Uh, you could just pull it up, too. I could, but there, oh, oh, there he is. Like, he wants you to know. I'm out here, in the, but his brother posted the same thing. They're though. all out there. And they're all dopes. They're Thank all in you. the ice. Trey is packing his handcuffs for the orgy. I think he is doing that. We will now just wait for Trey. These brothers are bonding. Friend request sent. Ooh, I'm excited. Let's see. Old Trey. It's Trey Day. Let's see. Friend request. Where the hell is the friend? Oh, pending. Dale. I'm guessing that's Trey. Maybe. If it's not. Are you, is that you, Trey? Are you Dale? Is this like your secret hidden? I hope this is you and not some dude actually named Dale. I hope it is. I just hope it's some rando named Dale. Mm? Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Boy, the drama. Uh, um, uh, all right, I'm here. Hey, uh, hey. Trey, what hey. are you doing, buddy? Hey everybody, it's Trey here. Um, hold on, I I'm trying to figure out the new interface for my uh, my laptop. I just oh got me a new Mac, and uh, you know. Where, where, so how did you? Uh, where, where'd you get the money for this new Mac? Well, 
I'm I'm going off credit. Uh, you know, I've, I'm going off credit, and uh, it's not gonna be. It's not great, you know. But I'm going off credit, and um, you know, I don't usually buy off credit, but you know, I I, I needed a new I needed a new laptop because my old one didn't have the uh, the uh, headphone jack didn't work. So um, you know, shut what? up, cat. You have a cat too. Yeah, you hear him. Kyler, he shut up. Kyler doesn't eat the cat. Luther would eat yeah. the cat. Yeah, no, Kyler. He doesn't eat. He doesn't eat the cat. Kyler just took the bottle, off, the lid off this bottle. <laughs> Kyler, give me the lid back, you you bitch. <laughs> give me the lid. B- Damn it! Now there's <laughs> fireball all over the floor. Oh, well, how is there fireball all over the floor? <laughs> Because the, the damn dog took the lid, and I spilt the fireball, and it's all over the floor. And my hats, it got, it got on my hat, oh, and now bo- my hat's gone. Bullshit. Now, now this dog's going to start licking all this stuff stuff up like it's a... Well, that's probably not a good thing. You might want to clean that up. Oh, that's what I'm doing. Kyler's going to get I'm tanked. Doing. Kyler's... Kyler, um, he took... The, he took the lid off the bottle. He was trying to he's trying to drink some too. Well, you got to you got to make sure he doesn't. Yeah, I don't want to get this dog give this dog alcohol poisoning. I blame that the cat. Bad. It's not Kyler's yeah. fault. It's the cat's fault. Ferris wouldn't sh- he's been meowing all day like I-, I don't know. I think he's in heat, but uh Dude, wait a second. Do dude cats get in heat? I think so. This one is I know this one is for sure. He won't shut the hell up. He's been meowing all night. What have you and, been uh, drinking all night, Trey? Oh, fireball. See, I, I got some fireball. Is that real fireball or knockoff fireball? That's real fireball. Okay, good. Fireball on the thing. Then that's real. That's real fireball. Um. Yeah. I, you know, it's been funny. Like uh, one time, I had this podcast back in the day. And we did a thing called Barrel Fire Shot Takes, where we'd give a hot take after we shot Fireball. That's good. It, That's a good bit. It, it was a good bit until we found out a little bit of information about one of our co-hosts. And then it wasn't such a good bit. What was the information you found out? It was it was bad. One of our co-hosts chi- got into some Chris Hansen stuff. Uh-oh. Well, that doesn't mean you got to stop the bit. No, uh, well, it doesn't mean the bit lives on, but, but you know, we stole it from Paul Gallant. So, because he had barrel fire hot takes, remember? I don't, but I'll take your word for that it. That sounds like something he would do. But, uh, but yeah, he, um, that dude was a dick. Who? Then he t- the dude that I was co host, not Paul Gallant. Paul Gallant's a, an honorable man. He is. <laughs> yes, but, he is. But the co-host I had was a real dick. Why? What? And, and he, what made him a dick? Well, I mean, he, he was into some Chris Hansen stuff. That does make you a dick. Uh, well, that, that, that would do it. Yeah, he was like, oh, cool. You know, I thought he was a, a cool guy. But it turns out he wasn't a cool guy. That's you the know? worst. You think someone's a cool guy and then they're Chris Hansen. That's the yeah. worst. And it sucked. How uh, how buzzed are you tonight, Trey? Um, well, you know, enough to know what I'm doing, I guess, but not too much. You know, I just ever since I've lived by myself, you know, I just start doing whatever it is I want. Well, so what did do. you want to do today? Just drink Fireball? Yeah, I saw it there, and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna start drinking some Fireball. What's it I like to care. live? What's it like to live on your own? I've never really experienced that. What you haven't? Well, not um, really. I mean, I, I did for a little bit in Baton Rouge, and I moved here and lived by myself for a little bit, but I've been, I've been with my lady over here for a decade. Yeah, when you yeah. live by yourself, you use paper towels. Or no, I'm sorry, like Wendy's napkins as toilet paper, so it's yeah. probably good. That was a don't. one-time thing because I didn't have any toilet that paper. That was the first time I went to your house. I'm like, where's your bathroom? Oh, it's right there. Just use a napkin. Because yeah. I did, I was out of toilet paper. Ten years later, here I am. Well, what does that say about you? Low standards. Yep, exactly what that says about you. Well, at the end of the day, you know, you got to use what's there. It's good in a pinch, I guess. That's true. Paper towels are, but no, this wasn't a paper towel. That would have clogged the toilet. It was like a Wendy's napkin. Yeah. Oh really? Oh well, 
Damn, that's disgusting. Wendy, <laughs> Wendy's is Wendy's is. I like Wendy's. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna hate on Wendy's too much. I like their chicken sandwiches, but uh, you know. Well, Ben that's Simmons not, uh, smells like a Frosty, evidently, according to Z Dog. So. That, that's not really too much of an insult, though, because Frosties are actually pr a pretty pleasant fragrance, I would imagine, right? Well, you they're tasty. Think. They're certainly tasty. Do you ever dip your fries in the Frosty? Of course. And, and, and eat the fry out of the Frosty like it's a straw? God, yes. Who doesn't do that? Monsters don't do that. That's it. Yeah, I just don't understand why people wouldn't do that. Have you ever dipped an Oreo into a into your soda of choice? I know y'all aren't too much on Coca Cola anymore with the news, but <laughs> no, you know, I think we're still fine with Coca Cola. <laughs> I, I mean, yes, they don't like white people, but that I, I but I do like I I drink H E B brand cola. The H E B cola oh, really? is really good. It's yeah. very it's it's cheap. Yeah, it's got the cane sugar in it, it's but good. no, like. If you dip your if you dip your Oreo cookie into a Coca Cola or a Pepsi or a Dr Pepper, I heard it's pretty good. That's... We actually have the H E B brand of Dr Pepper in the fridge right now. Doctor B. Yeah, yeah Doctor B is who you go to if you want to get an Adderall script. <laughs> you know, Doctor Pepper's not gonna give you give you an Adderall script. Doctor B will come through for you. Dr. How do you Pepper's feel? Way too classy. How do you guys feel about Mister Pib? Mister Pib's. Goated man, as the kids would say, Mr. Pibb is goaded. I love Mr. Pibb. I love me some Mr. Pibb, too. Let me tell you, Mr. Pibb, you know, it, it's great. Whoever invented Mr. Pibb, that, that dude needs a needs a raise or, or needs to be filleted or something because he <laughs> he did a great job, you know. And and I tell you, it Mr. Pibb is the best. I, that's in my Mount Rushmore of sodas. How do you feel about RC Cola? I hate RC Cola. I don't. If you like RC Cola, I I I, I don't know that I could be friends with you. It's vile. RC Cola is the official drink of of women who smoke cigarettes when they're pregnant and listen to Kid <laughs> Rock. That's what RC Cola is. That's your one gripe with Vito and Nick's on the south side of Chicago. Your favorite pizza. It's so it's good. It's great pizza, but, the, but you to order soda, you say, I want to get a pop. And they bring you a pitcher of pop, and it's, and it's RC. RC Cola. RC Cola tastes like flat Coke is all it tastes like. It's despicable. I agree. I agree with you 100%. I want, one time I was at my cousin David's wedding. Not David that made the moonshine, but my my cousin David who lives in Buffalo. And they were all like, I was like, y'all got any Dr. Pepper? And they're like, no, all we have is RC Cola. And I was like, ah, I can't drink that shit. Exactly. That's what you tell them. RC Cola's for devil people. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. I, I saw some RC Cola the other day at Kroger's, and it pissed me off. I was like, why are they selling that shit here? Because it's vile. Like, like, my problem with it is, like... It has no bite. It tastes like flat Coke. So it's just nasty and it doesn't give any bite. Like the can we all agree that the best Coke you can find is at McDonald's, right? Like that's the best Coke in the universe. Oh yeah. Is it McDonald's? And like that has a bite and it burns a little bit. Like yeah. the, the RC Cola doesn't burn at all. It's just it tastes like a Coke that's been left out for a couple days. Yeah, it doesn't have the kick to it, you know. But I got I agree with you on the McDonald's. You go to a McDonald's you get a dollar for a sprite, it, it, you'll feel like you 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 just got your whole your whole day is just better. Yeah, best soda. He's right. It's sprite too. Like the sprite at McDonald's is amazing. The Coke is at McDonald's is amazing. I wish they had cherry Coke at McDonald's. I'd also but... like to know why, no matter what, when I get fries at McDonald's, I feel like I'm going to have a heart attack. Well, the best thing you can do about that, Josh, here's a hack. If you go to McDonald's and say, I'd like a fresh batch of fries. They won't put salt on it, so it won't have 800 layers of salt. But that's the thing is I need the 800 layers of salt. Well, you can you can get some salt from the salt packets and pour it on the, the fries and salt at your own risk, I guess. What but, are some of the other things you learned from old Bobby Angris Campbell? What were some words of wisdom oh, from him? Man. And I, I want got, you to tell me as Bobby Angris Campbell would sound. Well, he had just broken up with his uh his girlfriend c c uh j they had just broken up for the third time and uh and he was like son let me tell you women are a lot like buses you get on one and then you get off and you wait for the next one to come <laughs> your dad's got great wisdom <laughs> he does and, and i was like you know that makes a lot of sense dad 
Um, Can you give me give me uh, like some Bobby some Angri- some Bobby Angris Campbellisms, but do it in your kind of like that that one voice you always do for everything. He he wore a lot of overalls, but he said, "You know what I mean? You know what I mean?" He said that a lot. He said, "You know what I mean?" And I'd be like, "Yeah, I guess." But uh, he he said, "You know what I mean?" A lot. Uh, his favorite saying was, uh, "It's colder out here than a witch's tit." That yeah, was his favorite saying. That, that's a classic. Yeah, that's a classic. And that's so also, Bobby Campbell. He'd also be like, "God damn, we made out like a bandit." And uh, that would be another one of his favorite. What kind stories. of advice? Give me, tell me some of the best advice though you got from old Bobby Campbell. He always told me he was always like, "Son, don't ever pay in credit. Always pay in cash, even as expensive it is as everything is. Always save up and pay in cash." And hey, like, that's not wrong. That's a good. That's good advice from your dad. But but he always said uh, he would always be like, "Son, you're 15 now." And uh, I know you're getting probably interested in girls, and it was pretty funny because when I was 15, I looked like a fucking oven baked pizza that was baked before it was baked, and uh, so I wasn't getting with any girls at 15. But he was always leaving condoms in my wallet. At 15, like, oh, Bobby Angris Campbell was leaving yeah. your rubbers in Dude, your wallet. That's good parenting. Yeah, I was like, Dad, what the hell am I gonna do with this? Have you seen me? I'm not getting with any girls. He's like, You don't know that, son. You don't know that. I look like you when I was your age. And but but Dad failed to mention he always had a Corvette, so that's always uh, why women gravitate. Listen, if, if if he like if you have a Corvette when you're 15, you're getting tons of ass. Did your well, dad ever had... give you condoms, Josh? Nope, because I doubt my dad's ever worn one. Oh dear, really? So I mean, l- judging by the number of kids he's got, my guess is my dad was like a sailor. I'm gonna um, be honest with you, Josh. I haven't either. I've never. I'm I'm team your dad on this one. I've never. <laughs> You don't want to impregnate a Katrina Cunningham, though, Trey. No, I don't. And I and the, the woman before Jasmine, she were she refused to let me wear them. I was like, Jasmine, don't Damn. you think I could get some condoms? And she's like, No, no, you should not. I don't like those. Boy, and Jasmine like, wanted that little Trey. Yeah. <laughs> but little did she know that Trey cannot uh, finish to completion ever with a lady. She is why. I mean, when you're when. When you got burnt toast down there to work with, it's like <laughs> it's hard to get to the finish line. Uh, and ever since then, you've never been able to get to the finish line because of her burnt toast. It, take uh, if you if you go with what she had going on down there. Take go get one of your 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 uh, your what's those things you put on when it's cold? A sweater. Go get a sweater. Put it on your balcony if y'all live on the second floor. Let it let the good rain get in, and then take that sweater and just and then just lick the sweater. That's about what I was I had to deal with. <laughs> oh dear! Oh wow! I uh, know we're I, I know it's a family show, <laughs> but uh, no, it's not. <laughs> uh, uh, maybe lesbian Rachel says she was evil. I can co-sign. Did, did maybe oh. lesbian Rachel know this chick? Oh, yeah. Well, she didn't know her, but she heard about her. And one time, funny story about Rachel. We were both interning one time, and uh, I was there for um, Sean Salisbury's show. And I had a hickey right here on my neck. And Rachel was in the middle of talking about how uh, about Bruce Arians and the offenses that Bruce Arians had. And she was like, yeah, I just think Bruce Arian needs a mobile court. Oh, my God. Is that a hickey on your neck? And she stopped mid-sentence to point out the hickey I had on my neck. Did that come from this uh, this, this, this dried-out old hag that uh, you were with? She wasn't old. She was the same age as me, but, uh, Burnt yeah. Burnt toast. Burnt toast. Yeah. She, uh, she was a bitch, man. She just, like, I'd drive all the way out there to Conroe to see her, and she would just yell at me the whole time. And then she bit me really hard one time. And I, she was like, I'm going to bite you. And I was like, okay, because I thought that'd be cool, you know. And then she bit down really hard. I was like, ow, ow, ow. And then she put her hand over my mouth and kept biting me. Didn't your mom want to, like, fight this chick, too, because of that? Yeah, I remember your, that. Your mom was not pleased with this bitch. Yeah, I remember it. Her name was Jasmine. Fucking and she Jasmine. Was a, 
she was about she was about my weight. So I guess that tells you what, or, or bigger, I don't remember. but uh, she So t- this weekend you're going to Colorado for the big orgy, right? It's, I don't think it's going to be an orgy. Uh, I don't think we're going to do all that. But, um, you know, we just, uh, you never know, I guess. What but was the text the other day you said? Are we going to get blown or something? What was it? She said, um who is ready to get blowed. But I think she meant that she was going to smoke some weed with us. I or think she meant your pee pee is I think what she meant friend. Shut up, Kyler. No, nah, I don't think that's what she meant. Uh, you know, we, we're all just gonna, we're gonna, we're just gonna go. I think they're, they're going to the zoo. I think we're going to the zoo, the zoo, but, but I don't think we're going to engage in any coitus in this, in this, <laughs> there is a hot tub there. Uh-oh. I'll tell you all about that. There is a hot tub there, but if there's a hot tub, I think there's going to be some some sexy time in that hot tub. I doubt it. I tell you, I don't think so. You know, I I just I just don't think that that's going to happen. To be honest with you, but you know, but what yeah, if it I, did? What if the the opportunity arose? If I mean, I, I I don't know. I guess I'd be cool with it. I just kinda, is this chick? Is she alluring? Do you like her physically? I mean, I haven't seen her many times. I haven't seen her that many. I've only maybe seen her once, but uh, I guess. I now mean, you're going to Colorado together. Yeah, I don't know how the whole thing worked out. They just invited me, and I said, all right, I see what I can do. And, uh, you know, I I, uh, I had to scrape together the $187 for the plane ticket. That's a good deal, and, uh, though. That's, that's not deal. a bad deal at all, you know. One hundred and eighty-seven dollars round trip. And that's how much did you bad. have to contribute to the to the shag pad? I don't. They said to the don't stabbing worry cabin. It. They said don't worry about it, but I think that I think they did that because I just my dad had just passed away. So what I they don't know is that you're now rich because of that. Allegedly, I don't know yet, but uh, you know I'm. I'm thinking I'm going to invest it into a NASCAR team. Like, but like, let's say you come into some money because of this. Do you think that maybe like you'll put like a demolition derby track out on uh, by your trailer or something? No, that no, I don't think so. But the funny thing is, we actually were going to make a four wheeler racing track out there, and we never it never came to fruition. But uh, you know, we uh, I, that'd be pretty cool though. We got six acres to do it. Kyler, stop taking these blankets. We got six acres to do it, and uh, you know we, it could. It's not impossible, but it'd be tight. You know, it'd be. Well, close. why don't you build yourself like a mansion or something? Um, now I, I the only mansion I got is the one I'm staying in over here on on Riddell. I don't I don't need too much of a mansion. I'm pretty happy with what I got. I'm just hoping to get my Camel Harris portrait over next to the TV. <laughs> you know. <laughs> And uh, she's a looker. Uh, she's a looker. <laughs> I just, I'm just joking. I just wanted to kind of see who was watching. But uh, you know, I, I, uh, I, I got everything I need over here. I got, I got all kinds of great things to, to build on. And nobody house. else lives on your property, right? It's just you. Not at the moment, but my godfather's friend uh, Lee is coming up here from Arkansas. Is he gonna live there? He's going to live in the other house, uh, I think, but uh, he, he's coming. So uh, you'll still so have your bachelor pad, though. He's not going to yeah. impose. Yeah, okay. Yeah, cool. it's still going to be just me in this house. Uh, and I don't think Kyler and the cat. Yeah, Kyler and the cat. Um, and, uh, unless I put Kyler back on the streets. You I'm will not. Joking. I'm just joking. I'm not going to put Kyler. He did destroy my Apollo 11 Astros hat. That son of a bitch. Yeah, and that kind of made me mad but you know i'll just go to academy and get another one i gotta go over there and get me a get me another hat and some ammo or whatever and i gotta get me some fence making tools you're gonna uh, make a fence yeah you're not gonna Uh, make a fence yeah i'm gonna make a i've already got it me and my dad already put it up i i take y'all out and show y'all but it's dark and uh you know, my fence is not up yet, but we're going to put up a fence. Oh, uh, hell uh, yes. And, uh, you know, and it, you, you gotta, you, you gotta be careful. There's a sign. We, me and my dad built a fence around one part of the backyard. So Kyler can't get out, but, uh, 
there's a sign that says beware a dog you gotta beware of the dog i guess well this guy he's a savage yeah that's a that is a savage puppy right there do you think cats are evil trey because i do no, I don't. I, it just depends on which cat you get. You know, some cats don't take too kindly to to uh, to anything. But my cat's he's tolerable. I mean, <laughs> he'll, he'll bite me every now and again. But See, like, you I, know. I, I don't get the appeal of cats. I feel like they hate you. They don't love you. They just want to bite you and they just want to run away. I can see where you could come to that conclusion. Um, you know, like <laughs> like cats don't some... offer love. Cats don't love. Yeah, that, I don't think they do either. You know, like uh, you you gotta you gotta. Uh, but you know, uh, I got him when he was when he was six weeks old or like eight weeks old, and uh, he's he's been here ever since. And he's been a dick. He he hates Kyler. He hisses at him every chance he gets. But uh, but you know, I can't get rid of him now. Well. So. That's our buddy Trey. All hey, right, Trey. Josh, before I go, I, I gotta, I gotta ask. Um, uh, so uh, you got, you got some big plans coming. I'm thinking, right? I do, I, I do. Yes, I, I can't divulge any of that information, but yes, I'm I have. Not, pl- I'm not asking you to divulge any of the information. I'm just wondering if you'll let me do an exit interview on your show. Of course, why not? I got I, seven shows left, so I said, of course. I think, I think Trey gets the exclusive exit interview. Yeah. I can do an exit interview, and you ought to let. I'll break the news to where you're going and you'll act mad and we'll have like a fake slap fight or something. That's I, pretty cool. Dude, right? I would love nothing more than to have a fake slap what's fight the date? with you. What's the date your last show so Trey knows? The 18th. The Thursday. The, eight, the 18th of March on a Thursday. Okay, I'll be there. Uh, of course I'll you will. I'll be there for your exit interview. I'll make sure to have plenty of good questions. This has to be here. like, that should be the whole show. Like from two to four, it's just Trey. Doing two like to this, four on that day, interview. it's all Trey interviewing me for two hours. So get fantastic. all I'll get all your questions ready. Yes. Hey, hey uh, Josh, do you think Billy Tubbs is a Hall of Famer? No. Uh, yeah, me neither. It's his birthday <laughs> tomorrow. So happy birthday to Billy Tubbs. But, uh, all right. Well, know. Trey, so head, are you flying out tomorrow? Yeah, I'll be flying out at six twenty-five. He's gonna stop be, by, I think. Right, you're gonna try to stop by. Save yeah, me and, me and Rachel are coming. I think Rachel's coming. I think Crime Stats Chad is coming uh, from all the way from Conroe. That I don't know. I, that's a long drive, you know, from Conroe. But you got, we'll you got. They're committed, so you got to give them credit for that. But uh, all right then, Trey. We'll see you later, buddy. See you tomorrow. All right. Have a good one. All right, bye, buddy. Oh, you said see you later, and then Luther goes, oh. Oh, is it over? All right, so there you go. I love Trey. Me too. He's wonderful. <laughs> I like, Andy took that very seriously and goes, don't fake a slap fight. It'll be taken very seriously. I'm not going to fake a slap fight with Trey. But I do think, like, your last day on the air would be funny just to do, like, a retrospect with Trey as the host. Just it's like, like it's like like the you. last episode of Cheers when there was the whole episode yeah. where that was hosted by Bob Costas. I think that has to happen, or like the Saved by the Bell Casey case. I'm like the Zach attack profile. It'll be Trey though doing the whole thing. Yeah, absolutely. Ah, boy. Hey, Luke. You okay over there, buddy? Good boy. You're thirsty. You got water. There you go. I, I've put up the exclamation point dono. That's streamlabs.com slash the Josh in a show. If you'd like to make some donations to the party. Thank you, J. Terry Bailey for the 500 bits. That's very kind of you. Remember, bits are still allowed as well. Bits, donations, whatever. We're here providing entertainment for you here on a Thursday night wine party. Ace Gilmore says, I'm so sad for the last show. I mean, but like. You're here every day, Ace Gilmore. Like, I don't think you have... I mean, like, yes, it's the last thing on there, but, I mean, we're still here together. Everybody wants Z-Dog and Rachel. Do you guys both have Discord? We can do that. I can. I don't know how to do it, but I'm sure I can manage. Well, I think they both call you, right? We just do, like, oh, a group chat. I guess. Do you both have Discord? You guys both still here? This has been in the making. Like, the chat has wanted this for, like, weeks. Maybe this is something we hold off on for a little bit until, like, we, uh, we'll promote it. Well, we've been promoting it for two weeks. You said, like, the past two weeks we're going to get them together. 
Well, I can work on it. So I feel like if they're both here, we should just do it. Good boy, Luther. Let her drink that water. And I mean, it's a Thursday night wine party, so. That is. What better thing? Z-Dog, better. are you still here? I'm glad that Andy's still watching, though. Andy's my best buddy, as you know. Big supporter. Old Andy Bloom. Game day, OJ. That's Rachel. She's drinking Jack. So she's here. Z-Dog, are you here? <sighs> Boy. How do we do a three-way discord? I don't know. It's a good question. I know we have Z-Dogs on here. Who's, who's I don't know that Z-Dog, is Z-Dog still there? That's what no, I'm trying he, to find Well, him. I remember he has a new name, remember? It's not. Oh, uh, yeah. So I don't know what his new name well, there was is. like a little notification dot, and I was trying to see what that was. Oh, there you go. How do we see what it is? It's not, it's just, I don't think, it was saying that we were live. It's not a notification, I don't believe. Because that would pop up somewhere, so it's not a notification. Uh, Big Mule says, I guess I'll get my hundred bucks out. So Josh will acknowledge me. What have you said exactly, Big Mule, that I need to acknowledge? I'm sorry if I've missed it, but there's a lot of messages coming through. Sorry so late. How are you, Josh and Jilly? Well, hello, BMFTX75. I've known Josh since before his one-hour gig. There's no way you could have known me since before my one-hour gig because that was the first gig I had in Houston. So you wouldn't have known me before then. Unless you were on, you know, Tiger Droppings. Then you might have. If you know Tiger John, you know Josh. <sighs> Boy, that's funny. Z-Dog, he, like, asked for, like, weeks and weeks. Like, I want to Discord with Rachel. Z-Dog, where are you? It's only, like, 9.05 where you gone. are. 10.05. Someone tweet Z-Dog. Uh, so we'll just wait to see. And Rachel knows, because I think he's tweeted Rachel every day, being like, we have to get on Discord together. And now Rachel is here. Yep. And where is Z-Dog? Tiger John and Tiger Les Miles. I'd party with that. <laughs> I do think... It, now, I did tell Andy, if I recall correctly, that I would... Um, because on Saturday, he said he got a new headset or a new pair of uh, like earbuds to try out, and I didn't, couldn't do it because we weren't on the computer on Saturday. We could maybe talk to Andy. I don't know. So many options. I've known Josh 20 minutes before his one-hour gig at 610. Well, I guess you win. I guess so. Oh, boy. What a life. Wine's good. I've literally never met Josh. Seems like a cool dude, though. Thanks, James Denui. I am a pretty cool dude. There's a lot of people who dislike me for whatever reason, but I'm a pretty, I'm an affable fella. <sighs> really quick show of hands here. First of all, Josh, first of all, Josh, mend fences and get your ass back. Mike. I'm glad that you think it's that simple. It's not, and I'm not going back to Philly. And my intentions are to never go back to Philly. And they'll, and Andy will get mad hearing me say that, like, you should want to go back to Philly. I don't. I tried it. I, uh, you know, I thought we were going to end up back. It didn't happen. And now it's over. Gonna miss the 97.5 show. Got me through the Rona unemployment. Well, I mean, you could just watch this every day. We love Cypress, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you, though. Did Jilly love Philly? Eh. There's your answer, Trey. I lived in Harrisburg before that, so I had my experience with Pennsylvania. You're going back to Philly. You are the same type of person. I'm not going back to Philly. We might get divorced if you went back to Philly. You liked it well enough when you ruled the roost, says Andy. Ooh, Andy dropping bombs. Did I ever really, though? And there's no ugly moose, so I have. I, there's no reason to go back. I'm going to miss hating you on 97.5. Kidding. Good luck. Thanks, suspect. And are you guys, I'm Except guessing. Except for I'm, the flyers. I'd go back because I do like the flyers. There are just some places that, that are, like, people are just meant to be in certain places. I am not meant to be in Philly. Uh, our friend uh, John Kincaid is meant to be in Philadelphia. And Mike Missanelli, the legend, is meant to be in Philadelphia. 
And the legendary Johnny Marks is meant to be in Philadelphia. Joe can tell you about Johnny Marks. But I am not. I am not meant to be in Philadelphia, friends. I thought I was going to go back. I I mean, it looked like it was all locked and stocked, but uh, it's not going to happen. Oh, Daniel Batchelor, we're coming up my one-year anniversary thing on the podcast. Let's do it again. You're welcome any time, Daniel Sure, yeah. That was our our boy that was stationed, where was he, in Homa? Yeah, Homa, Louisiana. That was a very interesting call. It was. I like that. We'll have to do that again here soon. That's right. Rachel says I was supposed to watch hockey with her. We never made it happen. We didn't. We were hermits. I had no idea that maybe lesbian Rachel wasn't Hispanic. She's not. Oh, is someone calling us? It's Big Mule. Well, all righty then. Hello? Ennis, it's Big Mule. Why are you shirtless? <laughs> so creepy. Why well, are you shirtless, my, Big Mule? I'm in my bed. Well, I, 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 I guess that, I mean, that's a good place to be shirtless, I'm I in, guess. I'm, I'm in my bed taking shots. You're of taking what? shots while you're laying in bed shirtless? Yeah. Hey, I can't see you and Jilly. Fix the screen. Oh, okay. You're very demanding. I'm trying. I'll, I'll do the oh, best I, I can I, okay. here. I, I, I apologize. Josh, please fix the screen. Well, I'm trying. I don't know how to do everything here. Hold on. All right. Let me see if I can figure this out. Hold on. Uh, oh, well, the, the virtual webcam is on. You have to put it on us on this thing, and then he can see On it. what? Like, you have to put our Twitch, our normal thing up, I think. Thank God for Jilly. Can you see us now? Yeah, but can y'all see me? Yes. I can see. Well, let me make sure you're on the screen, though, too. Can hold on. Can the audience see my fat ass? Uh, no, but hold on. Let me see. What about now? You good? Yeah. There we go. Everybody can see you. There you go. So what's going Sorry. on? Because I know I don't have a lot of time, and that's okay. Because I want other people to get in, but okay. I just there was a couple <laughs> that's things. That's okay. And I hope, and I hope that because Jilly is the usually the sensitive one, Josh is kind of hard around the edges, and that's okay. I'm sensitive. But, well, you, 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 uh, you'll, you'll see, you'll see. So for everybody who's listening, around the time that Josh lost his job, I lost my job. And I was very sad, didn't know what I was going to do with myself. How, you know, what am I going to do? I actually have kids, unlike Jilly and Josh. And as soon as Josh and Jilly started the podcast, I just started following. And those one hour days would just, uh, I, I usually wouldn't watch live. I'd wait till I was about to go to bed because that's when I was the most depressed. And I would just turn everything off and listen to Josh and Jilly and just their laughter and uh, the stuff we talk about in Luther. It would literally, Get me through the next day. Well, that's awesome. That's I'm glad awesome. we could help you Thank, with that. I'm glad that we could do that there, Big Mule. We can all laugh oh, together. Yeah, you, don't, you guys don't realize sometimes because people don't speak up and it's hard to be open. And I'm glad I'm able to because I used to be like a rock for many years where I'd never share anything. And that time, um, yeah, I was just really sad thinking, man, my life is crumbling. I'm not going to be able to find another job. You know, this is going to suck. And I think literally... Uh, so, Josh, when did you start with 97.5? Was it June or July? It was in May, May, May of last year, yeah. So when Josh got the job, I was, like, so happy. There was no jealousy. There was no, I told my wife, I was like, man, this guy did it. I could do it. So July, I found I found a job. Sweet. And I was, I was like, man, this is great. And so, like, what I would do is at night, I would listen to YouTube, get Jilly and YouTube. I'd go to sleep. And then on the way to uh, work the next day, I would watch – uh, Josh on 97.5 like a day behind so when he would have a show at 2 the next day that would take me to my hour drive to work listening to Josh and then my dog died Stella died and oh, because yeah. you guys love Luther so much and you're so passionate about him and he's such a good boy and so whenever I would start to get sad about Stella I would just uh, ask or talk about Luther there you go yeah, that story was terrible that was where they wouldn't let um big mule into the the room when they had to euthanize their dog and that still just breaks my heart that's that's correct and so littles went to the vet uh the day before luther did uh last week and i, th- I threw you guys some bits for that uh for that appointment by the way because i went first and i got raved it was like 350 dollars. yeah but um they everything was good with little she's 13 she had her annual but they found a little spot on her paw Aww. that's kind of like uh what do you call it a fatty tissue or like what we would call a skin tag yes so she's going to go back on tuesday and they're going to remove that while she's asleep and they're going to clean her teeth 
and we're going to pray that that piece that they cut and remove comes back clean. Uh, Littles is the black, uh, excuse me, the brown lab that we have, and she's awesome. I've had her since she was three months old. That's all. I mean, hey, and, and best of luck to Littles. Yeah, that's like how when Luther got his ass mask removed. We we went through that too. We know what that's like. So, well, you know, yeah, we love you, Big Mule. You know that we appreciate you, man. Oh yeah, you got you guys. Just never forget that somebody could be down, or somebody could be down on the luck, and and not only because the people that you are, Josh, you you've shared, you've shared, you both have shared your hearts with your listeners. I mean, you didn't have to say, you know, I know that's a bit with your dad, eighteen hundred dollars. We get that. <laughs> But there was times when, uh, you know, whether it's been about Jilly's car or, you know, people need to see that people that are celebrities or on the radio or, you know, whatever, that you guys are normal people like us. You're not Deshaun Watsons that want to call the show and get, you know, get all the money and get cry and get what he wants. You're not Harden. You guys are normal, hardworking people like us. You're normal people that just need um some fans and 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 we uh we provide you with the bits and we love it and we love hearing about your life and about luther and doing that and being so humble like you are it really inspires people and you'll and you'll, and you'll never know if i i listened to you guys for seven months and i think like two weeks ago was the first time i called and said you guys have helped me and now i'm telling you again today so just don't just don't ever lose track of that josh wherever you're going good luck and i'm gonna follow you and hopefully you can do what you did and and what jilly did for somebody else, because, you know, I'm in education and I always say, you know, if you can help one person or save one person, it, it, it was worth it. Man, hey, you're the man. We hey, thank you, you Big man. Mule. All right. No problem. Bye. Hey, love you, buddy. Thank you. Uh, that is uh, Big Mule, everybody. Boy, that Big... was like our Ellen segment. It was. We were just like Ellen. That was nice, though. Thank you, Big Mule. We appreciate that. No, we're fucked up just like everybody. Fine. <laughs> yep. That's life, man. We all got problems. <laughs> in Philly, they say you bring your lunch bucket, says Andy. In Philly, they told me to go fuck myself every day, is what they say. It is amazing, though, the number of people that watch this. Like, There's still over 100 people watching this at 11.15. We've been at it for two and a half hours. Well, that's still early for a Thursday night wine party. I know. Well, we actually started basically on time as well today. How's the wine supply? I mean, there's still some in here. Good. I think. That's so cool. He finds comfort with the show. Best wishes, Mule, for your duck. Well, there you go, Drew. Good point. Uh, Game Day OJ says, still trying to figure out how to give bits. Don't give bits. I don't need bits. I don't need your bits. It sounded sexual, but you're a lesbian, so it's it's okay. She, she like, Hey, she likes to munch rug. That's okay. I still can't believe Z-Dog's not here. Like This was his big moment to discord with Rachel. And he just disappeared. Have you guys tweeted him? Has anyone tweeted Z-Dog? Let's find out if he's alive. Z-Dog, where are you, friend? We will be on tomorrow night for a while as well. Nothing Saturday. And then uh, Sunday, we're going to have uh, an auction party. Ace Gilmore says, Just Nation for life. I was watching some old NWO stuff the other day. Magnolia says, She likes that fur burger. She does. Maybe lesbian Rachel. There, like, there's only one person that could turn her straight. I don't think that's true. She's a big fan. Shay, listen. Maybe lesbian Rachel. She loves Chiss, and that's okay. She loves you, lesbian. She might be a lesbian. She might not. There's only one way she's going to turn straight. It's from Jis Nation, and that's okay. Well, first of all, it's from okay. Les Miles, and we all know that. That's okay. Hey, look, that's okay. Rachel, who is the one guy that you would go straight for? You had a pick. Uh, what was that, Jilly? I was asking Rachel, who was like the one guy that she would consider going straight for. You don't want to hear that answer. I do. You don't want that answer. I don't think it's you. That answer is going to make you feel very, that no, that's going to make you feel ill when you hear that well, it's. Well, it's obviously Brian this, Erickson. This right here. Maybe lesbian Rachel's like, you know what? Bam. No, I told you it's Brian Erickson. Yeah, that's the answer. Big Mule and his wife might be getting a divorce. So that's no good. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> uh what Rachel, not right <laughs> i'm cool with being used as a boy toy says drew I, well, here's the thing maybe lesbian rachel she likes ladies and that's okay that's okay and that's okay and hey and that's okay <laughs> let me tell you something it's okay might be getting a divorce might not be don't know but you know what maybe lesbian rachel gonna munch on some rug carpet munch. that's okay and that's okay. She really likes the rug. 
Uh, oh, she, this is where she tells us Michael Connor is the answer. What if Rachel and I hooked up? What would you do? I'd say good for you guys. Like, that's fun. <laughs> I mean, I, I hope you're having a good day. Shadow Moon from America. I don't know what that is. Talk English. <laughs> like, what is this shit? Talk about something I would know. Ricky Whittle. Who the fuck is Ricky Whittle? Google image. Let's pull him up. So this is who maybe lesbian ratio would dive into the uh, to to the D end for. Here's how I know that lesbianism is a farce. A woman can come up with someone who she would legitimately, even though she's a lesbian, she would do this. Dudes can't do that. Like we might jokingly say, "Hey, like George Clooney," but like I would not make love to George yes, Clooney. You would. No, I would not. Oh, and God, he you and would. he wouldn't have me look at me. You know, you I am would. a monster. He has beautiful people. I'm not beautiful. Ricky Whittle, this guy, who is he? What what programs has he been on? He has a recurring role on VH1 Single Ladies and ABC's Mistresses. American Gods. I don't know what American Gods is. But good for you, maybe, Lesbian Rachel. Not only do you watch really random shit, you also are a fraud lesbian. So congratulations. You've been caught. You've been had. Not really a lesbian, and that's okay. Loves the D. Uh, let's see. Uh, Josh's next gig is going to be Michael Connor and Josh on That's Not True. Wouldn't that be something? Uh, let's see. It's on stars. We don't have stars. We don't have stars, and that's okay. Uh, uh, Josh is right about men. We can't fathom it. Like, oh, I got to pee. I can tell you, like, I, I think George Clooney is a beautiful man. I cannot entertain the idea of George Clooney making love to me. I would not, but I don't even think Tom Brady is an attractive man, but that's okay. And that's okay. But that's the other thing is Tom Brady wouldn't have me. Let's be real. All the options he's got. And what makes you think she's a carpet muncher? Maybe she prefers it. No, I'm, I mean, I feel like in my, my conversations with old uh, MLR, I think that maybe lesbian Rachel, at least, um, I mean, like maybe she, I mean, I would think it goes, it's reciprocated with you and your lady. Jilly, are you the ma uh, matri matriarch? Where is the big send off? There isn't a big send off. I don't think. Congrats. Zep is Zep still in here. Josh, who is the only other QB with 100 passes in a Super Bowl other than 100 just total passes? 100 pass completions? 100 touch? Uh, what? What? When you say 100 passes, just like completed passes in, in a Super Bowl? Ugh, I'm confused by the question. confused and that's okay Tom Brady looks like the best general manager of Wendy's in Oklahoma City remember tw uh, Patty from Twin Peaks that was mad yeah she called and she was angry about how like only my show was running Twin Peaks commercials which was obviously a farce uh, let's see. All girls are a little bi, which is interesting because not all boys are a little gay. There's not all boys are a little bi. And again, I don't give a damn if you're gay or not. I couldn't care less. Do what you do. But like, I don't sit there and go like, I can tell you if a guy is handsome, but I'm not like, I would make love to that man. No doubt. Cause I would not. Now you're really going to auction items for rent money. Which items are those tab tab is the name. Uh, let's see. The Jewish lawyer was funny, too. That lady was mad. Because I said, like, if I'm going to have a lawyer, I'm going to have a Jewish lawyer. And this lady called, and she was so appalled by this. She's like, I am Jewish, and I am offended by this. And I said, what do you do for a living? She goes, I am a lawyer. 
Uh, we had some moments on 790. I don't know that we really like. I, 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 have there been any memorable moments on the 97.5 one? I don't know that there have been. Oh, I'm sure there have. I can't think of them, though. Like, this has just been kind of a different situation, you know. But, like, I can't really think. Um, I can't think of any moments that were. Like any like hardcore like wow what a moment that was on ninety seven five. Not seven ninety I can remember some and six ten yes and WI pay I can. But I can't think of any other like ninety seven and it's not no not it's not a knock on ninety seven five it's just I can't really think of it. But I can't. Where was that time I got drunk in Beaumont? Yeah, but that wasn't like a moment like where people go wow remember that. When you called out Braddock in the Twitch, that was a moment, but um, that's like the only thing I semi got in trouble for there. Coach Horn Leghorn. Yeah, that could be something, I guess. Coach Horn Leghorn bit wasn't bad. Thanks, real Coach O. A great moment was this past summer when you had the black guy on and he asked the old white guy if he believed slavery happened, and the white guy responded, to an extent. God. <laughs> that had nothing to do with me. I just put these two guys on and let them yell at each other about it. Do you believe slavery happened to an extent? God, that's Jesus great. Christ. When Jasmine called, who is Jasmine? That was the chick, and I only know this because I heard the promo 17 times. Oh, the one whose uh, boyfriend was allowed to say the N-word? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, one thing I will not miss about 97.5 is that basically two promos ever ran of me on this station. One was this this random broad talking about how her boyfriend's allowed to say the N-word because she's black. And the other was this promo that's been running forever. Oh, what was it? The mo- oh, something about you in Philly. Where I was like, oh, let me tell you about me in Philly. Like, why would anybody care about that? It was awful. It was an awful promo. And you have no control over the phones. I have none. I don't miss that. I will not miss that. The happy hours were cool. Those were fun. I liked when the black lady called in and tried to spell Deshaun. <laughs> that was fun. Uh, yeah. So there were memorable things. I enjoyed my one happy hour with 97.5 in Beaumont. That was a good time. We still never had steak night with Fred, and I'm kind of sad. Well, we, we might have another chance at some point. Trey likes Braddock. He came to my dad's wake, but I don't know if I would have outed people's Rona. You know, like, listen, I, maybe, maybe, maybe Braddock's the nicest guy in the world to everybody but me, but for whatever reason, I am the object of his scorn, and it is my fault, and any failure he's ever had, it's been my fault. And that's okay. And that's okay. That's okay. He puts, he puts the blame on me. Not a good radio guy. Barely speaks English good. That's okay. Can't speak. I'm amazed that he's even on the radio, probably because he pays for the airtime. And that's okay. It's okay that he does that. But yet somehow it's my fault. Everything that ever happens, everything that ever happens, it's, it's, my, it's, not, it's nobody else. Not, it's not AJ's fault. It's just my fault. Somehow it all comes back to me. Now that the station let you go, it's time to trash the station. Aren't you repeating negative? This... Okay, I'm gonna block this fucking Here asshole. We are again. I did nope. not. By the way, I did not get fired or anything. I'm not, and I'm not ripping the station. Let's see. How do I block? Goodbye. Fuck you. Uh, I'm not. I don't need your negativity. Thank you. Goodbye. Nope. The whole deal was you were here until you found a job. The idea that I got fired is preposterous. If I got fired, would they be like, "Hey, here's seven more shows to do"? I mean, come on. They would not. And the exclusive Trey uh, exit interview is going to be something. You would yes. not get an exit interview if you were no, fired. Of course not. Like, people just convince themselves that something is true, and they just run with it. And um, and they just go. Josh, my favorite was bringing you booze. Well, Daniel, that was good good hooch. And to be fair, I feel like you and, for a minute there, you and Braddock kind of got along. Maddie T says, you're the only reason I listen to 97.5. Uh, oh, thank you, Maddie T, but you should keep listening. Uh, you see that me and Braddock got along because he's a fraud. I thought you guys kind of buried it, and he had even tweeted I thought that, so, too. But, it, I, but he had all this pent-up hate for me the whole time. He's a psycho. He is a psycho. Bless his heart, he's a nut bar with zero talent. Uh, let's see here. Um, let's see. Was Braddock's accent fake? No, he's just a hillbilly from Carolina. 
That's how he really sounds. Uh, let's see. Uh, what about the two white cops got caught? No, okay, no, okay. Are you leaving H-Town right before it gets hot? Nice play. It, that's actually a solid move on my part. Oh, Z-Dog's here. Hey, Z-Dog's back. I'm back. Hold on. Let me get... Uh-oh, here we go. We can maybe make this Discord happen if we can figure it out. So I think one of them has to call us, and then we add the other to the call. Okay. Rachel, I don't know your Discord, though, so you have to add us. That sounds sexual in some weird way. Let me and see. And we are... Though. Josh Ennis, all underscore, no space. Not un like, That's not underscore, that's lowercase. I said no underscore. Oh, I thought you said all underscore. No space. I don't know what I said. It's been a lot of wine. Yeah. All lowercase, no underscore, Josh Ennis. And we are number 8740. So one of you call us, and then we'll try to bring Z-Dog in. This could be a whole cluster bleep. Now I still have to listen to AJ and Fred says A. Skillmore. I will be curious to see what happens to like the Twitch numbers on 97.5. Uh, now that I, I head on out, I hope they stay uh, elevated. What, what, what happened on the world series flight, whichever you remember, nothing happened on the world series flight. I tried People to go wanted to sleep to stay for the next day. I wanted to go to sleep. We stopped that stupid in and out. Josh, are you going with Joel blank to Katie boost mobile Saturday? No, I, Maybe I'm we not. We should just go. Ladies Where's his remote? We should just show up. Boost Mobile is what it said, I think. Well, which one in Katie? Tell me, Dick Willie. Wait, why did you quit? I have been in and out of work. I, I, I just did. You didn't quit. You resigned. I guess. Resigned from what? I don't even, I'm not even an employee. Let's see. We'll wait for the for that call to come in. We're trying for the Z-Dog Rachel hookup here. That'd be huge. Z-Dog and maybe been... lesbian Rachel. People have been waiting for this. Maybe they can get that crazy-eyed white girl that does the show with Rachel to call. I bet Z-Dog would like her. Z-Dog would really like that other white girl that does the show with Rachel. No, I think Z-Dog likes brunettes more. z dogs like blondes. So he'd like the black girl that does the show with uh, uh, maybe lesbian Rachel. Likes brunettes, right? So, like, hey, Rachel, who's the black girl that does the show with you? I thought it was that chick, the blonde chick. Well, there's the blonde chick, but then there's a black girl on the show with you as well. So, like, who, who is it? Oh, who am I thinking of here? Jerome Solomon? That's it. Um, <laughs> so, like, I don't know that I don't know that Z Dog would like Jerome Solomon, but he might. I don't know. <laughs> like, uh, Z Dog 223. Z Dog 223 is who it is. The black lady that called in saying Josh said evil shit about Tiger. That happened today. Did you hear that, Jilly? I did. And I'm like, ma'am, I didn't say anything bad about Tiger. Like, I think sometimes any anytime people hear something they disagree with, they just think it's me. Why me? They're like, the Josh Innes said this. Because I didn't say anything bad about Tiger. I, mean, I did that whole bit, but it was... Someone a, Discord us. Rachel's but it was dog, a brilliant one of you bit. two. Oh, yeah. Get you some of that rosé. Yay, yay. Rosé. Why do I have a... What is, what is that? From I, fem <laughs> I have no idea what any of that is. Home, that uh, seems good. Yep, yeah, home seems like a solid place. Rachel, it's Josh Innes, all lower caps, no space. And what's our number? Uh, 8740. Basically, that lady was mad because I spent a whole show saying that let's not act like Tiger is dead. Was that the same lady that thought you called Deshaun a terrorist? See, some some people believe that was the same lady. That lady was really upset when I used the term we don't negotiate with terrorists. And she's like, who's on here saying that Deshaun is a terrorist? Like, I, I don't know. I didn't say he was. A, oh, hold on. Someone buzzing in here. Hold on. Who is this? Oh, I got a friend request from game. Okay, we will accept you. Rachel. All right, so now we go cha. Let's see what happens here. Hold on. And then we need to figure out how to have the, the dog. Maybe lesbian Rachel is about to join us. She likes lesbian. Well, she likes other lesbians because she herself is one. Hold on. We're waiting. We're waiting. <laughs> we're waiting. Will we? Will maybe lesbian Rachel? Will she arise? I don't know, but you should tweet that we might have maybe lesbian Rachel and Z Dog together. That seems like a that seems like a big one. Hold call on, call for action. A call to action here. Hold on. 
I, no one's popping. This is bad news. No one's popping up. Rachel, where are you? We are live on. Hey! What's Hi. up, kids? What's going on? You know, just living the dream. Cheers. Haven't drank with y'all in a long time. Cheers. Yeah, I know, right? Can you see us, Rachel? Can you actually see us? I can. I can. Oh, all right. I did it right. So we have to find out how to get Z Dog in on this call because this is what he's been wanting to do for like two weeks. You know, Rachel, he's tweeted every day. This would be the easiest thing ever if I could. Uh, I, now all I got to do is figure out his um, his new name. If he would have just kept the he same did. old name, he said it's Z Dog two two three. Oh, good enough. Uh, let's see here. Let me see. Hold on. Let me. If I if I don't if I fail here, you know what? Then I'm a failure. But hold on. Let me see. Hold on. Let me get us out of here. Let me try to get uh, Z Dog. Hold on. How do you add someone to this? I don't know how to add people, Jilly. <laughs> I don't know. Why are you looking at me? I don't know. I thought you might know. I don't know some Discord shit. I don't Air either. Screen. Oh, okay, God. hold on. Hold on. Don't share. We're not sharing the I'm screen. I'm not pushing anything. I'm just scrolling over things. Hold on. What All is right. that? Can you still see us? Oh, look at the hey, puppies. Puppies are here. It looks very similar to Lisa. Hi. Oh, oh boy. Very. What a time to be alive. All right, hold on. Now, let me see if I can somehow work. Z but I can't access the other thing. Z-Dog, call us. Oh, here we go. Okay, I think I'm... Okay, now we got to look for Z-Dog. So, all right, I'm going to so I'm gonna solve this shit. Hold on. Z... Hold on, hold on. That's not a Z-Dog 223. This damn... He changed his stupid name like a jabroni. Z Dog, why, why don't you find us? Why don't you find us? The big star. <laughs> like yeah. Z Dog, you know our name. It's Josh Ennis8740. Find us, Z Dog. Come on, Z Dog. Rachel. This is your moment, Z Dog. I don't I mean, I hope it's your moment. I can't figure this shit out for the life of Someone me. Someone brought this up, but Rachel's new apartment is very nice. Well, wh where is your apartment? So we can all uh, come I and find you and stalk you museum district now i'm i have the most badass view of the med center right she here. lives right by herman really park cool. and luther's jealous yes. exactly because she used to live in the building I where the guy got neighbor. shot outside yeah right you used, used to, to literally one. be your neighbor i know we never saw you which is ridiculous but that guy got shot right outside your building like not too long ago so i'm glad you moved yeah right before Right before I moved out, I saw you guys once. I was driving down the street, like rushing to, I think, a dentist appointment. And I like turned my head and I saw you guys with Luther. And I was like, oh my God, I really want to like honk at them. But Why I was running you? late. You should have. I was running yeah. late. Where, uh, were, where were we? At, at Herman Park? No, no, no. It was whenever I lived in Midtown. Oh. She lived at the place. I told you the guy got shot outside. Right on Gray. Mm -hmm. She was uh, right next to the Oh, house. you lived there? I, I didn't think that the place was long enough uh, there for anybody to be shot. Yep, Dolce. That, that sounded she drunk, I'm sorry. She lived next to the Rona bar. Yeah, by the way, like yes. I love when people bitch about like Rona and they're like, <laughs> let, let me tell you about all these white people spreading the Rona. Go to something called Lost and Found and tell me it's a bunch of white dudes <laughs> spreading the Rona over there. You walk by that place, like Alvin Kamara walks in and he's like, no mask. He's like, hey guys, let's get fucked here. And it's like, you look over there. There's no, there, I, I assure you, they're a hundred percent capacity at that fucking place. And I don't judge them. Do what you want to do. I'm not a, against it. But like everybody walks in and it's like, well, let me tell you about what all these assholes that don't want these Trump people that don't want to wear masks. Trust me, there's a lot of people at a lot of these hookah bars and shit. And they haven't been wearing masks for five goddamn months and they act like it's my fault. God damn it. I can just tell you, their crab legs and crawfish is really well. Really that, that used to be a place called Junction. What's our number, Josh? It's eight seven four zero. Tell him to buzz into us. Just Josh Ennis eight seven four zero and see if it works. Uh, but we used to go to a place called Junction, and Junction is in what used to be Lost in, or it, is, it used to be that place. Now it's called Lost and Found, and it's a place where people Nobody go to like was do that Junction. Junction, it was like Deadbeatville, USA. But we were the Deadbeats, and it was our bar. And then they took it away from us, and now it's some trendy hipster place with neon and shit. Where Alvin Kamara visits. Have you been to the yeah, turkey? No. Have you been to the Turkey Leg Hut? No, but I live very close to it. I've and really, I want to. I want to go. I want to go to the turkey. It feels like Rona, but I'd like to go. It looks delicious. 
Yeah, they're, I'd tell you this though, when they're open, it's like you, me and Jilly would not feel very welcome there, if I can say that. Ah, I see. They don't like, uh, like Swedish people like you. I'm clearly not Swedish, but yeah. What? <laughs> I thought, you, thought, were you, were Mex- I yeah, thought you were thought Mexican you were Mexican for four for years. I was like, ah, she's Mexican or Hispanic. No, you're the you're, first one. But you're, you're the first person to tell me that. Let me tell you. <laughs> I'm for this whole time. I was like, and one day Jilly's like, no, she's like Czechoslovakian or some she's not shit. Czechoslovakian. Whatever you are, she, that's what you are. And uh, <laughs> and I was like, I thought she was Hispanic the whole time. I was wrong though. No, I get the I get the brown lookingness from uh, my very Portuguese and Italian father. Oh, Portuguese and Italian. That's impressive. Are you like tiger? Do, are, do you have like 18 different nationalities that you claim? Are you a uh, a Cablan Asian? No. no, I just say white because if I <laughs> claim to be black, I get yelled at. I'm not black enough. If I claim to be like try to be hispanic they're like you're not hispanic if i'm white they're the only ones that accept me so i'm like i'm white well you gotta go with who accepts you i mean that's that's life really yeah. isn't it z-dog's trying to just add him but i, 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 I mean z-dog how, how do i add you z-dog i don't know how to add you hold on let me see z-dog i'm, I'm doing my best z-dog hold Rachel, on do you know how to add somebody in this bad boy not into like z-dog here's what i need can you just call us z-dog I have no idea what I'm doing here. You know I have no... Oh, no, okay. I think I might figure it out. Hold on. Z-Dog, what is your name in there? What's it? Z-Dog223. Two, two, three. Three. All right, let me find him. Hold on. We're going to find this. Z-Dog223. Two, two, three. I don't know where to find you. I don't know how to do this. Why did you change your name, Z-Dog? This has been so easy. Z-Dog, why did you do this? Oh, really? I mean, like, dude, we knew you That's the so whole time. Z Dog, you add us, Z Dog, with your new name, just Josh Ennis, one word, eight seven four zero. Come on, Z Dog, do better, buddy. You can do it. Like, what if we just tried to call his old name? What would happen? I don't know. I don't know, but I wouldn't. But I, I'm. I don't know. I'm not gonna try though. I'm just gonna wait for Z Dog to call us. All right, hold on a second. Let's see. So, what? What the hell else are you I'm up to? I'm gonna grab my boobs. Uh, your boob? What? Booze. Oh, oh boo. So we can stare at the cute dog in the meantime. Oh, that's fun. Hello, cute dog. Z Dog, just call us. Josh, I feel like this will be easier if you try to call us. Your lady is here. Z Dog, while she's gone, I can tell you she loves you. She wants to marry you. You're the only one who can make her straight. She'll do a rap for you if you come on. Yeah, Z Dog, but that this is what you we need you, Z Dog, to call us. Do you have Jack Daniels, Rachel? Oh boy, look at you. Very much do. Good for you. The big one. The Tell big me what, one. what is what what is the, the What 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 do you have? I was gonna say, well, I have a whole like I don't know if I can flip my laptop. I have a whole bar, but I have Jack for like normal nights, but then you know, I'm trying to impress somebody, then I pull out the giant bottle of gentleman jack. Oh, oh look at the you. The gentleman jack is fancy. Because mm, I'm a gentleman. Do you still have the other dog too, or is it just this one? I have both. She's right there. She's also passed out just like he is, but right there. Aww. She's so cute. This damn Z Dog. I can't find him. He, he, he Z Dog is he's wasting my time, Z Dog. This was your chance. Maybe lesbian Rachel told me she was ready to go straight for you <laughs> and run off to Utah. And now what am I gonna do? Z Dog says it's not I was working. Ready to be I mean, she was ready to go. Story. You were gonna. She was gonna go Mormon. You guys were gonna go to Brigham Young Games together. Yeah, Z Dog. I, I put the <laughs> screen name in there for you, bro. I know. All I gotta do is look for us, but it's a, it's unfortunate. So, so like, what do you do during the day? Like, what is your day job? Maybe lesbian Rachel. I mean, you got this this pad that's awesome. That's got to cost millions of dollars. So, what are you doing when you're not hanging out with the crazy eyed girl and Jerome? <laughs> bless her heart he's such an asshole isn't he i think that's like the love of bootsy's oh life God. by the way i think that's bootsy that's the love of his life yeah i know he's also <laughs> the love of her life i think oh <laughs> boy 
saying he's a douche, which makes it even better. But he's now my douche. Get those two on fucking Discord. Oh, that's good because Bootsy, of course, is up in Seattle and uh, doing morning radio there, and of course, Lauren is doing Houston Sports Show. And uh, no offense. And uh, Welcome to traffic, girl. <laughs> Channel thirty nine. What, uh, what is Channel thirty nine? The CW. Like, like, does she yeah, like do cut ins on like, like, I, the All American or something? Like, I don't understand what happens on CW. Is there news on the CW? Yes. Yes. Uh, D yes. Hess says, Who anyway, is this smoke? This hold on, hold on. This says, Who is this smoke show? That is maybe Lesbian Rachel, who is probably, we, we're going to go, you know, if this were an injury report, we'll say probably Lesbian Rachel. Uh, but she is willing to go straight for some dude from some shitty show. Uh, but other than that, she is very oh. lesbian. And Zeta says he can't find her name. I am not going to for anybody. It's just like, you have a boy crush, right? I'm just saying he's almost feminine looking. Like, if you took the beard off of him and you threw a wig on him, he'd be a fine-ass light-skinned chick. So, I'm just saying, if I had to bone a dude, like a gun pointed to my head, I'd be like, oh, Ricky Whittle. Okay, okay. So, what else? Your guy. Who is my, oh, many, there are many men that I find very handsome. Yeah, who is but, the most attractive guy? But none find? of them I say, boy, if he had a vagina, I never say that. I just say this guy's handsome. And I felt like George Clooney is a handsome man. Um, yes. Let me try to think of who else. I really do, like, I just find George Clooney to be a very dreamy individual. Um, he's very he's cool. The athlete, Who's the dreamiest athlete? That's a good question. Oh uh, boy, mm-hmm. I don't really know because I Joey hate I hate that. athletes because they're all very liberal and they hate America. So it's hard for me to think of that. But um, let me think. <laughs> athletes that I find to be handsome, I don't really know. You used to say Tom Brady. I think you said Tom. No, I mean, you, Tom you, Brady's a handsome guy. All but... of you saying like Tom Brady. Tom Brady's a handsome guy, no doubt. But um, I'm trying to think of someone who's like legitimately like, oh boy, he's dreamy and that's an athlete. And I can't really think of is like, it LeBron. It's not LeBron. His hair is so bad. <laughs> what a horrible hairline that dope has. Um, is it Joe Burrow? It is yeah, not Joe LeBron. Burrow. It is not Joe he Burrow. Should. He should. There's a lot of guys that should like that ass clown that plays for the Lakers, the white dude from Texas A&M. You hate him so Even when much. that dude shaves um, his head, it's himself. still awful. It looks like a, yeah. a little peach with all sorts of fuzz. He's disgusting. God, I can't think of anybody. Um, that's a good question. I don't really have an. I think Matthew McConaughey is a handsome fella, and I find his personality to be very charming. Uh, and I feel like he'd be a good combination of liberal and conservative. Um, I, I'm really, okay. I'm really into Ted Cruz's mullet. I'm not. That's a joke. Um, do you find uh, George Springer to be attractive? I do. I don't. George Springer, he's a hot oh, piece. Yeah. He's a Hot piece. Um, Kyle Tucker. No, Kyle Tucker is not the answer. Uh, oh, Julie, what? Are you like the greasy white dude that used to play for the Astros? Oh, oh Josh Reddick. Josh Reddick. Oh, yeah. she loved Josh Reddick. Oh, I did. This horn toad. She loves some Josh Reddick. I, I had a dirty dream, and Josh or uh, Jim told him that in the locker room. He's a married man. No. Yeah, Jim was like, by the way, Jilly had a dirty dream about you. He's like, well, tell her thanks for being a fan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I like Trashy Josh Reddick, though. Shit. I love Who the Trashy hell Josh else do I? I'm trying to think if there's another guy I find, like an athlete I find handsome, but I I, I mean, there are plenty of handsome guys. What I think Jimmy I, Garoppolo. I thought Jimmy Garoppolo is a lady you found handsome. Does yes, mean- but when they put the, the when they oh, made him, dude, when yeah. they, he was the best looking of the lady, he, you know, he reminded me of, he reminded me of Dr. Addison Montgomery Shepard from a show called Grey's Anatomy, but there was a spinoff of Grey's Anatomy and it was called Private Practice. And he reminded, because Addison Montgomery Shepard was married to Dr. Derek Shepard, who was McDreamy. And they were married at one point point like 14 seasons ago on on uh, on that show the the the, the gray's anatomy and she, like, like lady garoppolo reminded me of addison montgomery shepherd from like the three seasons of gray's anatomy i watched and uh yes uh i found him to be alluring as a woman but i'm trying to think of a man that i find handsome in the uh, randy in- orton Randy Orton. Now, if you count Someone wrestlers, that up in the chat. That's why I bring it up. Dude, Randy Orton is handsome as fuck. Like that dude. Yes, like my is. my mom loves. And then, do you watch wrestling? Maybe lesbian Rachel or no? 
I was little, yes. Now, no. No, as an adult, because you're an adult woman. Jilly is also an adult woman, but she just started watching wrestling because she's a wacko. And Randy Orton is a handsome son of a bitch, that Randy Orton. So you should look him up. Very handsome and ripped up and shit. Uh, Cl- Randy Orton, he is badass. I find Someone, him to be um, handsome. Also brought up Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler is just cool, but I don't know that I find him handsome. I feel like you guys would be best friends though. Me and Dolph, because he's got boys. like a, like he had like a Freddy White Claw hat on the other day, and he was ta- talking about like hair bands, and there was something else. Oh, he loves Britney. Like I really think you two would be best friends. Yeah, that's possible. Randy Orton is nothing special. What the hell? Oh, sc- okay. You're a, you you like ladies, lady. Jeez, you don't judge men. Okay, I can't say nothing to that. <laughs> yeah. I am a straight man. I know handsome straight men. Randy Orton is hot. The, the Jilly knows because she watches him wrestle because she's a horn toad for all these wrestlers. Not all of them. Ric Flair. How about that? No. He's handsome and dreamy. Uh, Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Uh, no, I'm uh, Let me try to think here. Hold on. Dreamy, I'm trying to think, dreamy men. Dreamy. Michael B. Jordan, also very attractive. Uh, oh, good one here in the chat. Ronaldo. Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, I don't even like, know who these people are. I, 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 I soccer. How sorry. do you know who Ronaldo is? He plays tennis, right? No, he's a soccer player. He's a soccer I'm well aware yeah, he's a soccer player. The difference between you and I, the difference between you and I is that I've noticed the men that you talk, that you say are like handsome men are very masculine looking the men that I say are handsome are very feminine looking. So what does this really tell you? Oh, what shut really up. Mean? Oh, stop. Uh, no, but no, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of other guys that I find to be dreamy. Um, I'm trying to think of some dreamy athletes here. Um, hmm. Boy, this is tough. Now I can tell you like lady, like, you know who I like? Megan the stallion. I know that's totally off base here. I love Megan the although she like she really oh, cannot Z-Dog, dance. Hold on, Z Dog says he's got it. Oh, oh, is that Z Dog? Hold on. Something's happening. There's Something's happening. But there is, but I don't know how to hold on. Right. Don't touch anything, Jilly. Let me see if we can get Z Dog in here. Hold on. I'm gonna find the Z Dog. Here we go. Let's minimize this. Okay, where is are we getting it? Up a, there on the top. Where? To the left. Okay, hold on. What are we getting here? I, it's not letting me do anything. Oh, can we not get him? Oh no. Oh wait. Oh no. Add friends. There you go. No, that's not going to do it. That's for a direct message. That's not for this. Oh, no, Z-Dog. I'm trying to find you, buddy. Oh, friends. Okay, so, okay, here we go. Z-Dog, add. So, we've accepted him as a friend. Yep. Now, how, now, do, we get how do we call him? All right, friends. Hold on. We're going to figure this out, maybe, Lesbia. Here there we go. go. Now, we're going to go to him, and we're going to add him to the call as well. Rachel, are you still there? Hold, did we lose her? Damn it, did we lose her for Z-Dog? We need to have a room like we did the other day with everybody. Hey, Z-Dog. Oh, shit, we lost Rachel. Hold on. How do I do this? Can we add her to the call? Hold on. Hold I on, hope, Z-Dog. I, I know, so. I know, because I don't want to just talk. To, oh, okay, hold on. We lost Z- Z-Dog. Okay, Rachel, are you there? Yeah, now I'm here. I lost you, though, but now I'm here. Wait, we need to do a shit. room. Hold on, hold okay, on. Okay, create. Jilly, see what you can do. Hold on. Hold on. I think what you need to do, hold on. Can I try? Hold on. I think what you need to do is you need to go over to, uh, you got to create a room, right? So you go add a server. Is that it? That's it. All right. Then we go create my own, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Me and my friends. Me and my friends. Okay. Create. And then what do we do? Invite your friends. Invite my friends. Okay. Let's try this. Hold on. Invite my friends. We're going to invite Z-Dog. And then, goddamn, where's maybe lesbian? I think you have to hang up with Rachel first. Okay. Hold on. Rachel. I'm, I'm hanging up on you because you're uninteresting. Ooh. All right. Now we got to go back into this group. And we got to find. There she there is. She Game is. day OJ. Invite. But then we got to send them an email. Or oh, sent and then. No, not Rocky PC. No, not, no, no, not that one. Uh, I think we sent to both of them then. Are you guys here? Hold on. We sent it to them. Now we got to see. Z-Dog hopped into the server. Okay. Hold on. And now uh, they've joined the party. Okay. Now what do we do? What do we do now? More. Shit. I don't know what to do. God damn it. We're so close. We are. Hold this button. Inbox. No, that's not going to do it. Okay, get out of this. And then we got to go over. Okay. Okay, hold on. We got to find. There's the server. No, who am I connecting? Hello? Hello? 
Video? That's voice. Can that video? Hello? No, that's just us. No, here, invite. Okay, hold on. Let's see if this works. Okay, hold on. But we invited them because they're not popping up on here. How oh, wait. Them? Invite Game Day OJ and Z Dog 20. Okay, let's see what this does. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, I see Rachel. Well, not yet. I see her name. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh. <gasps> Oh dear! Did we figure it out? Maybe. Hold on. Let me go to video instead of hold on. Turn no no the camera. I, I, are you guys there? Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hey, we got one Z Dog. Hold on. I'm waiting to see Z Dog's face, and we might have solved something here. Z Dog, I, I got to see your face. I hear you. Where all right, are? All right. All right. Z Dog, are you there? What's what's up? Z. Okay, so this could be decent enough. Rachel, do you hear Z Dog? Yes. Okay. Hey, this is good. Z Dog, <laughs> do you hear Rachel? Yes, I do. Yes. Oh, okay. This is right. good enough. This is good enough. So, Z turn on Surprise. your damn camera. All right. Dang. <laughs> hold on. I think we All might. Right. Hold on. We might get right, Z Dog here. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes! yes! <laughs> Love at last. What's up, Z Dog? Nothing much. Here, I'll how about a beer? beer. <laughs> <laughs> cheers. Cheers to Z-Dog and Rachel. Yay, we cheers. did. Wait, are we even on camera or no? N we're kind of on camera. Oh. Let's just let it be. Yeah. Let's let it be because we can see them and that's fine <laughs> enough. Where, so, where are y'all? Where what? Where what? are y'all? Where did you go? We're here. Just don't mind us. I can't figure it out, but we can see you. And uh, Can you see me now? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let, me, right. let me try to make you guys bigger so we can see you. Okay, there we go. Good enough. All right, there ladies, hold on. So, Z Dog, how are you, buddy? Good. That's good. I'm <laughs> glad. To, I'm glad to hear it. So, um, question: uh, Do you believe that Rachel uh, it should be your girlfriend? Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh my gosh! Here we go. Possibly. No, but here's now I need to explain something though to you, Z Dog, and I hope you understand this. You have male parts, and that's okay. Yeah, I have okay. male parts. I have a weenus. You have a weenus. My my wife Jilly, she has a uh, a vagina, which is totally fine. Oh my god! <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on. I tell you all this to tell you this that. Rachel, from what I gather, is into vaginas and not into weens. Are you catching what I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm throwing here? Yeah. So it's not you because you're beautiful, but I think that it's because she's into ladies like vaginas. Now, maybe Rachel can inter interject here and let me know. But Rachel, <laughs> like it, like if, if Z-Dog had a vagina, would you be into Z-Dog? Oh, my God. Here we go. <laughs> um, it would be highly more likely there you go there you go but but by the way i here's the thing z dog rachel does like your music she's told us she thinks you make amazing jams oh, yeah. don't worry. she she did a rap for me years ago i, I have it somewhere rachel you're gonna do another one for his birthday it's coming up next month we're already planning a big z dog birthday bash come on for real Seriously? yeah it's like april oh, that's awesome z dog April what, Z-Dog? I know I wrote it down. 18th. April 18th, so we're going to have a big Z-Dog birthday bash, and the only thing that would make it better is if Rachel did a rap for Z-Dog. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I, I will do a whole rap for you. So you're a Taurus, Z-Dog? Because we're, we're compatible. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. I'm oh. a Capricorn. Uh oh Capricorn, Taurus, the whole thing, I hear. That's what I hear. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Z Dog, quick question. So, what happened to the um, to the Jazz oh, the other night? They lost to the refs. Oh, they lost yeah. to the refs, huh? Yeah, yeah, they did, didn't they? Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that that they lost to the refs, but I mean, did they? I mean, did, so they got screwed, is what you're telling me. Mm hmm. Do you think it that sounds they're like uh, New Orleans? True. <laughs> <laughs> so Z uh, I'm not what Z Dog? No, you got it, Z Dog. Go ahead. 
I'm just going to say this to everyone that's watching. Jazz are still number one. Okay. Okay. Z-Dog, if you had to choose between the Jazz never winning a championship ever and being a perennial lottery team for the rest of their existence, or or dinner with me one night. Whoa. Oh, Z-Dog. So so just to be clear, the Jazz – would never be good. They'd be a lottery team every year, or you'd get to have dinner with uh, maybe lesbian Rachel. What would you do? Oh my God! Here, here we go. Yeah, I'll take the dinner part. <laughs> ah, he said he like he like. Oh my God! <laughs> he likes you more than he likes the jazz. Maybe lesbian Rachel. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's really regretting his life choices right now though he's really regretting them. he's like i don't know if i'm gonna say that that's what's up z dog you're sweet thank you but you should really pick the jazz because it's way wait what way is better. that what, what are you so doing like, what are you doing z dog what is that that, 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 that never, seems inappropriate you never, you never heard of a heart this Sunset is my heart. heart hands i'm not gonna lie to you z dog i did not think that was a heart <laughs> Uh, but if you oh, say, I, I think a heart goes this way, this, what you were doing, um, is, a, is, a, is a, is a, is a, that also is not, it's close, that's, that's closer, but also the other way might turn Rachel on more. So that's a good <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Looks like the wine's talking tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. I love you. Z dog. I love Z dog. He goes, Hey Rachel, I love <laughs> The wine's talking tonight. He's speaking my love language. My love language. <laughs> he, goes, he goes, hey, Rachel, you never heard of a heart before? <laughs> You're a stud, Z-Dog. You are. Oh, shit. <laughs> you are spectacular. Can, again, just to let you know, though, heart. Z-Dog, this is, can you make a heart for me, buddy? Heart. We're all making hearts here. Sunset heart oh, hand. Hearts, hearts. That's good. That's cool. a good. This Z-Dog. Not a heart. <laughs> not a heart at he all. He was trying to get Rachel. Don't fault him. He's like, I mean, you're not wrong. That's actually a good point, Jilly. That, it, it's, he's, that's his best shot he's got. <laughs> uh, I, I really I think we should like all just... Kind of mean, we should all just go to Utah, Wait, Rachel. Do you want to go? Let's, Rachel, all, let's all go to Utah and hang out. I'm down and I live let's in go. Utah. <laughs> I've been wanting to see snow. I've been wanting to plan a ski trip. So, like, yep. I'm pretty it's sure still it's here. There. The snow is still in the mountains. It's still here. Does the snow ever yeah, leave the like- mountains? I don't know. <laughs> Do you ever go it's ski close. or, like, sled or anything? I never skied or sled. You've never been, like, or on a sled? Really? No. You ever thrown a snowball? Wait, What? Have you ever thrown a snowball? It's some, that's my fantasy. I just want to throw snowballs. Yeah. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Okay. Wow. Well, then maybe we got to go to Utah and do that and throw snowballs. It's Rachel's dream. Honestly. Well, to be honest yeah. with you, to be honest with you, I was uh, like on radio and everything publicly. I've been like, I want to plan a ski trip. I want to see snow for the first time in my life. Blah blah. And then we have this freeze here that like kills a bunch of people and shuts down the entire city and i don't know how i feel about snow anymore but that this wasn't even like, ex- that wasn't even like real snow you didn't even get like pretty snow you got like ice <laughs> with a little bit of snow i think we yeah, all need like, to go to salt lake city i think we need to one to two inches and everything just blew up literally so i don't know how i feel about snow anymore but i've heard other cities can handle it z dog you can handle it right yep don't bring the freeze to Utah. Do not bring the freeze. <laughs> but you guys do that all the time, I feel like. Like here, literally, it snowed an inch, and it was like 10 degrees, and like our city was dead. But you guys, Salt Lake City, you're pros. It's true. How That's hot true. does it get there, Z-Dog? Like in the summer, what's the hottest it gets there? Uh, about 105. It gets to 105 in Utah? Yeah, it does. Uh, how do you you don't know maybe lesbian Rachel? I've actually been there. Oh. Been there. I have family that lives in that region, my white side. And uh, <laughs> really, whatever. Now you have to visit yeah. Montana and Idaho. Oh, now you definitely got to visit. <laughs> yeah. 
So Z Dog, uh, what are your parents up to tonight? <laughs> Nothing. I'm just asking. I'm not trying Where to be. Are you up to tonight? I'm talking to you because you're my boy, and you know I, I we're, we're boys for life. Uh, but so, like, so do your parents ever interrupt you when you're on like your videos or anything? Do they ever come down to your your room down there? No, they just stay out of the way. They're like, no, Z Dog's in his beat laboratory, and he doesn't need to be bothered. Well, when you're a legend like Z Dog, your parents don't bother you. That's true. That's true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's. Yeah. What are your parents' names? Like, I feel like I should know them. Oh, my gosh. I, we'll talk about this later. <laughs> well, one of them is Q-Dog, and the other one is L-Dog, if I had to guess. Uh, no, that's all, so, that's all good. You know, whenever Rachel comes over there to ski and sled and stuff, uh, she can meet your Do you think your parents would like maybe lesbian Rachel? I don't know. Because she might be a little too skanky for them. They seem conservative. True. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Do you ever... what I deal with every night? Yeah, Wait, this is, this is what you... Yeah, this is what you deal with every it's night. It's hard to be Z-Dog. We know that. Yeah. Hard to be famous. Mm-hmm. It is, man. Not I was... Really. No. <laughs> You legend. I'm, I'm telling you, just keep tweeting Joel Embiid because if anybody's to tweet you back, it will be Embiid because he is a baby, and he he like every little rap song will get to him. I know it will. For sure, for sure. Um, Deshaun Watson will just block you, even if you don't tweet at him. He'll just fucking block Deshaun you. Who? Deshaun who? Deshaun Watson. Who? That's what he did to me. And I've never, <laughs> never even added the guy before, and I'm blocked. And I'm blocked. a nobody. Wait, you're wait, you're I'm blocked. blocked. Literally, he blocked me, and I have never added him. I have never spoke poorly about him. Anything. I have that's, no idea why. And, and that's the same thing for AJ. AJ is blocked by him, and he has no idea why. Correct. Correct. I have no idea why. I'm assuming that maybe his, I don't know, maybe he was listening to ESPN one morning, and maybe he heard five seconds of something I was saying. He's like, this know. bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but I've been blocked. And I know people that know him personally that have literally been like, hey, bro, why is this account blocked? And he's just like, oh, I don't handle my account. I'm like, bullshit, bro. Bullshit. But whatever. <laughs> so Z-Dog, um, here's a question for you about the uh, about the basketball. Who is your favorite player that doesn't play for the Jazz? Oh, my gosh. Ooh. <sighs> you know, like Ricky Rubio or something. Oh, yeah. I, but I he played for that. the Jazz. But he played. My... Does Ricky Rubio still play? No, he doesn't play for the Jazz. Yes. But who does he play well, he for? Does... The, the Timberwolves. Uh, the Timberwolves. Yes. That seven and thirty team. Do you have any interest <laughs> in watching this new Space Jam movie, Z Dog, with LeBron? Uh. Not going to lie, I like the original better. I feel like the new Space Jam's probably not even going to look as good as the original. For sure. Correct. Did you, you like, like LeBron? Did, hey. Yeah, do you like LeBron or no? Well, what he said about the Jazz today, I don't know. LeBron said something That's about slander. the Jazz today? <clears throat> what did he yeah. say? Well, I would need to pull it up, but... I didn't know that he said anything. No, I wasn't. I gotta look. So you don't like LeBron? Did yeah, you like, did, you, did you like Michael Jordan, even though he played against the Jazz? <laughs> well, here's the thing: I was little when that shot happened, so you don't remember it. It's been a long time. <laughs> no, I feel you. Ten. How old are you? 26. That's a stud. That's a stud oh, like 26. Old. How old are you, maybe, lesbian so like Rachel? 32. You're 32? Yeah. 32 in January. Z-Dog's, you not, look, Z-Dog's you not, not even look, interested. He's like, 32? Get the fuck out of here, you old you bitch. You younger than 32. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> no offense. Don't, don't block me for that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. Aww. Sorry. <laughs> No, but I wouldn't have thought I you were 32. 
I didn't know either. <laughs> you keep you keep telling her that, Z Dog. She might go straight for you yet. Might have to buy her some jazz oh. gear. Okay. Yeah, buy her some jazz Ooh. gear, big dog. <laughs> so I guess what happened was the Which jazz. Like, get, wait, what? I don't want the city. I don't want the city jersey. Okay, it's just anything but that. Oh, don't worry. I won't get you the city jersey. <laughs> Let me try something here. Hold on. I want to, I don't know if this is going to pull up here, but I want to hear your latest jam, and then I want to get uh, maybe Lesbian Rachel's thoughts on your latest uh, diss way, track. So LeBron shit on the Jazz because I guess the All Star draft was tonight. Yeah, and he yeah. was talking about how the Jazz were the last two All Star picks. Yep. There's no slander to the Jazz. You've got to understand. Just like in video games, growing up, we never played with Utah. Oh, <laughs> shut up! Now let me. Oh, wow. Unless it's me on 2K playing with the Jazz. Yeah. How <laughs> many points do you average a game with your created character on, on 2K, Z Dog? 50. Do you play on the. 50. Okay, do you play on the easiest level? Well, yeah. Yeah, you, gotta, <laughs> yeah, you, gotta, you, play the, you gotta play on the toughest level, dude. I, I do that while I'm bored. <laughs> All right, let's play Z Dog's latest jam, which is called Jazz Are Better or Sixers Are Whack. Let's we'll play the, this. The Rachel reaction. All right, let's get everybody's reaction here. We'll play it. Tell you about the Sixers. You're not the number one. Did I mentioned there's a dog back there. <laughs> Joel Embiid, you smell like my dog. Well, it's my you baby. You smell like you, you named it Z Pub, like did you? Attic, smoking that joint. <laughs> Damn. Damn. I'm well, after this. Well, you I'm after this. From I can't hear it. Because you're, you're all talking. Hold on. Uh, you should be able to hear it. Doc Rivers, <laughs> you suck. You're still the crybaby of the year. <laughs> so you guys can't hear it over there? No. Okay, well, I'll figure that out at some point. Jazz are better than you sixers. Might be just too low. <laughs> Either way, Z Dog does have a new jam. It's Let me, a good jam. It is a good jam. It's called Sixers Are Whack. What was your inspiration for this one, Z Dog? What was your What was your inspiration for this tune, Z Dog? After that, after that nice ejection, thanks to the NBA refs, Don Mitchell. It, so it just you guys got screwed. You totally got yes. screwed. Yes. Here's another question for you, Z Dog. As far as maybe lesbian Rachel goes, do you oh, view boy, her? Is she better than Chalet? Do you think she's she's prettier than Chalet? To be honest, hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, is she? What What was your other girl's name that you wrote all those songs about? Oh my god, I got lots. <laughs> I know you do. You got hoes in different area codes. But who's the one that the the, the, the there was Chalet? And then there was a, who? Who was the other, the, like the other main girl you had? Oh God, I don't even remember. Julia now. Luna. Julia Luna. Do you think that maybe lesbian Rachel is hotter than Julia Luna? Hell yeah! Yeah! <laughs> That's what I'm talking. <laughs> skirt, 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 skirt. That's what I'm talking about. Wait, I want to hear your song right now. Can I play it on my phone? Yeah. Yeah. Pull, what are you listening to? Uh, I feel a PS5 coming my way. The Sixers. Well, the Sixers are trash. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, it is. Since 2017. Jazz are better than you, Sixers. Do-do. Do-do. Hey, hey. Y'all are Rachel. And Rachel, they're 
Alright, that, that's we a banger. Act- that's a banger. Why are you acting all ashamed? Own your, own your song, man. I know. <laughs> Doc Rivers does suck. True. He, su- he, sucks, he sucks since 2017. Yeah, well, longer than that. Yeah, they all suck. I agree. Now, maybe lesbian <laughs> Rachel, when did you know that you were a maybe lesbian? Oh, my hell. Uh, maybe do. <laughs> When when I was maybe in like I, uh, I was either I think it was first grade. Oh, re- so and what that, does it feel? What does it feel like? Like is it when you like realize, hey, I think I like chicks. Like what? What was that like? Yeah, so I specifically remember the girls' names: Vanessa Salas and Rachel Gagne, <laughs> and. I, I remember it, like they were the two girls that were like closest to me in like class. And they would always play with like dolls, like Barbie and Ken. And like, they would always be like, oh, Ken is so hot. And like, take off his little shorts and stuff. And I'd always be like, I wish that I was Ken so that you would think that I was hot. Like, I don't know. Like, that's just, sorry. Wow. I I fucked up so bad that Z-Dog is now a fucking lion. Z-Dog, 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 what the fuck is happening here? Like, you're creeping. This like, eyes wide shut. <laughs> I'm like really creeped out by you, right? What is happening? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the oh, fuck is. I'm baffled. All right, so so okay, so uh, have Wait, you ever? What's the other mask, Zito? Don't you have you have, you have the Family Guy mask still? I have it with me. Okay, I remember you had a Family Guy mask, and obviously you love uh, Chuck E. Cheese. I'll, I'll, okay, so let's get back to maybe lesbian Rachel for a second. So have you ever sexually been with a fella? Yes. And and so so and when was this? When I was very young. And so this is before I you knew you were a lesbian. Gay. Okay. Oh, so you so you were like ashamed of being gay. Correct. So I I grew up a Jehovah's Witness. No, really. You're like the Osmonds. You're like the Osmonds and the Jacksons and the maybe lesbian Rachels. I shit you not, man. And uh, I grew up Jones Witness, and um, I knew that the way that I felt was wrong. And when I was in, like, junior high and high school, dudes used to, like, every once in a while, a dude would, like, hit on me or whatever. And and I would just be like, you know, I, I think I like girls. Like, yeah. And they would be like, I shit you not, every single person would tell me you just haven't been with the right guy yet. Oh, <laughs> no. I, brain, I thought to myself, like, why are women attracted to men? They're so, like, gross and sweaty and hairy. Like, I don't understand it. Like, but maybe once you're with the right guy, something changes. Like, the light bulb snaps. And so, yeah, I, I hooked up with a dude. Uh, did you enjoy yeah, it at all? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean... Here's the thing, Josh. You're a fraud. If you enjoyed hooking up with a dude, you're a lesbian <laughs> fraud. Exactly. Z Dog gets it. He gets it. <laughs> Allow me to explain myself a little bit. <laughs> when you say, like, physically, did you enjoy it? Like, sure, it feels great. The same way that, like, if somebody were to blindfold you, right, and touch you in the right way, it would feel good to you no matter what. If you were blindfolded, you didn't know who was doing it. If you thought it was a woman, and then and then you found out afterwards that it was George Clooney, it, for, I don't know if it's let's just not use George Clooney in that. Let's not because I guarantee the kid you hooked up with in high school wasn't George Clooney. Correct, correct. But my point is, you can touch anybody the right way, and it feels good. That that's not it. It's it's like the visual and the mental plays a part in what's attracting to you, right? So. I was never, trust me, trust me, Josh. If I was physically attracted attracted to men, I would fucking, I would make my mother happy, my grandmother happy, everybody happy. I would not choose to be this way. I'm just not physically attracted to men. Like whenever I look at dudes, I'm not like, I'm not 
sexually turned on. So Ex- except for Z Dog. Other than Z Dog. Except for Z Dog. Yeah, you stud, you you pimp, you. Congrats. Uh, but yeah, so, but so you, uh, so you're you're uh, at a young age. You're playing with dolls, the the pa- the Ken doll and the pants and all that. And then you hook up with a dude in high school. Uh, but at that point, you're still questioning whether or not you're a lesbian. Is is what I'm getting at here? Uh, when did you like just say, you know, no, what? I'm f- I'm full on a lesbian? I was fighting whether or not I was a lesbian. And I initially came out to my friends as bisexual because saying that I was gay was just too much. Like I couldn't, I couldn't stomach it. And, um, but yeah, I mean, it it was just, I didn't want to be gay. If that makes any sense. Like I didn't choose to be this way. I just, I mean, if a dude, if I can ever look at a dude and be sexually attracted, I'm let's go, let's go. I'm all for it, but I'm just not. So, Fascinating know. how that works, though. I mean, I, I mean, it makes sense. Maybe I mean, you were born this way. Yeah, <laughs> just Gaga just like Lady there. Gaga said, "Z Dog, where the hell did you go? Z Dog went to jump out the window. Z-Dog's oh, oh. Z Dog, what do you do? Where where did you go, buddy? And what what is on your sleepy time pants? What 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 are on those? Guardians of the Galaxy. You ever seen that movie? I have not, but I know of it. But those are nice yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy pants. I had to wear them just for you. <laughs> that's weird but okay uh so uh so it so you're you're so how again going back to maybe lesbian rachel here because people are intrigued by your uh your your exploration into your sexuality at a young age so at what age so do you are you like okay i think i'm probably a lesbian um for me it wasn't until like the minute i left high school well actually i was kicked out of high school oh wait a second why did, oh, oh were you at like a mormon high school did the osmonds kick you out all right no i, <laughs> I forgot z dog are you mormon no but easy on the osmonds <laughs> <laughs> okay sorry i did not mean to upset meryl and donny osmond all right so uh and by the way z dog have you ever seen marie osmond yes i have she's hot isn't she yeah, but she's old for me. Uh, okay, uh, you take her. But anyway, so uh, why did you get kicked out of high school, maybe, lesbian Rachel? You really want to go down this path? I, <laughs> really, I, I really would. Like, I, I'm, I'm, like, I'm genuinely curious about why you got kicked out of high school. I Okay, I'm, I'm not ashamed of it. I've talked about it on my radio show, everything. So I'm just making cool. sure. Cool. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm not going to judge uh, you. I don't give a shit. I know you don't give a shit. I, I just feel like it might kind of take over the the show, and I don't want it to do that. But no, I was a heroin addict. No and, shit, um, really. Uh, my, for eight and a half years of my life, I was. No wow. shit. And, and, and like, I, like, like, here's a question: Did you get hooked on the heroin due to the fact that you were trying to avoid being a lesbian? Like, how did that come about? Like, were you ashamed, or and that did no. it, or did you just really like heroin? No, I honest to God, there's probably a million therapists in the world and psychiatrists and shit that'll probably tell you that like not having a father present in my life or also like struggling with my sexuality or some shit like that. They probably love to fucking tell you that. I don't believe that's it for a second. I just genuinely think that it made me feel better than I felt sober. And thus I fell in love with it. And I did it for too many days in a row that my body became physically addicted to it. The, the, opiates are a weird drug. Opiates and barbiturates are, and I've never had a, I've never had an issue with barbiturates, but with opiates, it's not just a mental addiction. It's also a physical addiction. So like if you try to quit cold turkey, people have died trying to quit cold turkey. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a real thing. So um, with that being said, you know, I did try to quit cold turkey once. Woke up in the hospital. Apparently, I was having seizures. Oh wow! And I mean, it's just, um, it, it's just. I really liked the way that I felt on it. It was easier for me to function. It was. I had a lot of energy on it. Whereas other people say that they get sleepy or drowsy on it. I got really hyped up and like, I wanted to go to college on it. I wanted to do other people's work. I finally started doing my homework and stuff. And it. I don't know. I just. Like, I'm scared shit. Now, now, did you start, let me ask you this. Did you start uh, with, like, prescription pain pills and just ease into heroin, or did you just start doing heroin? 
<laughs> and, and I ask because uh, I, I ask, I'm not trying to be an asshole, but yeah. like a lot of people, oh, because yeah. they call heroin kind of like the housewife drug because women will, like a lot of people start out doing like a hydrocodone or whatever, and they can't get high anymore from it. So they move on to, to heroin. That is correct. Or their doctor gets scared and quits prescribing it for whatever reason. And they have to find something to fill the void and they, they end up on fentanyl or, or heroin or whatever. No, um, unfortunately, I wish that I could say that because then that would maybe take some of the accountability off of me. No, I started off on heroin and then ended up on pills. No shit, huh? Because it, it felt safer and I knew what I was getting. I knew the dosage I was getting. Whereas with heroin, you never know what the fuck you're getting off the street. You know what I mean? Sure. But no, I, I totally asked for what I got and I got what I asked for. And I well, no what made you start it though? So like, but like, how did, like, did it come about? Did someone approach you and say, Hey, you want some heroin? Like in an after school movie or like, how did that come about? Yeah. So I was dating my very first girlfriend and, um, I, I told lesbians yeah. are, let me, let me this, this just confirms yeah. lesbians are horrible and they all want yeah. you to do heroin. And this <laughs> confirms that all of them, this all confirms. lesbians do heroin. No, it's, I mean, borderline. <laughs> no, but uh, as a young girl, I was going to, I just transferred to Clear Creek High School because Santa Fe High School, the kids that I'd grown up with my whole entire life were making, um, like, I would wake up in the morning, go to school, and there would be little post-it notes on my locker at Santa Fe High School. And they were like, the n-word or like asking me if i was the n-word or whatever and i'm not gonna say it out loud you know what i mean because sure. i'm yeah. trying to do you know but that's fucked up but yeah there were, uh, i went to an all-white school and i guess because i had curly hair and big lips or whatever i guess in, in the very fishbowl school that i went to i guess people thought that i was black and so they started making death threats in, in little post-it letters. And I'm sure it was probably just one or two kids that just thought it was funny, but it really scared me, right? So I asked my mother to transfer me school district. So I went to Clear Creek School District, transferred to Clear Creek in League City for like five minutes. And while I was there, I met this girl who I guess seemed kind of troubled. But as soon as I met her, she moved to Atlanta. Well, her father was a pilot for Delta Airlines. And so we figured out a way to trick Delta Airlines into thinking that I was her. And so I flew for free back and forth from Houston to Atlanta, Houston to Atlanta. And this is all when you so how old are you, like 16, 17 at this time? I'm between 16 and 17 at this <laughs> Holy, point. Holy, yeah. and you're just getting on planes and like. Well, this explains why you're a Falcons correct. fan now. Like this now I get Because you used to meet up with your girlfriend in Atlanta. All right. The very first football game I ever went to was like. Falcons game. They were playing against the Saints. It was in the old Georgia Dome. Like that's how I became a Falcons fan. So and, and just anyways, rewind, let's rewind a little bit. So your dad wasn't part of the picture. You said right? Yeah. Like for like at, at any point, or was it like when you were young that he disappeared? Like did you never really know him? No, never. Just every once in a while, when I was really young, I saw him. But it was very brief and usually for like, you know, a couple of hours in a day and then wow. just not. So then fast so forward back to high. Okay, that then listen, there are a lot of people that, that, that that's been the case for. No, this is great. And people in the chat are right. really liking this, that you're very real and very open about this. Rachel. Absolutely. So this is our girl, maybe lesbian this. Rachel, dropping right. bombs. So, so so you get on a plane at like 15, 16 years old, and you're flying back and forth between Houston and Atlanta to go see your girlfriend who's in Atlanta. Wow. Correct. And <laughs> we had found a way, like I said, to make Delta, to trick Delta Airlines into thinking that I was her. And it required me lying about my age. I, I could not check a bag. If I had to check a bag, then you have to have an ID, right? So I would, I would like, I had her employee ID and I'd go into delta.employee.net or whatever the fuck it was. Go in there, type in her employee ID, her password, everything, and book a flight. And as long as the flight was not booked, I could get on that flight as the daughter of a deceased pilot. 
Her father had passed away. He's like the youngest or the second youngest person <laughs> in and, North America to die of Alzheimer's. And how often did you do this? I had 88 flights in one year. Holy so shit. Wow. If you, if you had 88 old? flights, that means you took more uh, at one point because there's 52 weeks in a year. or how many, three, right. how many, So you were taking more than a flight a week. Wow. You are correct. You are absolutely correct. Um, what I would do is a lot of times I would tell my mother that like I'm going to school. She made the mistake of giving me a car. And so I was, I was just like, I'm going to school, right? And then I would just fly to like New York City to meet up with her and have oh, like wow. lunch in New York City. And then we both fly back. She'd go back to Atlanta. I'd come back to Houston later on in the day. And, and you'd be and you'd be home in time for dinner in Houston. Yeah, and if I was late, I would just be like, oh, you know, dance practice ran late. You know what I mean? Like, I'll or hey, I'm staying the night with this friend tonight. I'm not coming home tonight. I'll see you tomorrow. But the, so let's talk. go back to this. How did this get you started doing heroin, though? Okay. So this girl that I fell in love with, and let me just tell you this. I don't know if I would have fell in love with her if I had been with other girls previously, but she was, like, the first one, like, I finally felt like I was, like, who I was supposed to be. Like, I don't know if this ever makes sense to you, but it was just really dumb. Anyways, um... She was a drug addict, and I didn't know that at first. Uh -huh. But as I started going to Atlanta, I'd go to Atlanta for like a weekend and say that I'm staying the night at my friend's house for the weekend or whatever. And I'd go to her house for the weekend, and then she'd be like, hey, uh, you want to do some blow? And I'd be like, no. Like, no, oh my God, I grew up Joe's Witness. Like, are you kidding me? Me being gay is enough as it is. <laughs> like, I'm not... I'm not going to do this. But it's one thing for me to be gay and then get on a flight and lie and say that I'm you and fly to Atlanta to see you. But I will not do drugs. I am Jehovah's Witness. I will do none of this. Correct. <laughs> and, and Josh, I never said I was Jehovah's Witness. I would just be like, I grew up this way. And like, sure. how dare you? But I was, I never claimed to be a, a Joe's witness. But anyways. Well, let me interrupt um, you. Z-Dog, let me ask Z-Dog a question. <laughs> Z-Dog, are you like less turned on by maybe lesbian Rachel now that you know she uh, she did drugs? Should be. Oh, no, don't not. <laughs> so, so like, are you, are you less, <laughs> in, uh, are you less interested hey, in hey. Rachel now because <laughs> she did drugs? Hey, this is a good story. I'm just taking it in. No, this is a great story. Does it she's like let me, overcome that, a lot. Good for Rachel. Now, let me ask you this, Z-Dog. Are you turned on by the fact that she's a Jehovah's Witness? I didn't know that. Well, now you know. I anyway. Know Jehovah's Witness, Josh. <laughs> so anyway, sorry, Z-Dog. I did not mean to bother you. All right, so anyway, we're, we're on the flight. We're on a plane here. You're going back and forth. You find out that you're this girl you're in love with when you're like 15. So when would this have been? Early 2000s, mid to like 2003, 4, 5, somewhere in that neighborhood? I'm class of 07, so this would have been 06. Okay, so 06, and you're flying back, and you're jet-setting like someone brings up in the chat. It's like, catch me if you can. You're, you're, you're jet-setting. You're like Leo and catch me if you can. So you're going from place to place. You find out your ladies do, she does drugs. How does she lure you into the drug web? I'll tell you how she did whenever I got bad. Um, at the time when she offered me Coke as my first drug, um, I was like, I, I guess it wasn't as against it because I knew other people at the time who dabbled in it and they seemed fine, right? It was like pot, Adderall, Coke. Yeah, it's kind of all in the same same zone, at least in my head at that age. Um, it was whenever the, the day happened that I, the girl was trying to convince me that it was okay if she did, or what was she trying to shoot up? She was trying to shoot up a drug. I just don't remember what drug it was. But I remember it, it became an issue because she was like, I, I, remember, I, I don't know. I just remember being really young and just being like, dude, like, stop. Like, don't put a fucking needle in your body. You know what I mean? Like, that's disgusting. Why would you ever do that? And she I, she just kept telling me over and over and over again, 
If you did it once, you'd understand. If you just dude, dude, did it once, dude, right? and I'm not trying to interrupt, but like that's why I'm petrified of these kind of drugs because I watch Drugs Inc. Yeah. and shit, and like I see how desperate these people are for heroin, and I feel like if you take one shot of that shit you're hooked on it. Like it hits your veins. Cause I've taken pain pills and in, in uh, pain, uh, intravenous pain meds at the hospital yep. and they'll come in and go, Hey, do you want Dilaudid? And I'm like, I guess. And they're like, what's your pain level? And you always lie. You go nine and they give you this shot. And I feel the way it hit, it feels when it hits your veins. And I'm like, that's why I would be petrified to do heroin. Cause it must feel like that times a billion. Like it would scare the shit out of me to do that. Cause like, obviously you do it once and then you're chasing that high forever. Yeah, no, you're, I mean, you nailed it on the head and God bless you, I guess, for lack of a better word that you are of sound mind enough to think that way. I've heard you say that before, you know, I've been listening to you for a long time, but um, no, that's, you're exactly right. It feels so good that you're just like, holy shit, like I never want to not feel that again. You know what I mean? So let's rewind a little bit. So how did you decide to finally do it? Like what made you go, all right, I'll find, you know, I'll put the needle in my arm. Let's do this. Yeah. Um, so I remember one night again, I'm like 18 or 19 years old, I guess at the point that I actually put a needle in my arm. Um, I just remember I was a little drunk. We had went to a gas station in Peachtree City and asked some random guy, because we were underage to buy alcohol. We asked some random guy if, you know, if we gave him like 30 bucks or something, 20 bucks, 30 bucks, would he get us a six pack of beer? And so I remember that he got us Heineken, some random guy at the gas station. And then, you know, he took off with the change or whatever. But I was already kind of buzzed. And mind you, 16, 17 year old Rachel didn't take a whole lot to get buzzed. Sure. So I'm kind of buzzed. We go back to the house. And the girl is just like, bust out a fucking syringe. And I've never seen it before in my life. And she's just like, you start fighting about it or whatever. And, and she just keeps reiterating to me that like, if I would just do it once, then I would understand why she's doing it. And I wouldn't be giving her so much grief about it. Which is the reason to and, not do it. Cause she's not wrong. I, I I've never done it, but I can guarantee you that the second that needle plunges in and you get that feeling eyes roll back. Yeah. And it's like, I've never felt anything this euphoric before. Yeah, but my dumb ass didn't think about it as logically, I guess, as she did. <laughs> yes. And you know what? I really just wanted to, I think, find a reason to be able to be with this girl, if that makes any sense. Sure. So I, you know, I, I got a little drunk. I remember I had, like, maybe two Heinekens. And then I remember being like, well, if it's that great, then fucking, like, do it to me. And she was like, really? Like, she was so excited about it. That's all I remember about it. She was so excited. She was like, really? And I was like, yeah, fucking just, I, I want to I understand what makes you choose this over our relationship. And then it happened. And then, um, yeah, it's all downhill from there. I imagine that uh, it felt just spectacular. Oh, yeah. I still remember to this day what it felt like. <laughs> but, and, and that's the thing is, and that's what, I, again, I've never, like, the, the, the highest I've ever been on anything is I accidentally, I say accidentally, I just didn't know any better. I took three hydrocodone one time. You didn't and, know any better. They tell you to only take one. But I'm, again, I'm a big fat guy. I take three pills but of you're everything. Still like, fuck the doctor. I'll I took take. three pills. And like, I didn't realize that I was high at the time. But when I wake up the next morning, I'm like, wow, that was an amazing thing. And then I never did it again because I'm like, boy, I'm like my dad. I'm afraid of all pills and shit. So when you're doing this. Yeah. Uh, and and that feeling that you fork through, can you describe that? Like, what it, what is it like that first time you do that? You're like, I mean, wow. I mean, I imagine it's out of this world. Yeah. Um, the the number one thing that I remember is that it felt very warm. If that makes any sense. Sure. Like, yeah. It felt like internal, like internally, like like in my core, it felt warm. It felt like a. Have you ever put a like like a weighted blanket on your sure, body? Sure, yeah, yeah. Felt kind of like that, mixed with like the comfort of like being hugged by your mother or something. If that 
I don't I don't know how to explain it. I know it sounds probably weird to I haven't looked at the chat. Is it instantaneous? Like is that is that feeling of euphoria like instantaneous the second it hits your veins like that? When you shoot it up, yes. Wow. Like you shoot it up and then you wait for a minute. You wait for a minute and maybe maybe 15, 20 seconds max. And you're like, okay, I don't feel anything. I don't feel anything. And then suddenly it just hits you. And it's like, have you ever taken a Valium, Josh? No. I mean, the most I've done is you know, I've done a little hydrocodone and I didn't know, know any better when oh, I was younger. Know, again, you took three. You were supposed to take one. I know, so. but the, I did accidentally mix hydrocodone and NyQuil that one time. And I saw oh. like midgets riding like unicorns and shit that one time. See, <laughs> don't, don't, don't act like you know Z Dog. Well, I, I think a lot of Z Dog's <laughs> followers have joined the chat. So got, like all these new followers, and they're like, where's Z Dog? So I think like he, his people are here. Z, well, hello, Z Dog's people. But but yeah, like I mean, the, the most euphoric feeling I've had drug wise, it was on accident when I took too many hydrocodone. But I remember that feeling of just like weightlessness and f it, like it felt unreal. Uh, but for, what you're saying is you felt this warm feeling like a big weighted blanket was on you. And like, I can see like, that's why when yeah. I watch like the, the, the shit that mostly takes place in Baltimore, like uh, drugs, Inc. I'm like, Oh, oh God, yeah. these, pe these people have to wait outside of these, these horrible places to find this drug to get a fix. Like it's gotta be this, um, the, this feeling that's so amazing that you have to have it over and over again. That see, that scares the shit out of me. Yeah, no, I don't blame you, and it should, and I wish that it scared me more. You know what I mean? Because when I was younger, I'm, I'm not that old. Like, I had access to internet, to heroin.com, but I don't know why. For some reason, I was almost more, like, obsessed with wanting to feel the stuff that I would read about on, like, heroin.com and stuff than I was to be scared of it. And I always felt so sheltered from everything and I kind of just felt like, like, I want to feel like what I'm being sheltered from. Does that make any sense? So, like, I, I'm strongly against parents who super fucking shelter their kids. Because that's kind of what I feel like intrigued me so much about something that I should have never fucking cared about. Wow. Like, it's just, it's fascinating. So, so, and I'm, I'm guessing this was a long-term thing trying to kick this shit because you're 32 now. This is like, I, I, we yeah. really appreciate you sharing this. Like, this is like really And by the way, and you're our friend. I'm not trying to be exploitive here. Yeah. I didn't even know this was going to go down this route. I'm just fascinated by the story. We're buddies. We're, we're friends. Like, I'm not trying to be an asshole. Sure. Uh, I'm not trying to be exploitive. Uh, but I'm just fascinated by because I've told you this a hundred times, Jilly, that like, I'm scared shitless of, like, my dad will not take, like, he won't mix Pepto-Bismol and Tylenol because he thinks he's going to get hooked on something, you know? Right. So, like, I, I'm kind of in that same way. So, how many years were you hooked on this shit? Oh, unfortunately, I, <laughs> I wasted eight and a half years of my life on that shit. Holy and now, shit. Yeah. It, it sucks, and honestly, I'm embarrassed about it. But you guys have nothing to worry about, by the way. Just P.S. Based on what you just said, like I'm already open about this. It's actually therapeutic for me in some sure. way to talk about it. Yeah, I just did. I like because so, we're but like we've known you since we came back here the second time. So I didn't <laughs> want to make it seem like what are you what are you laughing at, Z Dog? What is so funny? Because to people you? keep asking Rachel, you. Rachel's dabs. just dab. Rachel's just dab. Oh, funny. okay, okay, okay. I got <laughs> you. <were> you. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to be clear that I'm not trying to be some exploitive <laughs> asshole here because we're well, friends. The people in chat Z Dog to give us a dab. So Z Dog, give us a dab. Okay, Z Dog, zab, dab it out for us. Thank you. There he is. That's my man right there. <laughs> Love this dude. Uh, Z Dog, have you ever done heroin? No, I haven't. Good. Have yeah, you ever Have you ever had it. too much Nyquil or anything like that? No, I never took a Nyquil. What about Tylenol? You ever any Tylenol? Yeah, if I had a headache, like, duh. But, like, have you ever had too much of it? No? You, I mean, you've been pretty good? No. All right, don't <laughs> overdose on Pepto. Now, <laughs> uh, anyway, so, so again, I'm not trying to be exploitive. I'm oh, just, so, Josh, uh, did you close the bathroom doors? Luther went I downstairs. have no idea if the bathroom oh, door is closed, so you can go look. look. We don't want Luther to get into the tampon garbage can, then it's a whole mess. You, you want to know, <laughs> listen, I know that you've had a hard life, Rachel, because you've done heroin. You don't want to know what it's like waiting for a dog to shit out a tampon. It is a is a horrible oh, life, and you don't want that life. 
You don't want it. Because I tell you, when we sit around the park and we're like, do you think Luther ate a tampon? We're like, probably. And then when you watch that poor dog have to shit that tampon out, it's like, I feel, <laughs> now it's his fault. He ate the shit, but I still feel horrible for him. But anyway, so eight years, you say you're, you're hooked on this shit. How do you like, like, cause like, have you ever read that the heroin diaries? I think it's Nikki Six's book. Have you ever read that? Like he talks no, about haven't. that shit. Cause like he almost died. The song kickstart my heart by Motley Crue is about Nikki six, like dying basically. And they brought him back to life. Like, so, I mean, like everybody you hear about heroin, they love it and they, and, and then they hate it because it controls their life. How were you able to get this from controlling your life? So I'll be honest with you, um, like I said, I woke up in the hospital once having seizures from trying to quit cold turkey. That's because I did not know that there was like alternative programs that existed. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure I would have fucking chosen them. Well, let me but rewind. Let me, let me, hold, on, hold on, hold on. Let me rewind. So like, obviously this is a high school crush thing. So like you started heroin because of this other girl. How long were you like an item with this girl? Oh Lord, with Meredith, uh, like three years, maybe. So, three, three so years? how old were you at this? So from like 15 to 18, 16 to 19, something like that. Oh Lord. No. When I say eight and a half years, I'm saying everything up until like I was 27. So I, I you know, my, my timeline could be off, but it, I know for a fact to be honest with you, Josh, a lot of my life is kind of a blur, and it's kind of sad to say that. Sure, no, I and get it. And it makes me sad to say that. But a lot of it, a lot of it is a blur. So, so just to be um, clear, that but the, the, this is the girl that got you to start heroin was the girl that you took the flights with and everything, and that was cool. in high school. So, how long, like, how right. long into your life, like, so were you with this chick for X amount of years? How many years was that? Did you say? Yeah, no, I was with her for maybe three years, maybe a little bit less, but like around three years in, in our relationship kind of went like this. Like nowadays I consider the girl family. Like I, I, to imagine that I ever had sex with this girl is kind of bizarre to me because the way that I look at her, first of all, she's still stuck in that life. She won't admit it, but I can tell that she's still stuck in that life. But I'm still close to her mother. I'm, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. But her and I are, I, I don't view her as like an ex. Like the way that you would probably view an ex, so to speak. Okay. But with that being said, I have definitely come further out of that hole than she ever has. And I am absolutely 100% convinced that that is where she will be her whole entire life. There's no coming out of it for her. And I feel like she's also kind of accepted that. Like, I would feel differently if she felt differently. But she is kind of like, you know what? This is where I'm at. This is where I'm going to be the rest of my life. And I'm probably going to die before my mother does. So how, so, I, I, and so then how did you come out of this? Like, so how old were you when you, first of all, how many years were, you said eight years you were doing this. So how old were you when you decided, okay, I got to stop this shit. And how long did it take you to come out of it? Well, I decided that I needed to come out of the shit many years before I actually did come out of the shit. Um, but I believe it was almost six years ago that I, I guess, I guess maybe, well, okay, six years ago was whenever I joined the methadone program that I'm in right now that helped me get out of it. And right now I'm down. Why, to why did you, why did you decide to do that? Like, what was your come to Jesus moment? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I can absolutely tell you that. So I had gotten into a car wreck with a drunk driver about five years ago. And the the drunk driver had run so much of my car at the time that like I had to give up college 
I had to give up my apartment lease. I had to give up everything in my entire life that I still had kind of like going for me. I had to give up all of it because of this car wreck, this drunk driver that hit me on a Monday night around like one o'clock in the morning. And I'm trying to think of how to word this. When this dude hit me, you know, I know that he didn't realize he was doing it at the time, but he he was ruining a lot of things for me. Like I was trying to like still be a heroin addict and still be a bartender. I was trying to still be a heroin addict and still go to school. Like I was I was literally trying my damnness to fucking do all this shit at the same time. But when he disabled my ability from having a vehicle, it took everything else away from me so my only option became what i knew a, a lot of other girls did and i'm not i mean i guess i'm talking down on them and saying this but i'm not trying to talk down on them and saying this but i was never gonna i was never gonna whore myself out i was never gonna prostitute myself out I had been a heroin addict or an opiate addict for eight and a half years at this point, and it's still gotten by somehow. I would work two to three jobs at a time. I would work 80 something hours a week to be able to afford my college and still afford my, my opiate addiction. I was never ever going to be forced into like sleeping with some random dude to being a heroin addict. So whenever this drunk ass dude hit my car, and I no longer had transportation. I had to leave my apartment. I had to leave school. I had to leave everything because I couldn't do it anymore. And I actually had a couple of dudes from like Twin Peaks and shit, like step up and be like, hey, you know, like if you give me this, I'll give you this. If you give me this, I'll give you this. But I was never gonna fucking do that. And that's not me being like self-righteous or anything. I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. So, I had to figure out an alternative. So I started Googling a bunch of shit and I learned that there's a medication called Suboxone and a medication called Methadone that I have the choice between. And I started off taking Suboxone because it seemed easier. And Suboxone gave me these really bad headaches. So then I tried the alternative and that's where I'm at right now. So I'm down to five milligrams a day right now. And within the year, I'm projected to be off of it completely. Wow. And you were able to just function in life. So you would do hair. So like on a typical day, you said you were working at a bar. You said Twin Peaks, right? If I if I heard that right. Yeah. So so like, would you get up in the morning and do heroin and then function for the rest of the day? Or would you have to like go to the bathroom at Twin Peaks and do something and function? Like, how did that work? Um, at this point, I was using opiates all throughout the day. So I actually started off on heroin, but then switched to opiates because like I told you earlier, it was a lot easier for me to just personally to just deal with stuff that like I knew the dose that I was getting as opposed to some street drug that I don't know what the fuck I'm getting. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, um, I used a lot of like prescription opiates and whatnot, and, um, I milked them as long as I could. And now here you are. And that, that sounds like that was about four or five years ago. And now you're kicking yeah, ass. Rachel, you're yeah. amazing. Like I, I knew you were amazing, but like hearing your story is just fantastic. That's fucking like, unreal, man. That's unreal. Look at Z, and Z dog. Z dog is a Z dog is cheering for you. You know we've always been a big fan of yours, and now like hearing your story, like that's like that's really amazing, Rachel. Like I'm Z, very proud of you. Uh, Z dog had an addiction to Lucky Charms at one point, and he's overcome that. So uh, <laughs> you you two are very similar in that way. Uh, Z dog, have you ever been addicted to anything? You think? <laughs> no, I haven't. Maybe the jazz. Were you addicted to Rudy Gobert? Hell yeah. All right. So look, and he's still, and he's, he's still stuck in the throes of that. Maybe lesbian Rachel, you've overcome oh, yours. Man. He's addicted to Rudy Gobert, just so you know, and, and Carl Malone. So, <laughs> look, look, but that's amazing. Though. That I hear. <laughs> the top addiction right here. You know, did you ever watch Carl Malone in wrestling Z dog? He was too young for that. He wouldn't, he wouldn't have seen that. I he's, was, I was, yeah. I never seen it, but I was Rachel. Did you ever watch WCW? 
Absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> oh, she's judging me for watching <laughs> WCW. She's like, hey, I did heroin for 10 years. And she's like, oh, but your ass watched WCW, you trash. Yep, totally. Coming totally. at me. You're coming that at me is- with that shit. No. <laughs> no. Absolutely not. <laughs> But that no, that's badass though. So like so, and now obviously the last you've been doing well, and you you're, you're you're crushing, and you got your show, and you're doing so like during the day. Like, what is your day job? Yeah, no, I was actually going to say this earlier. I, I know I didn't get to it, but um, ironically, I hire for jobs in the Western United States for mattress firm, including Salt Lake City. Oh. Hey! Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sure do. But no, um, I hire I hire from Mattress Firm. That is my job. And um basically our region is like the largest of all the regions. It's the entire western United States, including the Midwestern. So like from like Detroit to Salt Lake City to San Diego. So I, I hire people from Mattress Firm from all those regions. But it's a remote job that allows me to work from home. That's and cool. um, yeah, it allows me to still do my job on the weekends, doing the Houston sports show, the TV show, all that good stuff. So, so do you do you have a lesbian yeah, lover way, right now? Like, tell everybody in this chat if they don't watch. Uh, Rachel is on, what is it, Sundays? Saturdays? Sundays, Sundays. from 8 to 10 a.m. So check out Rachel. She's That's all great. You, and you should I'm, always I'm check that. I'm you should. <laughs> But do you have a lesbian lover right now, maybe, Lesbian Rachel? I do have a lesbian lover right now, and I'm kind of surprised that she's not home yet. So we might need to, like, whoop her ass into shape or something. <laughs> Z-Dog, yeah. Z-Dog, do you think that maybe her lesbian lover is stepping out, maybe? Possibly. Yeah, possibly. So be be careful, maybe, Lesbian Rachel. Z-Dog knows. Because Z-Dog has a sixth sense for this. He yeah. thinks maybe your lover is stepping out. Maybe Who's making love to your old lady right now? That's a good question. Uh, exactly, right, Z-Dog? You, you got me. Uh, yeah, she loves you. Just who, so you know. Was she, She's who, a big fan. Of who? I knew it. I knew it. Here it comes. Here it comes. Oh, I thought of me. Shit. Not you, Z Dog. She's worried about you. She's honestly worried about you. She told me earlier today, she was like, man, I really like Z Dog's raps, but I feel like he's coming for my woman. So I'm just letting you know. Z Dog, if you had to make your move on maybe lesbian Rachel and you had to convert her from a lesbian to someone who is strictly dickly, uh, what kind of move would you make on her? Like, could you throw some of your lines at her? Oh my god! Uh, T- tell her something that you think will, you know, turn her to your side. Okay, what is this? A flirting oh, hour? Yep, that's the <laughs> flirting hour. Is exactly what it is, Z Dog. You know, your best game. I know you got games. Z-Dog. Spit some game, bruh. Oh my gosh, I'm not. Go- I never flirted, so. <laughs> then this uh. is this is your moment, Z Dog. You got one. You got one shot. One opportunity. Tell me how you feel, bro. It's okay. Do we have to do this now? <laughs> so let me also, ask you. Josh, I don't know if you know, but Z Dog said yesterday that he has his old raps. Uh, you got to send them to me, Z Dog. You know, I want them. You want Together is your favorite song. That's my favorite song. Now, Rachel, what is your, like, when you talk about your type of lesbian lover, like, what kind of chicks are you into? Really feminine. I like women that look like women. I don't like women that look like men. Um, I mean, but also, like, nothing against them. So, like, you know, teach their own. But I'm just attracted to feminine women, if that makes any sense. That makes sense. I get it. I, too, am attracted to feminine women. So we have that in common. Correct. Uh, Look at us. Correct. So, uh, but feminine women, what does your current lady look like? Is she I feminine? Wish it was here so y'all could see, but, um, Me too. Yeah, no, she's actually an immigrant, believe it or not. I didn't know this when I first met her. She's an immigrant with a, a permanent residency card. So with that being said, she's Mexican. Um, but whenever I first met her, I met her on was it Bumble or Tinder? No, it was Bumble. And this bitch fucking tricked my ass, Josh. Like I legit thought she was white. I thought she was a white girl. 
And then I met her in person. I was like, you're a whole Mexican. Like, what the fuck? How did she do that? How did you fall? I mean, to be fair, I thought you were Mexican until 10 minutes ago. So, but like, how did she pull that off? What was her move? Well, her move was like, I guess on her, what was it? Like Bumble or whatever it was. She, uh, her pictures were like super contrasted and shit. And she, I'm just saying she looked like a white girl. This bitch. I honestly thought the girl that I was hitting on was like Greek or some type of European. Her name was Itzy. So I'm thinking to myself, like, Itzy, that sounds like that Greek. sounds Jewish. No, Itzy sounds Jewish is to me. Is her really Itzy or is that a made up name? Or her real name is Itzazil, which is super Aztec. Like, she's a fucking Pocahontas. <laughs> I, love I feel a movie coming. <laughs> <laughs> well played, Z. I love the little book on us, but no, I didn't know that's what she was at first. But no, she's great, and um, but no, I don't discriminate. I just like pretty women that look like women. No offense. That's it. I mean, I wouldn't have guessed you were a lesbian. I don't mean that in an offensive way, but I. I never thought you were a lesbian. I just thought you were into me because you sent me DMs all the time. So I was like, I don't blame her. I mean, whoa, whoa. I I because I'm very arrogant. You I'm won. very arrogant. Uh because I think Z Dog, what are you talking shit for over there, Z Dog? What was that? <laughs> I don't need your soundtrack back there talking shit. Eighteen hundred dollars, Josh. Come on now. <laughs> oh, gee, okay, okay, okay. I've had enough. That's uh, good. All right, Z Dog and maybe lesbian Rachel. I love both of you. You're very wonderful. And I again, Z Dog, you crushed it. You did well. All right, we'll see you guys later. Okay, bye, Rachel. Rachel. Love you, baby. All right, we'll see you. All right, there you go. Z Dog dunked on you. Someone told him to say that shit. No, Z Dog. That's hilarious. You know that is bogus. You know that's bogus. Eighteen (laughs) hundred (laughs) dollars. Oh my god! Amazing. Oh boy! No, Z Dog crushed. Also, that's a very fascinating story. From it Rachel. is. I, I, I know. She shared that I thought that was very interesting. Very, I agree. Very cool of her to share that. She didn't I know. Have to I do agree. That. And I and again, I'm not trying to. I just want to be clear. I'm not some like you know exploitive asshole here. No, that was very cool I, to share. Um, but Z Dog, holy shit! Z Dog, you killed it. <laughs> he gets out on that line. That's like the ultimate. Like get out and walk. Like George said, gotta go. Get out and walk away. Oh, God. Got owned by Z Dog like a tool. George stands at it. And, he and did. Hey, you know what? Why don't you guys make up for that? I mean, let's throw in some bits in here. <laughs> We're four hours into this shit. Throw in some goddamn bits. $1,800, he says. Someone oh told him God. to say that shit. Put him up to no, it. No, he watched that show. Z Dog knows what he's doing. I tell you, what a world. Rachel is badass. Very, I agree. No, she's great. She's amazing. Like my always my worry, especially when it's with friends of mine, like I don't want to be too exploitive and like I don't want to make it sound like I'm trying to dig too deep in for the sake of being titillating and salacious. Uh, yeah, but she's been listening for f- four or five years, so you know, and she's and she a friend. could have told you to shut the fuck up. She I could have, like, like she's, she's not like she didn't need me to defend her. Like you know, like I'm not like you know, she didn't need my defense. I just wanted to make sure it was well known and well documented that I wasn't trying to be. No, she wanted to share that story. She said it was like therapeutic. Titillating, well, you know, so I, I, just, mean, I appreciate that. Yeah, I just didn't want to do that. Like, I, I don't know. I've changed in a way, like, because you never know what's, you know, you know, what direction things are going to go. So Andy said that was a great interview, Josh. Thanks, Andy. Rachel's they don't allow that kind me. of stuff on the radio these days, though. It's specifically, it's just strictly Twitch. Rachel, thanks for having me. No, thank you. Well, for and I mean this, us. Rachel. You're wonderful. And I get, I just want to be clear. I wasn't sitting here like, hey, let's dig deep on Rachel using heroin because it's titillating. I like you. We're friends. And I just found it to be an interesting conversation. I hope you know that. So, And before we move, we should probably, like, we have to get drinks. I love Rachel. I know. I'm with you. It's been too long. And, uh, and I miss Sean. I miss, you know, Sean. The last time I've seen him in person was two years ago, a year and a half ago. Again, we've been kind of hermits. Like, I don't know when we've seen people. Well, to be fair, there was a Rona that made everybody hermits. Yeah. I do find myself to be a fine interviewer, though. I, I think I ask good questions. You I understand do, uh... this about maybe lesbian Rachel now, but I, let's make it about me. Uh, I am a great interviewer. I'd argue I'm the greatest interviewer this side of Oprah and Howard Stern. And let's be real. Howard just interviews his shitty friends, his celebrity friends who have nothing to say now. 
So I'd argue I'm better if we're being real. Uh, let's see. Those are real conversations that should be had. I agree, M.W. Soulgrove. That's good. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, Joe yeah. wants Trump on, but Andy did send us the contact for Roger Stone. Maybe so. we'll get Roger Stone on. Don't maybe worry. we will. Maybe, maybe we will, and that's okay. Josh, you better do it. You're not dropping the okay. ball. That could be our. I. Uh, that's okay. We'll get Roger Stone. Spank It Slap is still here. He says, love y'all, and I find myself with their problems. We love Spank It Slap. I too. didn't know that Spank It Slap it was some guy that was all hopped up on pills and booze. I guess that would explain why you'd spend $500 well, you on my dad's paintings. You don't know what people are going through. You never know. It just proves you never but know. We're a very judgment-free people... zone in this chat, so we don't judge. Absolutely not. We all have our issues, man. People do what they do, and it's fine. People feel comfortable talking to you. I don't know if people feel comfortable talking. I just know Rachel. If Rachel was a rando, she probably wouldn't have felt comfortable talking to me. But we've known each other for a while. and It was really cool of her to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Again, I, I, you know, hey, it is what it is. It is what it is. Fascinating story. Mega Blast says, I got my Josh in a baseball card today. Thanks. Well, you can thank Cindy. So they, I don't even know. If Cindy's still here, that's a hell of an accomplishment. I doubt she is. What if she's still here? It's one oh five. She's been drinking since ten in the morning. I know. Or maybe earlier. I feel very comfortable with Josh this game. Because I'm not again, I'm not looking to exploit you. I'm just, you know, I'm like I find your story to be interesting. I'm genuinely interested. That's what Jilly always says. Like, boy, you ask great questions. I'm like, well, it's just listening to what people say and responding to it, you know. It's a pretty simple concept. I, like, I, I've never gone into an interview with anybody with set questions. That pisses off Andy, of course. He's like, oh, you got to be prepped like Angelo. Uh, but I never, like, I go in with a couple of ideas of things that I think need to be asked. Now, granted, this, I'm never asking, you know, hot, maybe lesbian chick about her heroin use. Usually it's like, hey, we're talking with the GM right now. And the GM's got, like, so it's a little different. But, you know, this is what it is. Uh, Josh, talk about Les Miles. We talked about Les Miles three hours ago. We did. We had a whole big thing. We had a whole big thing about that. Uh, and that's good. Uh, yeah, Rachel, type in the chat where they can listen to you. Plug your show. Plug it, guh. Do it. But you guys should listen plug to Plug it like a two-sided dildo. Like, We've always been big fans of Rachel. Yep. And I think she got done wrong at 790. Here's where guys like Andy should blow me. They should say, you know what, friend? On the fly, you're a hell of an interviewer because I don't prep. Again, I'm, I'm a hell of an, I am an interview machine. I just like talking with people. So that's what I'm talking about. Uh, Trey says you've been on for four hours. Hell, that's baby shit compared to what I did that nine hour. God, like it amazes me that I was on for nine hours. How do we have that much booze? Is there Boda Box like almost empty? It's getting there. Oh, no. Yep, Boda Box. Boda Box. Is, is Luther downstairs? He's on the bed. Oh, that little handsome devil. His dad loves him. By the way, don't forget, tomorrow we're going to be out at, uh, at srxo.com. Safety RX. Safety RX and the get down. Uh, let's tell we'll them where you learned it from, where, where I learned what from, Trey. I don't know. I didn't learn anything. I just it's just kind of how I go. I look forward to Trey's exit interview with you. Yep, Trey is also a fucking great. Trey's an amazing interviewer, and uh, I love him. I do. I've only known him for about ten months, and he used to talk shit about me on Twitter, but I've forgiven like, you him. Were, you were on his podcast. And you just come home. And you're like Trey's really good. At he is a good interviewer. He is. He's a very good interviewer. Uh, where you learned to interview. I didn't learn. I don't know. Andy, where did I learn how to interview people? I don't know. That's it's just, your, it's, your it's skills, being naturally inquisitive. That's like one of your skills that I'm very jealous of. Like I can't like interview people. It's just being it basically I've had to before and I hate it. It's listening and responding is all it is. Uh, maybe a lesbian Rachel says I'm going to bed so I can make it out tomorrow. Good night. Maybe lesbian Rachel, you're an angel. We love you. We love you. I hope you don't feel exploited because I'd feel terrible about that. But come out hang tomorrow. We're gonna if do you'd a- like to come see us for a few minutes, we're going to be out there for a little bit eating barbecue. D. Hess says, Josh is still going. Holy fuck. Let me tell you something. I am a god. Uh, thank you for the bit. Spank it. Slap it. Uh, love you all, but pills can easily ruin life. Oxy was my jam. That, it, it sounds bad, but it doesn't 
shock me that you were into pills at one point because you're rich, obviously, and pills would be a good time for a rich guy. Uh, I told you that one time, like my dad, I guess this is one of the perks. Very few of the perks I got from my dad because my dad's a loon, but like he's afraid of all pills, but he has to take them. So he'll take like Xanax and Lexapro and Lorazepam and all that shit. And uh, he's scared shitless. So if he takes one of those and drinks like, uh, I don't know, Pepto-Bismol, he's like, am I going to die? No, dad, you're not going to die. Thanks for the 10 bucks, Krilla Gorilla. You're wonderful. Josh, I think the only Twitter interaction we had pre-97.5 was something about Rick Smith. Uh, you you came after me, and you said you wanted to fight me. A lot of people blocked you over that Rick Smith shit, though. Which was totally misunderstood and whatever. Now all these guys talk all this shit about the Texans, but, oh, I said that shit, and they were all angry. Uh, Andy says you're a, it's a natural skill because you're naturally inquisitive. It's just easy to listen to people and respond. Yeah, I mean, that's all interviewing, good interviewing is. Well, especially when you get like a story like that that's like real. And, she's and not, someone's, you know. and that's all obviously. My skill means nothing if someone's not being open and honest about shit and telling the story. Thank you, Juke, for the bits. Um, that's just kind of how, how I've always been. Now, sometimes you do an interview and you're trying to get titillating shit out of it. But I mean, sometimes you just have a conversation with people. You know, like I miss my, my window, man. Like if I would have been, if I would have been 25, 26, 27 in the mid nineties, I could have been, I like, I could have been stern and man cow and shit probably. Like I have that kind of ability, but like, I just, I miss that window of when it was okay to be that way. Like, like people at, and, and Andy's in the chat. I know that, but like, and I used to really love stern. I don't care for him anymore i just find it to be boring and and blah but you're just disgusted he like dismissed it uh dismissed all his he dismissed shit. like 20 years yeah. of his career to blow up like seven years of, but whatever doesn't matter but like man cow at least man cow has been kind of true to who he is and i feel like he's kind of genuine to a degree he's, not, he's doing nothing now right right now but i'm guessing like andy would probably know what the next move for man cow is if i had to guess but uh right now man cow is doing um he quit. He was like, this is not fun. And, and it probably wasn't. But like, like to me, man cow, and that man cow might have been a little less authentic than Stern. But I don't, that now that what we're learning about Stern is he was also completely inauthentic. Um, but like man cow is kind of my guy, you know, because uh, and, and I've drunkenly texted with him with me and Sludge and everybody else. Cow has also changed over the years. Yes and no, Andy. Yes, he's no longer like wacky rock morning show guy but when i say that he hasn't changed i say that he's still willing to piss people off and be offensive and and push buttons I feel like he hasn't denounced all his old shit. correct like i've never heard man cow come out and say oh it's the man cow and everything i did on rock 103.5 was awful stern has done that and that's why i don't respect that and it proves that he's a fraud but hey if i were a billion dollar fraud i'd do it too Carson knew how to talk to his guests. Late night host today sucked. Dude, I was watching. I was. I, I like to go through YouTube and basically listen to wrestling podcasts. Like, I'm a fucking loser. Like, every night, that's what you fall asleep to. Like, I fall really asleep weird. to, like, Jim Cornette or Eric Bischoff and or whatever. I feel like that shit's in my dreams. For probably like, I'll is. Be like, I'll be dozing off, and then I hear, like, randomly like, Jim Cornette yelling about some shit. Um, so what happens is I'll listen to it, whatever. Then it'll pop up recommended videos, and uh, one of the recommended vi- oh shit I lost track of what I was where I was going, but I had something and it was very compelling. Uh, thank you for the bit, spank it, slap it. Uh, but who and Juke nineteen ninety? Thank you. I'm trying to remember. Oh, there was a video that I saw that popped up, and now I don't remember it. <laughs> But all that to tell you this, there's a level of authentic, like, listen, like everything is fake in some way. I'm fake in some way. Stern is fake in some way. Clint Sterner is fake in some way. No one's a hundred percent authentic, obviously. Um, it just doesn't work that way. And that's fine. And hey, and that's fine. And that's okay. And that's okay. But like to denounce everything you've ever done and basically call all the people. Oh, Johnny Cart. Was it Johnny Carson? Someone says, question mark, Johnny. Was it Johnny Carson? Was that the video I saw? I don't remember what video I saw on the tube of you. I drew a blank on that. But everybody's inauthentic in some way. No one's 100% authentic. Either you're going over the top or you're downplaying something, but no one's 100% authentic. And again, that's okay. But when you denounce everything you've ever done, 
and basically say that anybody who liked the shit you did for 20 years is a loser or a racist, then fuck you. I have no interest. And uh, that's why I have no interest in Stern anymore. And I have no end. Oh, I, I remember <laughs> Stern friends. So it recommends a video. It always like pops up with like late night shit, right? So it, it'll pop up with like, hey, late night host do blank, blank and blank. And the one I saw, I guess this was two days ago. It was who's the dude that used to do weekend update with uh, Tina Fey and now does like Seth Meyers. So Seth Meyers has a late night show and it's allegedly supposed to be funny. Allegedly. The titles of these videos, one of them was it was about Trump at CPAC. And it's like, here's the title of a comedy show video. It just said, Donald Trump tells more lies at CPAC. And dude, this is on a comedy show. That's what they are now. What was that one clip that like, I think Tucker played it the other day? It was like from Jimmy Fallon. It's, a, it's absurd. And was like so bored. He was just like. Literally the video just said, Donald Trump tells more lies at CPAC on a comedy show. And I feel bad for like Fallon because I, I do think Fallon is funny and I think he does not want to be doing this. But, I mean, wasn't that the whole story where they're like, oh, you have to talk about Trump. You have to make fun of Trump. Yeah, because at the time you were dead. And now they still have to talk about Trump because they're not allowed. But it's sad because, like, you can see the joy just sucked out of it. Sure. You're not allowed to talk about Biden. Biden is a, if Biden had an R next to his name, Biden would be a walking comedy of errors. He is brain dead. You can tell me whatever you want about Biden. Brain dead. Mega Blast brings up Trevor Noah. He is Trevor Noah is a, a no. He's a completely unfunny douchebag. Okay, but like you would think that Biden would be low hanging fruit, too easy to make it. Like he's literally like a he's weekend at Bernie's. Yet somehow they will not make fun of him. They have to dig up Trump shit. Trump is irrelevant. Sorry guys, but he's irrelevant. I, said, I think people and I think Trump. And yet they have to dig up all this shit about Trump because they can't make fun of Biden because they have vaginas. I think They're everyone pussies. just has to agree. And I think Trey said it earlier. Like both parties are just really like it's all a joke. Everybody's a joke. Yes, but my my problem is. There's no way these guys who've built their careers on trying to be funny and make fun of people can look at Biden and go, eh, I see nothing to make fun of here. No, if you made fun of Trump, you can easily make fun of Biden. They're both very easily made funnable people. Oh. I don't know if that's English. It's bullshit. But they're both very easily made funnable. Yes. Like Trump, like we might agree with some of the shit he says, but like even diehard Trump people like M.W. Soulgrove can go, okay, that's worth making fun of, right? Or like it was easy to make fun of Ted Cruz when he went wacko at the the thing last week. Oh yeah, everybody made fun of Ted. But Cruz. the problem is nobody can make fun of Biden. Biden, I'm telling you, Biden is brain dead. Andy says although SNL was funny last week for the first time in 18 years, except for Weekend Update, they did no attempts at political humor. Well, I refuse to watch it, so I wouldn't know. But like. If you can tell me that in 2000 you could make fun of Bush and Gore and you can make fun of Bush leading up to the Obama shit, then you can't make fun of Obama for eight years. Then you can make tr fun of uh, Trump for four. Like, we can kind of tell where you are. Like, that old school group of guys, I don't believe they were political. I don't believe Dana Carvey was overly political or Phil Hartman was overly political. Guys that were playing political characters. Like, I never watched Dana Carvey play Bush... Senior, senior and feel like all right dana carvey thinks bush senior's a total tool he played a character and it was funny but you never felt like okay they're just they're, they're i'm watching msnbc or when uh phil hartman was doing clinton like for, like think about this they made fun of a liberal whoa well, snl made fun of a liberal whoa what's his face display obama he wasn't black that, that's the other great part. What's his name? Uh, Fred Armisen. Armisen. Fred Armisen is not black, yet he played Obama and nobody cared. Thank you for the thousand bits but there, Spanky Slavin. But now Slate can't voice a cartoon character who's it's black. It's stupid. Like, look at the difference. Like, I don't But, know. like, I think we'd all agree. Like, I don't, like, and, and when Bush uh, Jr. was made fun of by Will Ferrell, great bit. It was hilarious. But now only you can make fun of Republicans now or it's done. South Park, uh, Spangus Levitt brings up a South Park. They have another special coming up next week, I think. It's the uh -oh. vaccination special. Well, I look forward to that. Yeah. They well, remember, they got railed on for doing that bit where, like, the the the, the they had, like, Macho Man playing, yeah. like, a, a, a transgender or whatever. 
I still don't think they're all in either, but we'll see. Uh, like, and and that's the thing is like, and Andy brings it up. They picked up, picked on Bush 41 for his hate of broccoli. Now it's too political. And that's why nobody watches this shit. And, and like, I've never seen an era where people are less relatable than the comedians now. And like, they feel like they have to be, have a message and all this shit. And, and it's, it's bad. It's, it's not funny. It's not amusing. These are shitty comedians. Like, like you, we can talk about like a, who's our, a Cindy Webster loved Fallon. She loves Fallon. Like, I don't think she, wa- and I don't know this for a fact, but my guess is Cindy Webster doesn't watch Fallon now and go, boy, he's what I love watching. Fallon used to do dumb bits where he dresses Barry Gibb or he would do like a Save by the Bell reunion, and that was his shitty shtick, right? But then he was forced into doing political humor because that's what everybody else was doing. Like, he was crushing before Trump. Pre-Trump, yeah. we call that PT. Pre-Trump. He was destroying everybody, but then Trump got elected and everybody started doing Trump material and their numbers went up. SNL has always been overrated, even the old ones. Some legendary funny bits, but for the most part, just as boring. See, I disagree with you, M.W. Soulgrove. I think there was a lot of shit back when it was okay to just be fucking funny. So you and I can disagree. I think there was a time when it was okay to just do fucking you comedy. You can't be funny now. And you can't do it anymore because... Oh, uh, that was way too funny for these times. In these times, I'm tired of hearing in these times. Now. So in Chicago, one of the sports anchors who's been there for like 30 years made some comment like joking with the main anchor about how she was uh, kind of like the ditzy, uh, stubborn chick on like HT, HGTV. And he's getting fired. He's going to, yes. Because of the term ditzy. He used the term ditzy. But it's weird because, like, this chick, like, complained about it, but she's also been on the air since 1992. Like, so people I take them feel s- like if, if she had that thin of skin, she wouldn't have made it. Here's the problem. So Her, she, has, she doesn't have thin skin. She's doing what she thinks she's supposed to do, which is, like, play a victim because that's what the yeah. internet wants you to do. Like, he, if he would have said that comment 10 years ago, nothing of it. But now it's like, I don't know. That's kind of fucked up he's going out that way. Well, the other day we were he's talking. he's been there for, like, 30 years. The other day we were talking about, like, if you had, if I said, Jilly, what is, like, the funniest movie to me? Like, if you had to pick two or three movies that I think are the funniest movies, what are they? Twister. Twister's not a funny movie. <laughs> it kind of is, but I love it. But, if, like, if you thought, uh, fun, movies that I think are fucking hilarious. Sex Drive. Sex Drive is hilarious, but that's not the one I'm thinking of. Uh, give me two more guesses. Anchorman 2. That is also good, but that's not what I'm guessing. Boogie Nights. Boogie Nights is not a funny movie. It's just a great movie. Okay. Like, uh, Superbad. Oh, To yeah. me, Superbad is one of my favorite movies of all time. I know everybody in that movie is unbearable. I know. We were talking about that on the, the air the other day. I'm like, Jonah Hill is whining about how, like, well, he's, he's claiming that he's strong no, he's now. he's not whining. He's saying he's finally comfortable with his own skin. And he doesn't have to wear a t-shirt to the beach and shit. Like, and he fuck you. he doesn't care that the fucking whatever publication published it. He's Which is bullshit. Now. We all know that. But um, that and obviously like Wedding Crashers, those are some of my favorite movies. Um, oh, uh, what's that damn movie I like with uh, Ryan Reynolds and he's um, with Anna Faris and Ryan Reynolds and uh, what's oh, her name? Oh, yeah. Uh, Just Friends. That's a great movie. But anyway, I love Superbad. Superbad's one of the funniest movies ever, in my opinion. I think it's brilliant. And I watch this now and I'm like, well, let's see. Jonah Hill hates himself. Seth Rogen is a self-hating white guy. Spend this time arguing with Ted Cruz. Michael Sarah's just kind of disappeared, which whatever. Um, what's his name? Bill Hader. I think Bill Hader is still cool. I think he's funny. I never hear him doing anything political. We he like wrote for show. South Park. He was, he was Barry, right? <clears throat> and the show Barry, yeah. But that just kind of disappeared. He's good. But, like, these guys hate themselves, and they have to rush to Twitter to let you know they hate themselves. Like, put a gun to your head, then. You're a waste of life. Brad Hall says, thanks, guys. I'm wine-wasted. Well, so am I. Uh, Andy says in a few funny... Uh, Andy loves the original version of SNL. Chevy, Belushi, Murray. Murray, I don't even think, was in the first season of SNL. I think Murray came in after Chevy. I might be wrong on that. You would know better than I, Andy. But Chevy left. Then they brought in Bill Murray. Uh, it was funny with Carvey, Myers, Hartman, even into Farrell. Otherwise, hasn't been funny. I would agree with that. Uh, you brought up Chris Rock. Chris Rock was not funny on SNL. I couldn't even tell you one significant thing he ever did. Nat X, is that a character he did on SNL? And he did a, a, a fake uh, commercial with the Nike turkey for Thanksgiving, a pump it turkey. Uh, Eddie Murphy, obviously, was brilliant. 
He's got new coming to America. Coming the new coming to America should be out today, actually. Um, <clears throat> um, and then some of these people never did anything after SNL. The first one, like, did anybody like, hey, what's the latest Jane Curtin movie? Like, no one gives a shit about what Jane Curtin or um, who was the other chick? There was Jane Curtin, and then there was the other chick that was on the early SNL. What was her name? Lorraine Newman. Uh, she didn't do anything either. Um, and then Roseanne, Rosanna Dana, but she died. She was married to Jean, uh, Wilder and she died obviously of cancer in the eighties. Uh, but they were married. She and Jean Wilder, who is brilliant by the way, uh, Willy Wonka, young Frankenstein, me and Andy have had this talk before. Like Andy doesn't really get young Frankenstein, which is amazing. Cause I'm like 30 years younger than it, 20 years younger than Andy, probably give or take. And, um, I think young Frankenstein is brilliant. The pro- uh, those the producers that we talked about, and you're like, ah, eh, whatever. Uh, uh, Gilda Radner is who it was. Was Gene Wilder's wife? But um, I think Spake it slapped it through in a thousand bits. Thank you. He did. Uh, that was a while ago. Where you been? Well, I thought he threw in a hundred before. No, he threw in a thousand. Well, but hey, more love to you. But um, but you and I talked about the producers, Andy, and you're like, I don't think it holds up. I believe was the conversation we had. And I think your son thinks it's fucking brilliant. I think it's your son. Th- his like 12 year old son's like the producers brilliant show. Uh, but the original producers like springtime for Hitler and all that shit is a really, really good show. <clears throat> and then there was, um, and then I think basically Mel Brooks did nothing funny after like 1975, but like, cause I don't think that space balls is funny mostly because I don't like star Wars. So it doesn't really mean anything to me, but, um, but, uh, young Frankenstein is great. Blazing saddles is great. Um, high anxiety was fine. Uh, the producers was good. Also, I guess Robin Hood men in tights held up pretty well. Uh, but outside of that, not much. You still have a full glass of wine over I'm there. I'm drinking it. I'm, I'm still drinking it. We still got some spank it slap and just threw in 400 more bits. And, uh, and obviously in Blazing Saddles, the original idea was to have uh, Richard Pryor in the Cleavon Little role. It didn't work out that way because Richard Pryor wrote a lot of the movie with, with them. Isn't that amazing how the world used to work? Richard Pryor and a bunch of Jews wrote uh, Blazing Saddles. Now, like, they wouldn't even allow the Jews near the set. They'd be like, nope, nothing. Uh, Let's see. Um, Dana Carvey never made an actual good movie as a star, but Dana Carvey was great. Phil Hartman was great. What was that Phil Hartman Sinbad house House guest? House guest, that's one of my favorite movies. You love that movie. Thank you for the bit, Spank It, Slap It. Men in Tights is hilarious. I I like it. I I don't know how well it holds up, but it's not bad. Spank It, Slap It is dominating our feed right now. It's just all Spank It, Slap It. If you guys would like to break up the spank it slap it party, you can throw in some bits or some donos. We're four and a half hours into. You do the have part. to send us a picture of you with the Cheech and Chong Scooby picture spank it slap it, so we can see. Yeah, for sure. You're a legend to be able to talk after four glasses of wine. I'm down for the. I've had Yo, more this than isn't four. Even four glasses, like so. The Boda Box, hold it up again. Mm-hmm. The Boda Box is four bottles. What degenerate ass mofos, you know, who finished four bottles of wine in a night. Us, we have to make it to the safety RX tomorrow. We do. I got you, and I got to be on a call at yeah, ten thirty in the like, morning. You have to be spry. I have to like be spry and say, "Hey guys, it's me, Josh Ennis. Love you. I love you, Spangit. Look at Maddie T. He's still here. Just put on the bris. Look at Maddie oh, T. Oh boy, Those he's still here. Are he's still be here. Amazing. All right, what's the funniest movie you've ever seen? Go, everybody. I won't ask Jilly. She can't come up with I these things on I the can't fly. Do these things. What makes you laugh, Jilly? I don't know. That fucking scene from Eastbound and Down. That's it. That one scene from Eastbound and Down. That one I know is my favorite thing I've ever seen on television. Z Dog says Dumb and Dumber. That is a that is a funny movie. Airplane and Naked Gun. The other you know, the other guys is an underrated funny Will Ferrell movie. And and the funniest character in the movie is actually Michael Keaton. Uh Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Great fucking movie. There's a, uh, there's a guy I urge you to follow on Twitter, by the way. This is a random thing, and maybe you do already. So there's a guy. Let me find his name on here. He's on Twitter. 
And his whole shtick is that he like goes in and reviews these movies. I, I, I'm guessing he's from up in like Pennsylvania or something. What is his name? But like he'll do like a 10 minute documentary on planes, trains, and automobiles. Um, oh, what what is his name? I don't remember his name, but like he's got a great Twitter and like his YouTube channel has great videos. American Pie, like you're never going to see movies like American Pie again. Me and my grandpa went to see American Pie together. Not my, not Cowboy Ralph, but Greg. And he took me to see the movie. This is 1998, 99, whenever it came out. We went to the new, the newer theater in Poplar Bluff. They'd already shut down the other, the theater that I saw Twister six times. They'd already shut that down. So we went to the new movie theater, which has not been renovated at all in 20 years. And we're watching American Pie. And anytime there was a nude scene, my grandpa would go, <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> now, granted, my grandpa had a lot of porn in his house. Whatever. 40 year old virgin is good. The jerk. Jilly does not like the, the jerk. jerk. Jilly does not Hate like it. the jerk. I yeah, uh, still think my favorite movie is probably Anchorman. It's Strowman. Harrison watches something like that, but I think the guy is from Australia, though, but he's sleep. Oh, you're talking about the, the DV. There's a guy, and he does. It's called, um, what does he call these things? Almost. One of the things he does, it's called uh, Almost Cult Classics. Let me see here. Almost Cult Classics. Let me see the guy's name. There's the almost okay. What is this guy's name? Where He's are right up there. no? There's I I get that, but I don't know if this is correct. Okay, so the guy's name is Joe Ramoni. He's only got 917 followers, and you're one of them. And I am one of them. I I enjoy this guy. So at lifelong film nerd, presenter of Hats Off Entertainment on YouTube. So if you go to Hats Off Entertainment on YouTube, like. His so, late, wait, have you ever tweeted this guy? You should I have. Tweet him. I did. I said, dude, I really like your shit. One of them was like, he, he did a whole thing about how there's like all these deleted scenes of Uncle Buck that no one has ever seen. And then there's a Planes, Trains, and Automobiles version. He's still got it pinned. Why don't you The get lost him? version of Planes, Trains, and Automobiles that has like 30 minutes of the movie cut out. Why don't like you get him on the show? I might. But I would urge all of you to go find Joe Ramoni, R-A-M-O-N-I. And I love his shit. The first cut of Planes, Trains, and Automobiles came in at three hours and 40 minutes. No, thanks. I used the shooting scripts, images, and unused footage uh, and other resources to present some of the missing material in the hopes that together we can release the Hughes cut. The, the first that? cut of Planes, Trains, and Automobiles was three hours and 40 minutes. Did you hear that? What? What? I don't know. I didn't hear it. Pounding. Where? I have no idea what it was. But yes, I like this guy, Joe Ramoni. Let's see here. The Room is a fantastic cult classic. I agree. Grumpy Old Men is a great movie. He was Who was? He was pounding at the down. Da- Why? I think he might have to pee. Should I? I mean, should we take him? Well, I mean, he was knocking at the door. Well, take him outside. He won't go with me. He might. I'm I'm talking to the people. It's worth a shot to take him out to the backyard. I mean, aren't we almost out? Almost, but I think we still have. Let me see how much we have left. We have to get up in like six hours. And we still have a little bit left. I can't believe you didn't hear that pounding. I did. You want some more? No. Yeah, I have a little more, but. I mean, but if you want to take him outside, take him outside. He's not going to go outside with me. I guess I can take him and then bring him back up here. If you want to entertain the masses for a few. All right, there you go. I think we've, that. well, look at that. How about that? Four and a half hours into this shit. It's impressive. All right. You gotta go take Luther outside. I am going to post this exclamation point dono. Well, I mean, you might as well just finish that wine, then we can just wrap it up. I mean, you have to get up. Like you, I do, call. but I should. Um, I need to take. I'll take him to go to the bathroom now, so we don't have to go downstairs no, again. Have to go later, so just what? Finish your wine. All right. So <sighs> you're up taking a shower. It'll be like two hours before we go to bed. All right.
<laughs> he has to wait to take him out. But he does have to go. I'll take him. So, again, feel free if you guys have enjoyed the show tonight. I'm going to post the link again. If you like to throw in a couple bucks. Spank it, slap it. Just dominates our board, though. So if you guys would like to knock Spank and Slap it off the leaderboard four and a half hours into the party, I guess I'll have to come up here tomorrow when I come up and do my, my interview thing, and I'm going to come up and I'll post the podcast tomorrow. I just didn't do it tomorrow. I mean, I could. I could do yeah. it tonight, but i got to take Luther outside. I'll finish your wine. I'm working on it. Z-Dog had fun tonight. I'm glad Z-Dog had fun. Let's see if anybody here in the last two or three minutes wants to make one last donation to the party. There's the link. If you want to throw in any more donos, you can. What's your favorite Boda box? Like, do you even remember the other one? No, they all taste the same to no, me after a don't. while. After a while, they do. But which one's your favorite? I need to know which one to buy. I don't know. I got to think of that. I got to think about it. I dig this rosé. I know you do. I know you do. It appears that nobody wants to knock, spank it, slap it off the leaderboard. Well, I mean, it's 2.30 in the morning in Philly. It's 1.30 in the morning here on a Thursday. That's true, but and we've had a hell of a ride. people are trying to come meet us at fucking Safety RX tomorrow. That's true. Spank it, slap it will remain the king of the road. So one more time. <sighs> Safety RX, Pasadena location. Yep. We'll be there between 11.30 and noon at some point, hopefully. Yep. Thank you, Energizer. Thanks. We'll be there. Luther's coming. It's be a good time. Yeah. Trey's sure. coming, I believe. Should Ray's be a hell of a time. Coming. She'll share more stories with you. So, uh, anyway, I guess it's time to go, huh? Yep. I guess it's that time. What a show. Four and a half. This is one of our longer ones. Damn near five hours. It's not long for us. We've been up for nine hours. Okay, that was one time. No, that was like three times. I was on for nine hours. I'm fairly certain you rolled out before nine hours. Yeah, you damn right I did. <laughs> so anyway. <coughs> not that long ago. You went for like six. So anyway. So I guess we'll head out. You guys are wonderful. We'll be back tomorrow night because we haven't. Yep. We have oh, more. look, Maddie T is still here. Get enough sleep to get down to the Dina. I don't sleep, and we have five briscuits and seven racks of ribs. So I'm get excited. your asses out to the parking lot at, at uh, over at Safety RX. percent off glasses. Jilly, you going to get some glasses tomorrow? Hi, uh, maybe. Dr. Maddie T, let me ask you, do you think you have some glasses that will help make my beauty even more beautiful? People love chicks and glasses. They do. And I've got like 18 pairs of glasses waiting for me when I get there. Give or take. Like the Versace's. I mean, you keep going back to this Versace. Like I picked them out because they were expensive. I just looked around. I found a pair of glasses that I thought looked good and I got them. But, uh, but come out and get some glasses tomorrow, guys. I would urge you to do so over at, uh, over at uh, Safety RX. And I would free urge you. barbecue, free lunch and glasses. Come on, guys. Come see us. Luther will be there to take some photos. It'll be baller AF is what I'm getting at here. So anyway, I guess we'll get out of here. You guys are beautiful people and we will see you.